change of time. So again, I'm very humble in approaching this body of work and all of the responsibilities. There are many authorities that have been granted to the executive branch through working with the legislative body. And many of those authorities are important and critical to carry out these responsibilities. I thank the council going back decades for all that hard work providing the tools, statutory authorities, and then many of the regulations that have been promulgated by the Navajo EPA over the years to make things clear and direct as to how this agency operates. The agency's mission is to protect the Nav our lands. Auto, our, our human health, our people. That mission is still very much in place today, and I look forward to resuming a leadership role back at Navajo Nation EPA. In carrying out these responsibilities, there are many facets to it. The number one facet is to serve the people in the direct manner as possible, direct services. And then working with, in our Navajo Nation government, our colleagues, our programs, working with the, in the executive branch, out of working with the legislative branch, working through our oversight committee. If you look at my record that is contained in my, my resume, in your packet, you'll see over the prior 12 years that I was fortunate to serve in this capacity, there are many highlights. And I will say unequivocally that it was a combination of executive and legislative leadership facilitated by Navajo EPA under my leadership and working with the managers in Navajo EPA. Many instances where we had to intervene or sit down with the federal agencies or outside companies or companies on the Navajo Nation, we did it together in consultations, in negotiations, in meetings. The former RDC or Resources Committee Chair, Mr. George Arthur, was a, a great teacher to me and also a very important partner. And I have communicated to Madam Chair Jesus that I intend to continue in that manner, working with the Resources and Development Committee, working with President Nigren to be together on many of these issues that we have to continue working on. The abandoned uranium mining cleanup has been going on since the 70s, since Navajo EPA was first formed. There have been two congressional hearings on these issues. The second one I was fortunate enough to be a part of in 2007. It has resulted in a massive response from the federal government since that time. Currently, there is a 10-year plan, which is the third plan put forth by the federal agencies on various aspects of this response. Coming back into this position, I have articulated to, to, to the leadership that 
one of my priorities and one of our priorities should be to get back in front of these federal agencies and take the lead in as many areas as possible. The impact of the COVID pandemic has slowed down the pace of a lot of work. And now that we're coming out of the pandemic, we need to get back on a faster pace. There are major decisions that will be made starting this year on the cleanup of 10 abandoned uranium mines, including the largest and the number one priority mine, known as the Northeast Church Rock Mine, inside the chapter of Church Rock, but also impacting the chapter of Pinedale, Nahadishkish areas, Coyote Canyon areas. I look forward to working and building a team of leaders with the council and within the executive branch because it's going to take a strong relationship from Navajo EPA, Department of Justice, Division of Natural Resources, President's Office, Resources and Development Committee, and maybe some additional delegates because there are many chapters beyond the representation on the RDC that are impacted by abandoned uranium mines and other environmental issues. There are a host of other environmental priorities. So, but my first one is to get back in the leadership position in dealing with the abandoned uranium mine issues and these major decisions that the federal government through the United States Environmental Protection Agency will be making starting this year. The other priorities for air quality, there are still emissions from the oil fields that need to be addressed. We look to promulgate regulations for what's called minor source permitting requirements, which will address the issues that have been long standing for problems from these emissions in the oil fields. We will also be looking at attaining regulatory authority for discharge permits through our water quality program as well. So we will continue working on building our capacity to regulate our environment and we'll do that in concert with the legislative body because all of these will Honorable Jesus and Mr. Itsidi for your presentation on the legislation. Colleagues, at this time, we'll go turn over to the floor for comments and questions. First in queue, we have Honorable Chair Charles Newton. Uh, good morning, Speaker. Can you hear me? Yes, Chair, we can hear you. You have the floor. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, uh, Chair Jesus, for sponsoring this legislation on behalf of the confirmation for Mr. Stevens at City. I did um, ask you know, to uh, to be added to the queue to allow Mr. Ed to be some time to introduce himself and then also to give him the floor for uh, the reason that we should be confirming him. Um, uh, Mr. Epstein, you do have my green vote on this. I was reading through your resume. I'm glad that you're going to be going back there to EPA. I look forward to working with you, especially with those um, abandoned uranium mines. I know that Chair Rick Naz was Anthony, he was a champion for um, getting those addressed, and we were with that. We were with the uh, federal EPA in December, where we did learn about um, some of the initiatives that are going to be going forward on behalf of EPA. So mm -hmm. I look forward to working with you on this um, and you know addressing those issues. I also uh, just wanted to um, state for the record that you do have my green vote. Um, and again, I look forward to working with you. Um, Speaker, I don't have to reserve my time. I am, um, I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Charles Newton. Next we have Honorable Arviso. 
Madam Speaker, good morning. Aro 25th Navajo Nation Council, Kunet Si Tahagi, Aro in the Areta Hoshnagi. Aro in the Kunetna, Naiso Tanigi. Good morning, Kidini Dolish. Delegate Jesus, Aro, Mr. Ed City. Last night he stayed with us all the way till 11.30 and I told him about 10 o'clock that he could go home, that we were gonna recess. He didn't want to go home. He said, I gotta hear the word recess and then I'll go home. <laughs> so good morning, Mr. Etsidi. I'm looking forward to working with you. Yeah. I'm the delegate for Church Rock and that uranium mine. I seen kitchen deals in the store and it's not only church rock but in Lake Pinedale, Jado, Mariano Lake, Smith Lake, and because those uranium mines were up on top of the ridge, the water table comes down to the bottom to Yambato, Auto and the uh, church rock. So I'm looking forward to working with you and Bing Dilnish. Let's uh, let's get uh, you know the the legal parts of it. You know, I, I was thinking somehow those, uh, those some of those folks th need to be reimbursed in the future. So I, you see, uh, over in those abandoned uranium mines. And uh, you do have my support, I, I could say that. So, Madam Speaker, I, w I waive the rest of my time. Honorable Arvisa waves his time. Ado Kunabijat Nastoigi Shiyaj, Honorable James. Um, good morning, on Speaker, and the members of the uh, Council. Ado Presenters Nothaniki, Do Shinale, Mr. Ed City, Yat Ehako, Kodon Hilnausen, Nesele, Do Adachahuin, Ado Nanish in Lagi, Do Ben Hilchahuin, Asalenko, Echeha, D. That. Shis is in the A. Um, Kodo Ben Kates and Kodo Ben Kehodi Nigi, A. Sha Shaba Kuns and Dole Adonana Naoka, Lenigi, a Kodonj and Dish Ash, A. Ya Nacha Toye has Anje Ajits that are what the Ben Hitch and Nahot at Toye Ade has Anigi, Nihis allowed O Hayu Ado Etahos. Ado has twido sani, but at the Hayan, Tahadol Jij, old Tatas and Nel Hawanda Nas Nello, the net conke the hat on. Ado on his aunt is na. A equins at it at it are Sahi or hot eh. Kin Sato at the Yada, Ado Hawan, the Nei Keta hat Enetha, Ekinta has Stasi, or hot our Nas Nelloco, openized it. Twan chonch eight as Lene in the old hot hour, bant at the yard of hot hour nasnel. Toby the Holonet twash jet so high, beige twash jet and hot and swayen that old horn nasnel. At then, don't hire not enda. Japa na oshka. Last two year, last year, dash in AA, Chanel bet honorable Eugene and Charles Newton. Washington, the Tadit Aj. B I A Bedaton Nilsons A Coco Aje Lan Order Committee that sat down Halit on Hikato, what Lajakot A Belch and Kaiti A, then Kunzad Ato Haneta Adonana Kojit Ad An Hin Hilkas Anjito EPA dot A Hananat A Oko O Hot A O that is Nasalinko, A Coco Shesazino Halit A Hot A ni hit the to ye has ando ajukeya to do ya da tle on jono na de des an he masan dan he chain de dan he chon de na de des a o hot a ba jo ba o je na hot e hot a o ne a he na o ko ko a ti o ko hot a e e kon za den hit hot je ko asbest has not on the yo so ha jo shi be da ha yo so ko Nasa Ajit and Nebetikata hashed an end, the old hot ashi does easily the hatzi. Jokot our a in he has anna jetoye has anje. A coco ash shone de 
e e e e kodonj and dish at a shonden hi ka de lo lo ko i don na na the 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 previous division director uh, mr jesse delmar to ka de lo ni ne den a do za da o kod a e e um at a hui shi to ka de od an hi has an le ko na na the next one e ki to a ko di de o ha yun hi den en le ni ki e e ya chit pe to chit pe a ki the oil o bohot ni ho ya de yi ka se li ko in ganado and na so it's gotten to the point where they're dumping oil closely to a lot of the uh, wells that are in ganado and that water well pumps are taking that water goes all the way down to delcon all the way down to white cone to jedito adot abat kha it neke da hat elak ahn khel ki has ani khe da hat e do kin da le chi nazlen ko ya bet kha it neke da hat et o ha yu ko ako be ada ho zani ki sign sta ta ta ne lo shi ada ot en ha no da 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 shi to an hit ne a a sa to ye da an da ti do le le to ko same je to ta ho ta se ye je to ho ta o o yo ya de yi kha ho ya na kha e ko ako ko e la e kha ta an na ha ta la ko do n so to na ba be na de dis ke n sen ako ya ha reserve my time thank you Reserve time of 25 seconds. Kodoshiyash. Ado kone panastoiki. We have Shitsile, Honorable Dr. Andy Ness. Akiya Shade, Madam Speaker. Ado kwa ekiya to Honorable Hesus for introducing this legislation to appoint the state city to EPA under the Navajo Nation. Ado kodo to our colleagues here on the 25th in the gallery. Good morning. So I have a few questions. So the first is, uh, my name is Andy Nez. Otto, I work alongside our communities of Fort Defiance, Sawmill, Crystal, and Red Lake. With the, the sawmill that happened. And in the early 1960s, there it started to operate, but to our understanding, for over half a century, there has not been a contamination uh, investigation uh, study or source. Asbestos, hexavalent chromium, lead, the Environmental um, Protection Agency. And there's open wells, there's a lot of contamination, and we have kids, our children that walk to school, that walk to the bus stop, we have community members that walk to the store, and so there's a lot of that activity that needs attention. Um, I'm currently going to introduce legislation here within the next couple of months to um, get that trust going on behalf of our communities. Red Lake I want to hear on record your commitment to our community to continue the assessment and remediation of the old NFPI, which has left the not only the community but the landscape in distress. And to urge you as well to keep it within the Brownfields program so that it remains a top priority. I know there may be some internal changes occurring, but I need that commitment from you as the new division director for EPA to work with the community, visit these sites, and get to learn more about what it's uh, causing. Because when you look at the stream, and I brought this forth to the Fort Defiance Agency Council as well, that we have to maintain attention to it. And I gave the community my commitment to continue to pursue justice for our environment because it affects the longevity of our population. And we have to be considerate and thinking forward of our next seven generations. 
So we want to ensure that the land is healthy. And at this moment, I just want to bring up those uh, to get your attention as well as your commitment on those sources and to work together as the delegate representing the upper district 18 area. Beautiful landscape and I don't want the environment to be hurt further. Uh, at this time, speaker, I will reserve my time. Thank you. Reserve time of 138, honorableness. Uh, next in queue, we have Kodoshi Che, Honorable Toth, five minutes. Okay, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and also uh, Mr. Tsuri. I got auto Kodo sponsor of the Hlagi. I just wanted to uh, inform you that through 110 chat, we have illegal dumping. So that needs to be looked at. Uh, trash uh, alongside the road, especially the canyon, or trash the Dihkiriana. So some type of enforcement needs to be done. Uh, when we make rules or legislation, the, the problem with it we have is no enforcement. Who's going to enforce? So those area, Nakaban Tsun Kistolit, and the Eastern Agency, Jo, Arund, and Kujo, West Jota, Shipra, Jota, Shin, Jota, Hot Echo, Nan Lenige, Trash of Anota, the Ito, Couches that Tinona's Nestle, the Shinto, Toto, Nabatin, Tinishi, Echo. So those are some of the areas we have. Oh, Aro, there's building that's been there for a long time that needs to be uh, somehow uh, and demolished. So I guess the BIA is responsible for those uh, school Koroshla Ashia Hatsif Toyeje and we had used to have academy there when I used to be there with law enforcement. We have quarters and gym and the office generally Kishin Ashike and uh they can certify the Lia. They are the Kato Kadito Ho Techin. So those needs to be uh look at and hopefully you can come out with some solution that illegal dump a dumping too. I don't let our crown punch go on a hot Some of the problems we run into Eastern and Crown Point is executive order. So we told the chapter to 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 do a le, uh, resolution so we can and ask the government to put as a trust or uh, fee land that Aliago it a attic building or you now in the tribal building old head start too quacky just a uh, little way south of actually west of the chapter house of the Quito building oh that oh now snow look in that so in heart in echo it a yeah yeah go been hit in a hot it a yeah I guess you need to come up with some solution we need to do legislation you know yeah is she other you know in each report not a decision and our whole juju so I do support and uh, speaker wave my time honorable speaker appreciate the Legislation that's before us. I do Mr. Etsidi. No, Nishin Tazigi. No, Nilial and Hazat Loshi. And I would like to just let you know about one of my chapters, Ninanza chapter. In, in, in the early 60s, they gave up land for a coal mine, Navajo mine. At the time, Utah International, Olya, and they dig up the coal and feed it to Arizona Public Service Company's Four Corners Power Plant. Of course, some of that land was um, reclaimed. Well, uh, reclamation's been done to some of it. But 
Nina Hunzad is asking for that property back. We've met on it numerous times with the previous RDC and the current RDC we met about a month ago at Nina Hunzad. Uh, there's, there's some issues with this. Maybe you can help in some way. What happened was the Navajo Nation Council way back approved the legislation to allow coal ash to be buried where the mine pits were once at. Kdishjida, when Utah International was the company, and then after that, BHP, Billiton, and now uh, Intech owns that coal mine, Navajo Nation Enterprise. Ako, didigi khalit aro la adol nitla. I understand Intech is not liable. Eishil bahasam. By legislation, they approved allowing the ash to be buried. It's been about four years now, and Hanza has been asking for this. And even before, my previous predecessor, Babel Nahan Nelto, Kodelto, Khalid Awaliya Golapi Ghatla. So this land can be given back. So I know this is going to fall into your lot, but we, we would really have some sort of support as to how something like this could be resolved. Um, I, I'm just ready to vote here as well, so thank you very much. God bless you. Shahashiyash, Honorable Ness, Ado Kunebana Sogi, Honorable Nota. Yate Bena, Mr. Etsy Doll, Speaker Curley, Akwado Shawin Tlagi. Just a few questions. I want to go back to the uh, Navajo Nation solid waste um, uh, trash and illegal dumping I see Diego it's a big problem in my district I'm from Tohachi Adonashado I work with um, uh, Nas Chitty, Mexican Springs, Coyote Canyon and Twin Lakes um, I think we'd be nice to do a, a program maybe an educational program outreach um, an educational program uh, on the topics of maybe uh, the importance of recycling, composting, and those types of issues to try to keep some of the solid waste off of um, our roads and on our lands. Um, the other thing that uh, I know that with um, sol um, these types of uh, issues, solid waste, that I, there are some grants that are available out there. Maybe we can look into some of those for our chapters. We have one uh, station. Um, uh, transfer station in Tohachi and people have to drive kind of a long ways. I mean six seven miles is kind of a, a ways for uh, Masando Oche and Linigi They have to utilize their gas and then when they get there even if you have just a um, uh, uh, One trash can two trash cans. It's like eight to ten dollars to utilize these transfer stations uh, People need that money for other things and if we could help the Shinigita, maybe through some grants or something to that effect, to make those more um, accessible and maybe not charge as much uh, to utilize those um, those transfer stations. That would be great. Uh, I don't want to prolong this. I think you have a good record. I did go through your your um, your um, your resume, but I want to know from you uh, for the Navajo Nation from Environmental Protection Natural Resources at Hinaitsogo. What do you see as the most important two issues for our nation? What do we need to address? And um, how do you intend to deal with these two issues? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Nota. We have Chair Parrish. Thank you, uh, Speaker Curley, and um, thank you to the sponsor, um, Chair Jesus, for providing presenting this legislation this morning. And um, good morning to Mr. Ed City. 
Um, I am, my name is Shandine Parrish, and I'm selected uh, by the communities of Kayenta, Denahoso, and Chilchimbito to represent um, our, our people from Western Agency in the 25th Navajo Nation Council. And um, this morning, I'm also um, ready to vote, but I want to share some concerns from our communities in um, that region of the Navajo Nation. And it's in regards to um, natural resources within our communities. There are many opportunities to develop um, our, uh, to, to, con to continue natural, the natural springs in our area, but in regards, of course, many of my colleagues have already mentioned the trash, um, but I think that the Environmental Protection Agency um, could greatly consider this as also a support of um, the opportunity for tourism from um, that area as well. Um, but I also want to bring up the, um, the, the um, obnoxious weeds in our communities that, that impact all over Navajo Nation, that this is a major problem that needs to be addressed, um, not only for our, our animals, but for our future generations. How are we going to continue to teach our children our practices in farming and um, our way of life if, if we don't ourselves, our government, help that process as well. Um, I, I see that and I've heard that you have prior experience as the executive director and I guess my question is what is going to be different this time? Um, I see that your work experience that you were previously in the judicial, um, in the judicial um, branch but you're transitioning back into the executive branch. I just want to know what your vision is and, and what's going to be different for the division this time. Um, I also want to bring um, to light just um, the the demolition across the Navajo Nation and, and the need for um, environmental protect, uh, the EPA and also uh, DED to work together on, on trying to um, you know, clean up all of the the uh, demolished the the buildings out there that are not being used. Um, but I just wanted to make those comments at this time, and I'd appreciate your answer to the vision that you see for EPA uh, during this administration. Thank you, Speaker. I wave the rest of my time. Honorable Parrish waves her time. Uh, next in queue, we have Honorable Norman McGay. Oh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Our 25th Council Long Staff, to Aradai Nostagi. Our Mr. Tsiriro Jesus Legislation, Darwin Nilsozgi. The also, um, how late are those Nisha no? I get indeed Nisha Nia. How do we make a legislation that will, um, help all 110 chapters, yeah, with disposing of batteries, yeah, all the oil that is there. Uh, we need to make a law. Um, work session, how you can uh, come up with a law on Navajo Nation, yeah, Nobody would be different from one reservation to all the reservation would be a light that we can uh, dispose of all um, hazardous auto How can we uh, maybe contact somebody that can uh, recycle these plastic uh, containers, yeah? aluminum cans at the Hegi. Although we come up with some kind of design. You the beta and plastic. So I'm willing to work with you and um since you have a good, strong background of EPA on the outside here, and sit down and come up with a, 
with Ani Ilyago. Gitaron di Arto even put a work session at Skenton Halo, because we only have four years, but if you can make it quick enough, maybe a couple months, what are your plans? How do we work with you to make this law? Thank you. Wave my time. Yeah, Honorable Begay waves his time. Uh, next in queue, Kodoshi Yash, Honorable Yonito. Oh, yeah, eh, oh, yeah, good old Zai Siego. The Jono Gonilan, son is not all Joe Buck. For 20 years' experience in with the uh, Navajo EPA, no, had in that Koto, a yard, the Maba Hindle, how you care for it, and I don't cheat. I see Abke Hacho cheat, Aba Hindle, eight, Ak at the Nahlego, or Yugo Batahoz. Dina, 20 years you're in this organization. I don't the department on the national national. Oh, you go to the hotel. The net or you have horse. Ah, hey, lad, in the hat. No, did the other horse. I ye. The coach is now October 7, 2016. Illegal dumping with the um, abandoned mine land that any the net or you a ya resolution. It or that a dini late set holy edge. The net or you but at the whole. You remove them. In Kehat Ahot, there's a lich mob forming a deep in Natchet Bans as a case of Halate Aya didn't never cut an ideal with a nash. Ashti Nan Nesto, that's what the Nevis Tras and Stral John Nidia didn't need Dinas Zan Earth out on the Nch Kaya Tho, the Nebe Inna. So that's a responsibility then to ensure that this needs to take place. We need a a transparency, honesty, to disclose risk and benefits for the production that you support. There's an oil spill going on right now. The Neche EPA to the Hadnet, Shido Quidishin Hoshnet, and I know RDC chair did too. There's a concern, and we visit those individual communities. Hadanshi pipes, let's go unused, good, unsafe on does, let's go no the high yellow. And those people, they continue calling the EPA, nobody shows up. At ten, there's always a cover-up, and this has been going on for too long. I don't the the emission air the ninigi. There's a plant flame. Do twenty-four hours a day. There's neighboring schools. They're inhaling those. And our communities are com are inhaling that too. Art and Le Valley at and that's been going on 20 years under your watch. These poisoning shouldn't be allowed across the reservation with coal mine. With that, I don't lay trust. Khadaz, then they go to contaminate that. And it seems like this is a dump site for poisoning the Navajo Nation. Khaled, you don't write out a report to help these people. I think this is your responsibility to write, write up these citations for all these events against all these corporates that you're supporting. I know there's a lot of settlement that you you've been participated in and got involved in. 
lot of explanation in this eight I reserve my time yeah reserve time of 41 seconds next in queue we have honorable Simpson Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, all members of the 25th Council. Thank you, Madam Chair, Pissus, for sponsoring the legislation. Congratulations on your appointment, Mr. City. You do have my vote. As you know, Easter Agency, part of the chapters that I believe my brother already brought up, uh, Armo Delegate, Stephen Marviso, Uranium. And we know we have numerous chapters that are impacted by these abandoned uranium mines, Ada. And I know you've been working with Region 9, uh, EPA, and to continue to address this issue, issues. Uh, then uh, we go about to aggressively trying to work with uh, United States uh, EPA and United States itself or with our correctional people. And we want to, I'm just uh, asking for you to continue to work aggressively to secure more money to address uh, these uh, abandoned uranium within the Navajo Nation. I know it's not just part of Eastern and other parts of the Navajo Nation that are being affected by these abandoned uh, uranium mines. And all in all, content could continue to work very aggressively towards this uh, addressing this issue. And also, uh, this, I guess my question is, is how can we help you from the Navajo Nation Council to, to address this issue? In reference to the Iranian uh, abandoned uranium mines, how can we help you from council? What do, what can we do to maybe do supporting legislations or uh, certain legislation to help you to address these issues? Address this issue as mentioned on the uranium abandoned mines. So I say, yeah, though, again, congratulations, Shanta, and you do have my green vote. Uh, thank you, Mentor, and I weigh my risk risk my time. Thank you. Yeah, Honorable Simpson. Uh, colleagues, I don't see anybody else in queue. We'll give the floor back over to the sponsor, Honorable Jesus, uh, Mr. Etsidi. Yate, Ado, Ada, a here had nine kid edition, Shanat, Anne, and Othinigi, Naidol Kedigi, Ado, Koshi, Anne, Hashin, Togo, Aya, Nat, Anne, Need, Law, Nikik, A, Hid the Nair, and lay a Tartnaz Nilinda has Argo, a Ada, a Bane, Dado. Madam Chair, uh, Charles Newton, not think that I I and lay church rock to lay to her to her get out of her shin to go and lady are the neck head any any her job but done not the more yet that or a thought of the more yet that could don't you not any mr. at city though um the team and lay Navajo nation EPA though region 9 EPA and lay church rock chapter J um last Wednesday evening as a has Lee a call AD Red Pond Water or Pipeline Road Committee, Diego. The Quishi Nahai could ah, she Linigi bin yet she na ilta. A call Aja Hajo Baani, Dan Nido Cho Equijet, and Sarah Zanda Ilta days e. A call de de Kodokinat, Ani ye a bajin shlo, a adding hit hasada, and lay a start she am nays nada he el kit age. A call on Linigi a ya by Baquin Seno. A bit be husband or a big days out of Satuik a hard Z. A con lini a bin nacha a ya, non nishigi y nail ansem. Ado kuna and nana, a shanai, Mr. Honorable Vince James, Nelto kuna na a dean kidigi, de the toye ninigi, um, aja a ya de the, um, in here, uh, tala, uh, tala than linigi, aja hashin so bananish a day la, egg a dish genus up bananish a day, and de the net. 
Betzelat, so than Lingo, a co Ajat Toshi Eya, Codon, Linigi, a Hidnat Anni, Linigi, Yeha, Ye Codon, Yinch, Nahadol, Natodi, illegal dumping the Ninigi to Anni, could a co AI da and Linigi Codobin Kayel Tier. Halate our landfill, Linish Apa, a whole, um, a hate our than Linigi, a cojet the nep. Because of the crap, but hot at the no day, a shield to up in Linigi Yang Hill Chehto as in his pairs and deed a lay washing down that a hashine large deeper be his own in Linigi Yang Hick and not as oi in a halate a yap and cutty tassel cut on Linigi Hick widow as the nego a deed a landfill, the trash dump that had Ninigi. Ado Konash, Silla Honorable Doctor Nez Nesto Kodo, and Chinat Ani Linigi A D de Kodo, Behain Zigi for the preservation of land, Likea Pa Hayando, Linasco Hotes Ado Toda Dat Ahigido, NFPI by Yan Tigi, Eto and Linigi Hiha. Ado Konana Eya Ado, Shija Mr. Honorable Toth Nesto Kodon Linigi illegal trash dump. Eighth in Linigi, he had do di de kin. Hashtan shin does Nilasa da dog a ye bananish eatel eda editha and lay Bureau of Indian Affairs Arjibic est here. A cohon Lini she a ya hate on Lini Ekoto, and he not on the yan sick case eat I codona nishin Liniki in Haito, Lesto Ada, Arnable, um, Rick Nez Nesto Shinai, Codon Linigi. Uh, di de carb uh, coal ash hat nidi gini nahanza land surrender by yeltia kodo eya um hinat ani adin histado uh kodon linigi ad stop in the hat a gitist a ita do kodon linigi a large ratit ahi a dana kodon kitchen um in here in here away in kitchen in the yahi gil to kodo hajo binki yada dil tien kisne um madam um a G Kodo and Miss Branch A Shield Nan Nishin Linigi Ajib Nil Kot Kujaba the Dish Ashto Ado Mr Nota Honorable Nota Nesto Hiha Solo Waste or Kodobina Adin Kidigi Kodo Mr at City at Tan Day Z Nanana Nish in on Hat Isha Tada Latina Kigo Kwagi the Nebike up a car in the non nishin linigi a de leto a bash holding at the no ishi kodo yin snahadolna Ado Adan Shadeja Chair Parish Nesto and Linigi Kunda and sustaining the the Nahosan Humahajoba Ahayando Le Nasko Hotes Ado no Ado in the Kundin Hinat Ani Mr. Ad City Gi Ebenan Nishin Leda Yi Laya Nishek at Ik upon Sin Kisnik Akwaginat Ani Sin Link Nasko Hotes Ado no Nadin Kid Eshikto and Linigi Kunch and Nahado At Ado Kuna Eya Ado um Honorable um Bigage she and lay that Dikun Linigi Hait Ah Epe has Ani Bitzilo, Odo Nicht Nadi illegal trash dump, Adon lay recycled that that Ahegi across the Navajo Nation. So the art hist Eo from Nleha Ato A Aje, Doshata Ato Naha Costa Nebikea Paka E Dikait Ah Eya, Hajo Epe has Ani Dik, and Stokodo work session Eya, EPA Ekodo being Kate. Ado Kune, Honorable Yainito, Yat Ekodon Linigina, Dins Kido, Kude E Anni, the Dan Trago, Nahot E Anethe, the Queda, the Moya, Danshi, Koda Hagosha, the Do, no Kun, Linigin Hitch, and Siyai Ad, Kun, the Hashin Togo, E D, the Oil Hat Ninigi, the Contamination, Ba Old Dahla, Ado Emissions Hat Ninigi, Kudin Hik Ain Hit Ne. Hashin Sogon, Linigi, the fumes, the yet the hat zi. Don't lay the Nahasabe, um, lay air gita and jikishla, ishin lay, um, flames that, um, when they're burning at night. A call eight dot shin, Linigi shitish, ah, a decodo, and cannot any Linigi ya kunzen, a shit dot codon, Linigi, um, and sadden Linigi hard dots, Ado Kuna, a shinai, Arnold Simpson, that dot codon, Linigi. Ah, Nico Jin Leha, Apiago, Ajo, and Hatnas, and Ledokea, and Linigi, Ajo, Ayego, and the Haz de Banyam Uranium Mine, Ye, Kun Lini Hashine, Lange, Kunde, in Has Twe Sonic, and Hik A, 
Back to you, Madam Chair. I'd like to give this time to Mr. Etsiri. Yeah, Mr. Etsiri. Yeah, Madam Speaker, Otto, um, Chair Jesus. Um, first off, uh, yeah, thank you for the statements of support outright. I appreciate that very much. Uh, Madam Chair, Eugenia Charles Newton, there are uh, many issues in Shiprock that we look forward to continuing to work on. I'd just like to say that from my past experience um, in working with one of our programs called the Underground Storage Tank Program, we spent a lot of effort cleaning up some of the remnants of past economic development uh, there at the intersection uh, and pulled those tanks out. And now I believe those lands are ready for redevelopment. So. Uh, we know that there's plenty more to do in Shiprock, and we look forward to, to working with you also. Um, Shant, uh, Mr. Arviso, Delegate Arviso, um, you are very much on the forefront, too, uh, on the abandoned uranium mining issues, representing all the chapters, uh, including the Northeast Church Rock chapter. Um, we have a lot of work to do to continue to meet the people's desires and their needs, also to find a pathway forward that also um, that the companies can go along with. The a Northeast Church Rock mine site and the options for cleaning it up involve working with the United Nuclear Corporation and their parent company General Electric, and as well as the United States EPA, the United States Department of Energy, the state of New Mexico, uh, and uh, also Region 6 of US EPA. So um, we will be happy to brief you if you would like an individual update on all of these matters. Look forward to doing that. Um, another uh, chair. It's James. Uh, when I was a child, I, I had some relatives in Toye and uh, used to play in the streets <laughs> in the housing area when it was still a school. Uh, I think it was during one of the rodeos that used to happen, I think it was in the Ganado area, the Ralph Johnson Memorial. My uncle was married into a family from Toye at the time. We'd go over there and sleep uh, in between Saturday and Sunday performances. Um, and then as a, as a, in high school, I remember going back over there with my father on business when it was uh, a rehabilitation center uh, for uh, our people, as well as when it transitioned into a police academy. It's been reused from its original design of a federal government BIA boarding school. And I have not been there in the past 15 years, but I understand that it is very much in need of attention for uh, the structures that remain there and the infrastructure that has just been left behind. Um, whether or not we can get the Bureau of Indian Affairs to come back to the table, uh, I know that that's probably one major question that we need to uh, put on the table. Um, but if the nation has resumed uh, most of the responsibility over the decades since this land was transferred back to the nation, um, we'll need to see what the, the chapter, of course, has in, in their plans. Um, I've, I've tried to reach out to former leaders, too, just to have a discussion. 
Uh, I used to work very well with uh, former delegate Larry Noble, and I know he's over at Apache County now, so I'm trying to reconnect with him just to get uh, another perspective. Uh, but we look forward to sitting down with the chapter, looking at their land use plans, what they think about the area as well. Uh, I know you have a very good perspective on it as, as, as their leader. Uh, this issue, along with a, a couple of other issues that have jumped right out at me in this first 100 days or so, uh, has me asking <clears throat> the question, how do we handle redevelopment where an original use of land has run its course, either through a lease or uh, from prior use that's been granted authority. Uh, we have plenty of examples, as has been noted. There's some old structures that have been in place, and now they stand, uh, or, or they've been demolished appropriately, and the land is now ready for reuse. So all of these range of issues, uh, I think is going to be a challenge going forward because, to my understanding, the Navajo Nation government does not have a concerted redevelopment agency or redevelopment program. We're going about it kind of in, in different, from different perspectives with different tools. Um, from my background in education as a, a city planner and, and also living and working in urban areas, most notably in, in the San Francisco Bay Area, I do know that local governments and county governments and councils of government and regional approaches to these issues benefit from having a designated redevelopment agency. Um, I'm not sure how challenging that would be at this point in time to, to, to do that because I know these issues need to be addressed right away. That's sort of like just adding to the bureaucracy, but these challenges in my response would be along the lines of how to get the best out of the land that's been used once before. Uh, if it's been contaminated, we do the cleanup, as I mentioned to Chair uh, Eugenia Charles Newton. We've done a lot of cleanup. In my prior work at EPA, we removed over 300 abandoned underground storage tanks, many of them at old trading posts, and the lands have been cleared for reuse and given back to the Navajo Nation. And they're under the Division of Economic Development for reuse. We need to take that even further. And I, I would like to explore those approaches uh, with you, um, Chair, and, and, and other delegates too that have these lands that are, are either prepared for going through redevelopment and, and reuse or lands that already have been cleared and, and making sure that the, the next use for them is safe and, and, and uh, the community can get the benefit, whether it's a business, whether it's an educational institution or other community need, the people will be able to use those lands safely again. On the issue of gas and oil contamination, potential impacts to water wells, our drinking water program it does, a quite a, it does quite a bit of outreach, uh, making sure that our, our agent on the nation that has responsibility for these public water systems, which is primarily NTUA, does a good job of protecting the wellheads and an area around the well that uh, is affected by the drawdown. Combined with the outreach and education that comes from our solid waste program, our enforcement program, we, we try and continue to do a lot of educa education and outreach. We can, we can do more in this area, uh, highlighting oil and, and, and gasoline dumping. We have done some of these outreach in the past. Uh, we have used resources to highlight um, 
these these issues and 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 we can redouble our efforts uh, always making that connection that these impacts to our waters need to be avoided we need to we all need to do our part at every level uh, even if you're doing just a home oil change um, I think a lot of that is just access to information and then just knowing how to plan uh, oftentimes any of these issues that involve disposing of waste as was mentioned by other delegates taking it to the transfer station that still takes a, sometimes a cost uh, either in your own trip in your vehicle to, to get it there or if there's a, a cost to leave it at the transfer station a fee uh, out in tuba city we drive from coal mine which is about 13 miles from tuba to the transfer station and through their efforts the tuba city uh, Tona Nestiza chapter and Coconino County uh, have a, a place to dispose of used oil so I'm not sure if that's available at all transfer stations but that is an element of uh, these operations that can be highlighted if there's a need to so used oil uh, what they call white goods which are the large utility um, large uh, household utilities like refrigerators washing machines and then construction debris all of those things that are not normal household waste um, some of the transfer stations that are operating have provisions to receive those and then help people dispose of them if that's needed in Ganado I know you have an active transfer station but I'm not sure what range of services they offer but um, oftentimes it's a a concerted effort between the chapter and sometimes the county um, and you know we can try and help um, in that regard uh, providing resources education and and, and other uh, other uh, other uh, advice and recommendation uh, dr. Nez yet uh, I'm familiar with the Navajo forestry products industry site from my prior experience and I know that we've been studying that area for a long time upon my return I was very pleased to see that it has been finally made a part of the US EPA brownfields program uh, up to a certain point it was very frustrating because we tried to access other aspects of the EPA Superfund program, but we always um, were not able to get a full support from US EPA. Uh, in the time that I've been gone from US EPA, the prior administrations have been able to leverage that uh, from the US EPA and support from the Brownfields program. It's not full support and there's not full funding, and we do need uh, your support and your your leadership in 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 providing some of the in initial funding at this point uh, I know there was an attempt in the last council by the former delegate and we look forward to working with you on your efforts to continue that uh, we've had a short conversation about that before I look forward to getting a chance to sit down with the chapter and the community uh, on these issues and continue to look to get the most out of the trust that we'll establish and then what the additional federal funds that that can leverage uh, we're looking at a whole range from uh, 50 million to to, to 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 well over well into the hundreds of millions as potential resource needs for the cleanup uh, as you mentioned the list of contaminants asbestos chromium 6 lead and uh, uh, several other uh, hazardous constituents that we have already characterized so we look forward you have my support you have my my commitment um, to continue that work from within Navajo EPA and to continue to try and leverage as much uh, additional support from the federal government and also from within the Navajo Nation because that 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 was a Navajo Nation enterprise and the lands are trust lands 
uh, and, and they have been uh, the responsibility of the Navajo Nation for, for decades too. So this is an example of where we need to really work internally as well, uh, from Navajo EPA to other divisions. So we look forward to that leadership uh, and support that you can provide. Uh, Delegate Tolf, um, on, the, on the issue of illegal dumping that, that affects all communities, um, I'm in the process of re-establishing our enforcement program. Uh, I do, have not gotten all of the explanation in, 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 the, in the brief period I've been back we have, we're supposed to have a core of enforcement officers. They have law enforcement backgrounds. They're authorized to carry firearms. They're trained as police officers. Um, and they patrol across the Navajo Nation. There's only four of them, so they have a wide area to patrol. But these positions have been vacant for over a year. I'm inheriting a I call it a ghost department where there's nobody in place, not even a manager. It's been placed within our waste program, but it needs to stand alone. I'm in the process of reestablishing that. Um, will that make all of the difference? We still need to work with the communities. We still need to work with all, all of the entities in our communities that generate waste schools, businesses, hospitals, government agencies, that's federal, county, Navajo Nation, uh, and then our households. Everybody has a responsibility to understand how to dispose of their waste. And we can give them more tools. We can give them more information. We can advise and make recommendations on how to minimize, you know, or, or um, take advantage of existing recycling opportunities and then work to try and create more of them. One of the things that I will always be concerned about in all of this effort is the distance. Again, people have to travel in order to properly dispose of, of these waste materials. And so I, I'm very sensitive to that because as I said, when we go to the transfer station from my home in Colma and we have to do a 26 mile round trip and, and, and oftentimes um, it, it doesn't reflect that much in our family home budget but I know that for many of our people a 26 mile round trip can be a lot still. So we will continue to work in that and, and I, I would like to just make sure that your expectation is uh, knowledgeable about the efforts that I'm facing right now to reestablish this enforcement aspect uh, and, and our ability to do surveillance and follow up on reports of illegal dumping. We'll get these officers back in place and we will be able to do more response. Um, as far as the local resolution for dealing with older buildings and potential dem demolition projects, uh, transferring lands into trust status, that, that, that is always a, a major undertaking. Uh, if there's a need for support from Navajo EPA for that, you know, we'd be looking to, to help where we may be able to. Um, Chair Nez. I was at Ninah Nazad chapter during the work session that RDC held. I, I, I'm familiar with what has been happening at the Four Corners Power Plant and, and the Navajo mine and other mines in the area um, and, and as well as the San Juan generating station across the river over the last several years. My takeaway from that meeting was there is this serious question about what's going to happen with the coal ash. And I've been briefed internally by my staff 
that it really centers on a rulemaking that US EPA has initiated. They started it in 2020. They haven't finished it. They're trying to make a decision if coal ash waste is going to be subject to um, hazardous waste or solid waste regulations. Over these last decades, coal ash has always been exempted as, as under the definition of a solid waste. And so m my commitment is to, I've already asked my staff, find me the person in headquarters EPA that is in charge of this rulemaking and let me get an update from those folks in that office. And if we need to push them, we can write the letter, we can go, set up the meetings, we can go with a, a, a team of executive and legislative folks to push this rulemaking and to express to them um, what our need is uh, in the context of this national rulemaking. So uh, when the rule does finally get proposed, there will be a, a, a public comment period. But because we have an ability to request consultation, we can do that even pro at any stage in, in this process. So uh, that, is, that was my takeaway. But I, I, I stated during the meeting that the update that I had received at that point, and we're in full support of the land surrender, but we want to make sure that any long-term liabilities doesn't impact the nation in, 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 in a detrimental way and that we can do everything at this point in time to limit those liability issues and to put the community in place to get the most benefit out of the reuse of that land area. Shananta, uh, delicate nota, uh, I, I mentioned illegal dumping uh, response already. We can do more education and outreach. We can uh, continue to try and help our people uh, reduce their their waste generation in their households. The old term is waste minimization. So recycling and just knowing how to um, maybe not buy as much in the way of packaging or uh, using composting, as you mentioned, those those options have been known for, for years. In terms of accessing grants, um, we just ended a grant with the state of New Mexico, uh, which helped a handful of New Mexico chapters, I think including your chapters, some of your chapters. Um, we're looking at what we can do to continue that grant. It might have been only for a short term, but we'll continue to look for those. Those are good even though they may be narrow in focus and don't apply to the Navajo Nation across the board. But in the past, we've used those to learn how to get things done and then transfer that knowledge to, to the rest of the Navajo Nation chapters. So we'll look, continue to look for grant opportunities working with the state of New Mexico and, uh, and, and your communities directly. Um, My top two, you wanted to know my top two? This is across the entire Navajo Nation. And this, my top issue has to do with the need to generate revenue, to re return the Navajo Nation back to $200 million average annual revenue or even more. Because you all know these days a hundred million dollars is doesn't buy the same amount that it used to buy uh, in the 1980s and the 1990s in that regard Navajo EPA can do its part to help by implementing its regulations in a manner that is conducive to regeneration of our economic engines I participated in the negotiations with the power plants um, when they were coming to the end of their leases. My expectation coming out of those negotiations was that the power plants would continue operating to, into 2040. We also addressed their need to reduce their emissions and to emit less 
pollution across the board. In the end, um, they all chose to, 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 to uh, close down their operations. And we don't have those resources anymore in the way of taxation, the way of lease payments and rental payments, um, and, uh, and other revenue streams that used to come from the power plants and the associated coal mines. So my number one priority or my number one concern is how can I have the Navajo Nation EPA help in the identification and reestablishment of major economic engines for the Navajo Nation. I can say that when we turned to gaming, Navajo EPA did everything we could to make sure that those construction projects for the casinos went forward at the fast pace that was desired. In, in fact, we had one instance in Church Rock, Delegate Arviso, where we had people reporting that the fill material that was going under what is now Fire Rock might be coming from an abandoned uranium mine that halted construction, and we had to jump on it. Um, my former managers, we, we all responded as fast as we could, did the sampling and the analysis, and provided verification that the, that soil material was not contaminated with any uranium. It didn't have radioactivity levels of concern so that that project could continue going. Uh, it's that example that I, I, I look forward to reminding my staff and, and, and my managers that we can do our part. We can, we can do our job, fulfill our regulatory and statutory responsibilities, but also be in support because this, is, this position and this agency has a very challenging responsibility. We work with the community, individual expectations. When community groups organize into uh, non-governmental organizations and, and work together, like Dene Care, Ton Jona and Ne, then we have the companies our own companies, our own small businesses, our own um, large companies, and then the ones that come from off the reservation. We have a business community. We call them the regulated community if they happen to um, need to be regulated. And then we have our divisions, our partners, and we have our Navajo Nation government. Then we have our state partners, and we have the federal government. We need to create a balance in working with all those. Um, all those entities and all those interests. So all those things come into the Navajo EPA from time to time, and, and it's, it's, it's a management job of managing all the expectations and sometimes dissatisfaction because, it's, as you know, it, it's a very tough job to please everyone. So my number one concern is, is, is in regards to helping the Navajo Nation get back into revenue generation. My second priority is to continue developing the Navajo EPA as a strong environmental regulatory agency. And that requires paying attention to what my staff and my managers need. We have done decades of capacity building. We've used grants from EPA to staff up, to get trained, we have requested delegations of authority from the federal government, and we've been granted those. So now we are in the position to make these decisions. We need to continue to develop internally so that we can do the best job being responsive to our people, because many of these decisions that come to my desk will have to be vetted in our communities. We have responsibilities to do public comment periods. We have responsibility to listen to the public when, when these decisions are being made. Many of these concerns are now being voiced under the request for free, infor free informed and prior consent. Uh, it's a human rights term. And I, I'm looking to strengthen the agency to be responsive to our people in that regard. But we also need to grow internally. Um, I have managers that have retired, people that I used to work with, uh, 
eight years ago that are no longer there. I have some managers that I used to work with that have passed on. I've had key staff move to other positions. So institutional knowledge is a major concern of mine. I don't want to lose anybody uh, prematurely. I want to make sure I can work with the managers to grow our next generation of, of leaders. In, in a lot of ways, we also need more facilities, uh, improved facilities. I've already had discussions with my managers about the need for our own internal capital improvement program. The facilities we operate in now are, are, are in need of replacement. So we are going to be approaching this and we will be coming to inform you of how you can help us um, because we need, to, we need to keep growing in our legal capacity, our technical capacity, our policy making capacity, and then the way we support the Navajo Nation in resuming all of the, uh, the, the revenue that needs to be uh, generated to continue operating our government and to provide the needed services across all our communities. So those are my top two priorities. Uh, Chair Parrish, the tourism industry has long been identified as a major resource. Many things have been done to support it. We'll continue to do everything that the Navajo EPA can do to support uh, tourism, not only in the Monument Valley area in Utah, but uh, all across uh, our great Navajo Nation. In particular, the issue that you highlighted about noxious weeds, I do know that in the past we have worked alongside BIA and other agencies in, in the Ganado region. We, we address salt cedar uh, as, as, as a management issue. Uh, we do have a long-standing pesticide program. We can address these uh, noxious or invasive plants uh, in, in a management uh, manner and we can achieve the results uh, to allow for the farming that you say is important and a priority. So uh, based on that experience, I'll, I'll go back to my pesticide program and, 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 and if we need to come out and get more information from the local community, that's what we'll do. But we have, we have done this work. Um, I'm not sure, I'll have to check to see if the a actual uh, elimination of salt cedar was, was effective because I'm not sure if they returned back in those waterways in the Ganado area. As far as the difference coming back into EPA, it's part of my top two priorities. I'm very concerned with working to identify institutional knowledge base within the Navajo EPA. I'm very focused now on finding those people that need to be our next generation of managers. I'm fortunate enough to be able to come back and I do have managers that have been there for more than 20 years and we have started talking about succession planning and moving forward. Um, the issues of personnel growth and generational planning uh, we do need more resources for that, but you know we understand the issues that we face now about how much we, we can expect from the general fund. So we'll have to do some serious planning uh, to try and retain what we have right now and continue to build what we need in the future in terms of our future management core. Um, the main example that I am reminded of and why this is so important to me is I had a great waste regulatory department manager, the late Arlene Luther. She passed away in 2007 unexpectedly while I was still in 
executive director position before. And that was a big loss for, for our agency. The person that replaced her was a long-term veteran too, and that was good for the program, but now she is retired. And so these needs are, are, are very important. I don't want to overlook them. I really want to also be in a position to attract many of our young technical people, products of the STEM initiative, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Uh, we do have some young people that are, are new to me. I'm trying to reach out and meet with them and talk to them, encourage them to stay. Like many, Navajo, uh, like many Navajo governmental programs, we train people, we invest in them, and sometimes we lose them to other, in, other organizations that can pay a higher salary or offer other incentives that we can't. But we're going to look to, to shore up our next generation of managers, and that will be one of my main differences. Because before, um, we were passing laws and we were implementing regulations. We were still building up and putting the tools in place that we needed. And I didn't pay that much attention to institutional knowledge and succession planning when I was in EPA before. Um, one example that I'll give you just this week. The US EPA Region 9 is holding a quarterly meeting of all the tribes in Region 9. I was invited to be there as the representative of the Navajo Nation. I delegated that to a long-standing veteran staffer. Uh, her name is Vivian Craig. She's been in Navajo EPA for uh, over 25 years. At the point we were talking about this meeting, she simply made a request. She said, I'd like to go to this meeting. And I said, OK, you will represent me. And we prepared her, and she went. She's not a young staffer, but she knows her job, and she knows how to communicate uh, what needs to be communicated to EPA. And, and, and I asked her to, to go in my stead, because I knew I had to be here for this purpose and other purposes uh, this week. I'm looking forward to sharing this leadership responsibility with other key people in Navajo EPA that have experience, but also bringing along, as I said, the next generation of leaders. I want to make those opportunities available to my staff. So that will be different. That will be a difference as well. Uh, Delegate uh, Begay, I, I believe I answered some of the illegal dumping, in particular about oil, I mean, sorry, uh, batteries and other hazardous materials. Um, as I said, some of the transfer stations in some of our communities make provisions and make allowance for receipt of those and help our people dispose of them. But if we need to help uh, the communities of Alamo, Tohajale, and Rayma with that, we'll take advantage of some of this experience that we have. And if we need to find resources from the state uh, to help in that regard, we'll, we'll do our best to be alongside you and make those requests and, and have those meetings and discussions to get those resources um, for not only that and, and recycling. I do think it's worthwhile to do that because not only do we have to be concerned about battery disposal right now, but if we're going to be serious about renewal, renewable energy, that comes with solar panels, that comes with batteries for battery storage and that comes with uh, if we do windmills the blades they all wear out and they all need all need to be disposed of somewhere along the way so all of these implementation of renewable energy they generate a waste stream too and we need to be able to have a management uh, capacity to help dispose of all of those that all of those aspects of renewable energy that will need changing out. Uh, Delegate Unito, I mentioned that our air quality program will be issuing minor source regulations uh, very soon. They've been under review at DOJ for almost two years now. We're, we keep asking for them back so that we can promulgate them. 
During the time that I was here before, we were very focused on reducing emissions at the major sources. At that time, it was the power plants and the coal mines and some of the gas pipeline uh, stations. And so at that point in time, we did not have the minor source regulations in development. And so all of the, 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 the emissions from the flaring, from oil and gas production, uh, we, we did not address those at that time. These minor source regulations will be focused and will incorporate these companies in the oil fields. I would ask um, that uh, you know, if there are need to explain these, uh, we will be putting, you know, if it requires a work session, um, we can do that. The promulgation of our regulations will come to the Resources and Development Committee, I think for final approval, but um, if there's interest uh, across the Navajo Nation Council, you know, we can we can do that presentation and have the discussions about what the impact of these regulations will actually do. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot more facilities that will be subject to these regulations, and uh, I know that a lot of times they will have their concerns as well, and they will express them directly to us, or they will come to you. Uh, for for expressing their concerns as well. So, again, we'll have to reach a balance as as far as these uh, regulations go. But the emissions and the inventory and getting information, this program will also do that as well to help make sure that um, all of these levels uh, of emissions that are impacting our people are are captured, and we can do that reporting on a regular basis and be more transparent with the information. Um, so we look forward to, to developing that part of our air quality program. Uh, Delegate Simpson, uh, thank you for your support. And, and again, working with uh, the other delegates in the Eastern Agency uh, on our AUM issues, we, we will make sure that uh, you are updated. One of the things in terms of our help a request for help from the council. There's, there's our standing position through the Diné Natural Resources Protection Act. Uh, we are reviewing that with DOJ, and there may be a proposal to make some amendments to strengthen it. So we will be looking to present that uh, in the in the in the near future, and uh, we'll have the discussion and answer your questions. We may have some a need for a work session. Uh, for that as well. It is a major piece of legislation in our whole endeavor to address the past uranium mining impacts and our position going forward to try and stop any new uranium mining because that is still an issue. Um, for the last eight years, I took the spot price of uranium off of my laptop. <laughs> I put it back on there now. It stands around $50 a pound. That is the driving force. When that price for uranium starts to go up again, you start to see more interest in renewed uranium mining. But we need to take this time before it gets to that level. And what that level is, I don't know. But we already have one company that's starting to do exploration. And we need to strengthen our, 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 our tools both policy, regulations, and statutory tools to uh, continue to make it clear to everybody what our position is on new uranium mining, that we're not ready for it yet. We still have a lot of work to do to clean up the impacts from the 20th century from past uranium mining. So that is one request I will make of, of, of the leadership here today, uh, Shanant A, would, would, look, uh, would ask that you look forward to that from us. Thank you very much. Madam uh, Chair, Madam Speaker. Kehat Shada Kodo, Honorable Jesus, and Mr. Etsidi for your responses to my colleagues' questions. And we'll go back to request to speak. We have Honorable Helena Nesbigay joining us via Zoom.
Uh, Shema Arnable Begay Shema Koto do Hojo Otnitz at the Your audio goes in and out on our end. Oh, Shamai, we can hear you now. Okay, yeah. I just have a question, and I just want to mention some um, sites in my area for the record. So, Lake Powell and uh, Lake Powell, um, energy gas travel, Lake Powell from to um, the body cold that Melville be that is taken out. So the grazing area can be replenished for the grazing permit to use to get eight of us up to thousand dollars. And then the Kaibito boarding school too, we have old CIA boarding school of guilty old employee buildings that were still there that are vacant and um, they don't they don't need it anymore and those need to be um, taken care of, they cleaned up, and then not only are those old Senate, and they're taking, just taking, um, taking about eight, six acres of land from the chapter that they're requesting to be cleaned up to. So, eight yards or transparent in the middle of the other, um, sub, excuse me, I have a car, no, just to clean it up. I don't want to die. A lot of our, um, elders and young people young families are, that are just still starting their homes are requesting for homes out here and the water extension and they're really uh, they're giving them a hard time and they're doing like a lot of them are using our houses and I know a few years ago I attended training about an outhouse and it can affect the ground the ground or the ground water and everything under the ground Shema Honorable Begay. And we do have reserve time. Kodo Shiyaj, Honorable Chair Vince James with 25 seconds. Honorable Dr. Andy Nez with 1 minute and 38 seconds. Honorable Yanito with 41 seconds. We'll go back around to Honorable Chair Vince James, 25 seconds. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Oh, Mr. Itsidi, thank you for the response. Uh, my, my last question is going to be in regards to if chapters would like to hear a report from EPA with the issues that are going on within their chapter, who would be the contact person? Other than that, I'm ready to vote green uh, for, the, for your confirmation. Thank you. I waive the rest of my time, Speaker. Honorable Chair Vince James waves his time. Honorable Dr. Andy Nez, one minute and 38 seconds. I don't see him in the chambers. Uh, we'll come back around to him. Okay. Honorable Dr. Andy Nez, one minute and 38 seconds. Oh, yeah. Uh, speaker, I'll, I'll reserve my time at this moment. Thank you. Reserve time of 136. Kodosh Yaj, Honorable Yanito, 41 seconds. Yeah, Teo, yeah. Kato, um, need to respond in like your revenues, yeah, number one priority. And then, yeah, I think you need to start citating all these accidents that that's happening across the reservation. That I think the revenue will really climb up that way. 
could always have that need in as Navajo. I don't know, did, did you ever go up back to the, the victims that you remove at these um, uh, did you ever write up a, a report on them to help them somehow? Yeah. Reserve my time. Two seconds, reserve time. Honorable Shana Antla, via Zoom. Madam Speaker, to my honorable colleagues, and then also Madam Chair, Ms. Brenda Jesus, and then also Mr. Stephen at City. Thank you for answering the questions here today. And I also just wanted to state on the record that we with RDC have worked with Mr. Itsidi and each time that we have a meeting with him, he always does come prepared. And then in addition to that, he has also set up meetings with the US EPA. And so they do have plans for more cleanups and then also with a new site, which is gonna be based um, nearby in Flagstaff. So I do see his plans coming through, and I know that for myself, I do have some abandoned sites within the central agency, and through Mr. Itsidi, he has offered to do presentations along with the US EPA team. So I believe that with all my colleagues, their concerns, and then also representing their communities, they have the opportunity to reach out to the EPA team. And then also we do know some of the challenges that he has presented here today as far as the staffing. But I feel that with what he has answered today uh, with his succession plan, I look forward to hearing that. And then also bringing more environmentalists on board those that are engineering with natural resources. I look forward to uh, building an internship program, perhaps with the Navajo Nation. That would be a recommendation that I have. And then also I do agree with uh, my colleagues when they stated that we do need more written reports. So I, d I am in agreement with that. But I just wanted to say thank you to Mr. Titi and he does have my support as well. And then also thank you to Madam Chair for sponsoring this legislation. And with that, I will go ahead and waive the rest of my time. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Yeah, Honorable Tla waves her time. And we're going back around to Honorable Dr. Andy Nez with one minute and 36 seconds. Great, thank you, Shada, Madam Speaker, and again to our agents here. Uh, thank you, I appreciate you responding to my questions and concerns regarding NFPI, as well as justice for our land here. And Kodoshi, yet Honorable Toth had mentioned it, enforcement of trash, uh, illegal dumping. I um, look forward to working with you on that because I know that's um, a big concern for our communities, especially in rural areas. Um, this morning I was, before I got to the chambers, I was helping our community of Red Lake Navajo pick up trash. And the very unique things you find that people decide to throw on the side of the road from mattresses to chairs to tires, all sorts of things. But it's also quite worse when you go into the forest um, in our communities and we have the beautiful Chiscas, the plateaus here in the Defiance Upper District 18 area. So. I'm um, looking forward to that enforcement and partnering, working with you on what we can do as well on behalf of our communities, our livestock, farmers, et cetera. So thank you again. And uh, Madam Speaker, I wait the rest of my time. Thank you, Honorable Nez waves his time. We'll return back to the floor with um, the Chair Jesus and Mr. Etsidi for your responses. I'm going to go ahead and just give this time back over to Mr. Etsidi to make a response with some of the recommendations and also 
um, additional questions that may have been posed. Uh, Madam, Madam Speaker, Mr. Tsidi. Uh, yeah, Madam Chair, Madam Speaker, uh, thank you for the question again. It's uh, not a delegate you need to, I'm sorry, I, I overlooked the Tsetra question. Um, but before I address that, um, I, I do uh, agree that um, enforcement that results in the issuance of citations uh, is an important tool. And we have done that in the past. Uh, I, I do know that early on when we started to implement our regulations, there was still a concern across the nation about coming on too heavy, especially if it involves citing our own people. So we spent a lot of time and energy on education so that people would be more compliant as opposed to just giving them a ticket and having them pay a fine. We are 10 years beyond that now, and we can always do more education, but uh, the issuance of citations, uh, we, need to get, we need to get back on that. Um, and as I reestablish our enforcement office and hire new enforcement officers, they will have the ability and the authority to issue those citations from our office. Um, but we will still be very minded and mindful of the need to educate. When it comes to violations from regulated entities, companies, um, we do spend a lot of time getting them back into compliance, but we can take the avenue of being more heavy handed with uh, fines. So, you know, we have that in our toolkit and we will look to uh, uh, use those tools uh, going forward. Uh, when we get to that point of issuing permits under the minor source permitting, um, we will be in, in a better position, especially when it comes to the impacts from the oil fields and the companies that are still operating there. That's always a component, uh, but in order to get the policy regulatory basis for that under the Navajo Nation Clean Air Act, we will need to promulgate those re regulations. Thank you. Uh, that was, from my understanding, my recollection, a reclamation project that was led by the Navajo Nation Abandoned Mine Lands Program. Uh, to what extent Navajo EPA has now either inherited, taken over, or has responsibility for that site? Uh, I need to look into that more. I have not asked for a briefing on that particular site yet. If there were people that were removed, uh, I'll need to understand that and in, in, in regards to making a response to provide any assistance to them, uh, I'll need that information to go forward. But if there's uh, any, any that you already have in, in hand, uh, or you can lead us to the people that are having these concerns, that would be very helpful to have that information too and look forward to working with you on, on a direct response to this population of people that live around this uh, identified site in Satra. Uh, Delegate Claw, you mentioned internship program. Uh, in my previous time at Navajo EPA, uh, worked very well with Northern Arizona University. And what they have there is an institute for environmental professionals, tribal environmental professionals. And they help with internship programs, they help with training, uh, various different environmental program areas. Uh, I look forward to reconnecting with not only NAU, but sometimes US EPA also has internship program resources. Uh, and I, I know locally too, we have benefited from working closely with our workforce development program within the Navajo Nation to get young people interested in this field, to spend some time working in our offices and helping out. So reaching out nationwide, reaching out regionally to our universities, uh, utilizing the NAU, ITEP, Institute for Tribal Environmental Professionals Organization, as well as our local resources, 
uh, and even directly to our high schools, uh, summer employment programs too. So we will be looking at what we can do to um, engage with our student population, high school, college level. Um, last thing I'd like to say about training and, and education is that in my prior term at EPA, I was supportive of staff who had no college degrees to attain their first college degree, whether it was an AA degree or a bachelor's degree. There was a handful of people that were able to get their degrees. I was also very helpful and supportive of people who had bachelor's degrees who were interested in attaining their master's degrees, and we helped them attain their master's degrees. And there were a couple of people who were wanting to pursue PhDs, and we were supportive in that endeavor as well. All of these help with retention. So I am very open to that as well within my staff and uh, helping where we can with other people that might be looking to have a career in environmental management. So I wanted to say that. And then the last thing is to the organizations. Uh, the last time around, I had an open door policy. I already have a request from Dene Care to meet with me. Uh, I, I spoke with Miss Nicole Horseherder at the beginning of the week. I, I wasn't able to reconnect with her, but I wanted to make sure that our environmental organizations uh, know that they're welcome and I'm willing to sit down with them in my office or meet them um, at their offices. Um, there are more of them today than there were when I was last in office, so I look forward to meeting all the new faces and the new organizations. Yes, not uh. Thank you, Mr. Etsiri Ado Kodoshade, Honorable Jesus, for your responses. Ado Kone Banasoigi. We have Shiaj Honorable Daniels via Zoom. Honorable Daniels. We'll come back around. We do have one reserve time. Honorable Yanito with uh, two seconds. Going back around, we have Honorable Daniels, Shiaj, if you're online with us. Second call, Honorable Daniels. Third call. Honorable Jesus, return the floor back to you for closing comments. I don't see anybody else in queue. Yat e nana kya, Madam Speaker Shadeja, Ado e ya inda, Kwadon Linigi, Shanat ani no Linigi of the 25th Navajo Nation Council. Kwadot adan trago o kya in kidi nido di den da inishi bi e kuntlin ado bikeje. Kwadon Linigi e ya. Nihidato Neya Nihia Away, Mr. At City, Kundini Gihid Ah, Dinishi Ban, so Keso Yat Eho Do, Kun Junon Da Ido Kido Yat Eho Eya Kodon, Linigi Nan Nishin Ha Ido Lake, Oquin Zendo Benachi, she Eya Kun, Linigi Naso Nate Nature, Kot Ayat Eho Nan Nish Beleda Dini, Ah Kot and Sogot Eya Hiha Dini, Do Kodo Elsa Banat and Jaffa final comments from Mr. At City. Yeah, Madam Speaker. Na ihe hach Thank you for your questions, Otto. I would just like to conclude by saying that I'm very thankful, and very happy and excited to be a part of the Nigran Montoya administration. I, I have 
uh, every intention of working uh, w very closely with President Nigren, Vice President Montoya, uh, and my oversight committee, Otto, all of the delegates from the 25th Navajo Nation Council. Uh, look forward to working with you in these next three three years and what is it four months it's less than four years now so the clock is ticking so ready to roll up my sleeves yeah thank you honorable colleagues we don't have anybody else in queue for additional comments or questions and we also don't have any reserve time Second call for comments and questions. Third call, honorable colleagues, I go to for our final vote on legislation Honorable Nathan Nota. Honorable Nathan Nota. Honorable Nathan Nota did not vote. Honorable Carl Slater. Honorable Carl Slater. Honorable Carl Slater did not vote. Honorable Curtis Yanito. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Honorable Sherilyn Yazi. Honorable Sherilyn Yazi votes red. Going back up. Honorable Nathan Nota. Honorable Nathan Nota. Honorable Nathan Nota did not vote. Honorable Carl Slater. Honorable Carl Slater. Honorable Carl Slater did not vote. Honorable Amber Kanas Bakrati is excused. Honorable Seth Damon is excused. Honorable Casey Allen Johnson is excused. Honorable Jermaine Simonson is excused. Honorable Nota. Honorable Nathan Nota votes green. Madam Speaker, with the vote of 16 in favor, two opposed, and Madam Speaker not voting. Honorable colleagues, we have 16 in favor, two opposed, and speaker not voting. So the main motion passes. Congratulations, Mr. Etsidi. We have next on our agenda legislation 0056-23, sponsored by Honorable Andy Nez. We do have the sponsor here. Uh, staff, could you help us read the legislation to the record? Legislation 0056-23, an action relating to budget and finance, health, education, and human services, and Nabikiyatkit committees, and the Navajo Nation Council, approving the use of Title IV-E funds by the Navajo Division of Social Services. Sponsor, Honorable Andy Nez. This legislation went before the Budget and Finance Committee, the Health, Education, and Human Services Committee, and the Committees with a do pass and no amendments. It moved forward to the Navajo Nation Council. Per Navajo Nation Council Rules of Order, 
9. This legislation has been read into the record by electronic voice recording. Madam Speaker. Yeah, colleagues, do we have a motion? Motion by Honorable Vince James. Second, Honorable Arviso. Colleagues, well, will we have any, any questions on this legislation? Second call. Third call, no questions. Honorable colleagues, we're going straight to a vote on legislation 0056-23. Honorable Herman M. Daniels, Jr. Honorable Herman M. Daniels, Jr. Honorable Herman M. Daniels, Jr. did not vote. Honorable Carl Slater. Honorable Carl Slater. Honorable Carl Slater did not vote. Honorable Curtis Yanito. Honorable Curtis Yanito votes green. Honorable Sherilyn Yazi. Honorable Sherilyn Yazi votes green. Going back up, Honorable Herman M. Daniels Jr. Honorable Herman M. Daniels Jr. Honorable Herman M. Daniels Jr. did not vote. Honorable Carl Slater. Honorable Carl Slater. Honorable Carl Slater did not vote. Honorable Otto votes green. Honorable Amber Kness Bacrati is excused. Honorable Seth Damon is excused. Honorable Casey Allen Johnson is excused. Honorable Jermaine Simonson is excused. Madam, Sp Madam Speaker, with a vote of 17 in favor, zero opposed. Madam Speaker, not voting. Thank you, hat staff. We do have a vote of 17 in favor, zero opposed, and Speaker, not voting. The main motion passes. Colleagues, we are on next portion of our agenda. We do have legislation 0059-23, sponsored by Honorable Danny Simpson. We do have the sponsor here within the council chambers. Staff, could you help us read the legislation to the record? Legislation 0059-23. An action relating to budget and finance, resource and development, health, education, and human services, and the committees, and the Navajo Nation Council, amending CAP-39-18 to extend the Siha Sin Fund's reversion deadline for Navajo Technical University's Crown Point Campus Student Housing Expenditure Plan. Sponsor, Honorable Danny Simpson. Co-sponsor, Honorable Andy Nez. This legislation went before the Budget and Finance, Resource and Development, Health, Education and Human Services and the Committees with a due pass and no amendments. This legislation came bef is coming before the Navajo Nation Council. This legislation has been read into 
the record by electronic voice recording per Navajo Nation Council Rules of Order Number 9. Madam Speaker. We do have a motion by Honorable Tolth. Second. Honorable Norman Begay. Uh, we also have a special guest in the gallery out at the entrance area. We have a former delegate, Leonard Chi. Kodoshana. Welcome. Honorable colleagues, will we be having any questions or comments on this legislation? We do have comments and questions on the legislation. We'll give the sponsor, Honorable Simpson, 20 minutes. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, members of the 25th Council. Good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon. Chike Adan Deso, that are visiting the gallery and also individuals that are listening to the council session. Uh, good afternoon, good afternoon. Aro Kehat Dida, Hitani Sozi Dida, Legislation 059 23. Before I uh, do go um, forward, uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to introduce my uh, agent or agents. Uh, I do have um, um, Mr. Arviso here with, in, uh, with uh, NTU, Napa Technical University, and uh, Mr. Dr. Guy. The president of NTU is supposed to be here too, but uh, he's flying back right now from uh, a meeting from uh, Los Angeles. So hope he does get on Zoom, Ada. So with that, uh, members of the 25th Council, Dida, the base of sis and the Shini, which are called Gada Dida, NTU for student housing, Dida. Aro the Be Ahi, May 1st, 2023, Dida. Akodi Kuran, uh, the, the deadline got extended to May 1st, uh, 2028. Did a call, uh, his father's decision, uh, did a basic which you could guy, I believe, was about 14 million dollars, 300 thousand dollars. Did a call, did a lot of our projects that got funded through assistance funds were delayed, uh, because of this pandemic, COVID, at any data. Hey, what, that's one uh, reason why uh, the money is still there. Uh, at the same time, uh, NHA uh, did uh, fund this project too. Uh, the total project, I believe, was $28 million. But additional funds, uh, Mr. Arviso did. Uh, at the meantime, some what the, the other delay was that uh, NHA's requirement, the federal requirement, when they uh, appropriate money to entities. So they had to, uh, entry had to comply with where this building was going to be placed at Ada. So as you know, when you, when a project is funded through the HASDA, like housing sub subdivision, you know, you know, it can't be in a flood zone. So COVID at Nigo did NTU, the student campus is within the flood zone. Uh, Ada, they had to work things out to find a new, within the withdrawal land for NTA to uh, select a new site, Aka. Not so see it, it costs in Senada. It's supposed to be passed out where the new site will be at for this proposed uh, student ca uh, student uh, housing uh, campus, student housing for NTU. So a quick question: uh, One reason why the money has not been expended through assessment funds is because of the pandemic, also because the requirement uh, from uh, NHA Naval Housing Authority on before they appropriate money, a new site had to be found for this. Uh, uh, proposed uh, student housing area. So with that, uh, Madam uh, Speaker, to all members of the 25th Council, I'd like to go ahead and give the remaining time to Mr. Arviso to introduce himself and give a presentation on why we're asking for extension on the deadline. Uh, Madam Speaker, yeah. Yeah, Honorable Simpson, Mr. Arviso. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Council, thank you for the opportunity. I'm sorry. Everyone's always telling me that to speak up. Thank you for the opportunity to come before you this morning and explain the circumstances that led to 
the delay in the utilizing the funds tied to Sahasin. Um, Dr. Elmer Guy, first off, extends his um, his his um, welcome, and he's sorry that he's not able to be here. He actually is on the college board as a board member, and he had a commitment there. And he is currently, I believe, in the air. And if he were not in the air, he would be on the call. But he extends his um, his his regret for not being here personally or being not being on the call. Um, we did go through a couple of committee meetings and there were some questions regarding um, the commitment re reaffirmed again through the Navajo Housing Authority. Um, I believe you have additional information that you know, shares that, that particular award has been granted again back to Navajo Technical University. And we have met with Navajo Housing Authority. That particular meeting was pr provided through Delegate Seth Damon. He organized and arranged that meeting. So we have the commitment of NHA to move forward. Um, the biggest challenge with regard to getting the site approved and utilizing funds tied to Nahazda was the fact that the initial project was in a flood zone. We've since worked with our community of Crown Point chapter and acquired additional acreage that's adjacent to our current property. So we've, our boundary now is 90 acres in Crown Point, New Mexico. And the, if you have that, that piece of paper on the back there, it shows where initially the, the project was gonna be. And you can see that it is right in that flood area, but adjacent to it up on the hillside now is where the new project project will, will be located. And it, on the back page of the additional documents is a 100-year floodplain study conducted by the Army Corps of Engineers. And you can see the flood areas really prevalent in the community in, in, in Crown Point. But you can see the location of where we're going to be building is outside of that. Currently, the, the project, you know, a lot of that was trying to, to work with NHA and meet the requirements tied to Nahazda. And right now, the, the current project our current project status, um, the, the new proposed the dormitory will be on, located on the 20.26 acre parcel of land, which we have acquired. And that business site lease was granted by previous administration, um, President Nez, and the resolution to support that is RDC AU-47-19, so the property is granted to NTU through business site lease. Port of Privilege, Honorable Vince James. Speaker, I, I raise a point of privilege um, because I'm looking through the packet and we don't have that copy of the map that you're 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 showing us. Um, can can staff provide us the map that he's showing us? It's not part of the packet. There is an attachment here, but um, they're they're the committee um, reports. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Okay, Honorable James, uh, we'll retrieve those documents for you. Uh, just give us a few minutes. Okay, we do have uh, staff passing out that map or those documents. Okoshi, we'll give the presenter, Honorable Simpson, Mr. Arviso, you still have a time of 12 minutes and 37 seconds. Thank you, Madam Speaker and 25th Council. Um, again, real quickly, 
to reiterate the document that was provided to you right now. The front page is the authorization by Nahazda through the Indian Housing Block Grant that we are um, approved for our student housing project. And, and discussions with NHA, that's a grant application we can apply for an annually. We are going to be having a meeting with them May 3rd to, uh, to discuss the approach to acquire some additional program funds through NHA, and we will be going to um, before the NHA Board, Board of Commissioners. And we've, we've invited Delegate Danny Simpson, as well as Delegate Seth Damon, and our other co-sponsor, Dr. Andy Nez, to that meeting so that they're well aware of the strategy moving forward with this project, which entails the use of funds from NHA and the Navajo Nation Sehasen funds. Again, project status, we, we've complied with 24 CFR Part 58, the environmental review and clearance requirements. So that was really the main hurdle. And we've actually have conducted environmental assessment and, and, and clearance. We've hired a, a company called Sauter Miller and Associate, and they completed that assessment and they assured that we are in compliance with 24 CFR 50-4 and 58-5, as well as 58-6. Our boundary and topic, top, topographic survey, that's shared within the resolution giving us the business site lease. And that was RDC AU-47-19. That has been completed. The cultural resource investigation, we hired a contractor, again, Sauter Miller, and they've conducted the the, the assessment and the site was recommended um, is well it was included that the we, we have um, con, you know complied with that requirement and no cultural resources or other additional information is needed a, a drainage study was was conducted and that has been completed that in itself is the page two of the additional documentation that shows where the floodplain zone is and we're outside of that. Soils investigation, I know that that was a question with regard to what was asked at the BNF committee. Um, the soil has been tested and the geomat elevation confirmed that the proposed site is suitable for construction for the new dorm feasibility studies have been completed so we are again have had that meeting with Navajo Housing Authority they are reviewing those documents they're at, right now cr creating the mo uh, MOU and then we'll be working through the the sub award and then we'll go ahead and start to to work to complete or, and bid the project and then we're looking at roughly a year and a half to complete the project once once we're we're um, you know, af after the bid and construction is, is awarded. With that, um, I can go ahead and stand for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Simpson and Mr. Arviso for presenting your legislation. We have first in queue, Honorable Tolt. Thank you, Madam Chair. Also, the, my colleagues in the uh, council chamber, also our visitors, and then Mr. Sampson, Honorable Sampson, and also uh, your uh, agent. Oh, <clears throat> support in the base is already allocated, so uh, the planning is already in place, and everything's in. The, in this package, and I'll, I'm asking all of you uh, to support this. I think in Crown Point Eastern Agency, NTU is the only one that's growing. You have cafeteria for public, and then there's uh, education. Even uh, we use their uh, well center uh, auditorium 
for any event. Adon Halchen Daltap from from New Arizona, Shiprock area, Eastern. Jeno Ale E no Satan's Anch Eko. A it e ya a call some time we used to go over there to eat. Even if you're in Crown Point at noon time you can go there and eat but you have to pay. A conjuno uh a lady nido daltan halchen. So um e na kuroha te sito n ha support the dosil jo e na speta hoil jisto there's no amendment to this uh hopefully there's no amendment to this uh legislation ko e din hinch kido le ko so dai ta pe so chede a do covid 19 e hinch ahi a lar lar uh plans were stalled and so uh, i would recommend the council to uh please approve our request eastern agency as i was looking through the uh, the uh session funding uh on hidden new mexico at the queer in which hotel yalako so even uh a high hidden naked or listen he don't start to pass on hand and not a ibahe on zen nako even nae kuro hotan each at this station at any not any gig Arus hat ina hat nido lehto an halchen badi ne ha jashid ad a otan in de ko jeno allen at soste yospi to da ibts ato nan ste yo kido har atali eko in term de yanak eko chapter ko so we have got to support this uh, legislation for better for our future our kids it is yeah uh to it about this to i weigh my time uh madam speaker thank you yeah hatch chay waves his time uh though connect but also we have honorable chair vince james five minutes um thank you speakers and the members of the council and then also the presenters um just not us honorable simpson yeah and then um from in into you as well uh, my first question, um, well, before I get to my first question, I'd like to say excuse me to my elderly uh, for speaking English. I, I would prefer saying in Navajo, but I know it's hard to find translation and stuff like that. Um, so with that, um, going back to um, my first question, was there a reason why you did not ask um, NHA to fund the whole project from the Nahasda? We have NHA um, that embarrasses the Navajo Nation and embarrasses us as lawmakers to go back to the Capitol Hill and then advocate for more funding for housing. NHA has no justification of the billions of dollars that they have received for the past 10 years of all that money going back to the federal, to Congress. And when we go out there as lawmakers, they don't even want to hear us providing or a advocating for housing funding because our Congress has, are working so hard, they work so hard to get funding, but then NHA comes back and does that embarrassment, returning all those funding back. So with that, I, I just want to know what's the reason of why NHA cannot fund this whole um, project because it is for our students. Uh, other than that, I, I do support the extension. Um, I, I understand, and this is the reason, another reason why I've been asking, we need to have an orientation from Division of Community Development. We need to hear what kind of projects that they're running into, such similar situation that is here before us. From the, the way I understand is that DC has some funding for the projects, they should be construction ready construction ready meaning that all the other um, infrastructures the assessments all of that should have been taken care of but now that's all within in this legislation and also within this funding and so that's that's the main reason why i've been trying to ask we need to have an orientation with the vision of community development to try and figure out where we can assist them as the 25th Navajo Nation Council, where do they need help? 
so we don't run into problems like this with projects that are not even construction ready, that are not even shovel ready. But it's at this point now, but I do support the extension and I do hope that it does happen before 2028. If not, we're gonna be back here sitting at each other again, looking at each other and saying, we need another extension for the CHSN funds, just like any other projects. And one fine example is my project for the um, Ganado Fire District apparatus. Our, our, I, during the um, winter session, I brought that legislation before here, before the council. And that was the second legislation that I had to drop. And that's, that's just like, what is going on with you guys at Division of Community Development? We shouldn't be doing this. And this is the second one that's coming before us again here as council requesting for an extension of the CSN funds. So um, I reserve my time. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Reserve time of 121. Oh, I didn't know Do we have uh, Vice Chair Yazi? Um, good afternoon, everybody. All the delegates that have been here all week. I do appreciate all the um, information and um, getting to hear your debates. And then to everybody else online, uh, thank you for continuing to be informed and learning about our tribal government and the ways we're trying to make sure that we're working with community. Um, so my question would be about this floodplain, this flood study that was completed. And I'm looking at the map and I, I do understand how, um, well, I guess I wanna know, has, have you considered doing conservation plans that would where you're able to plant more vegetation to slow down, you know, floods. Um, how are you, are you able to do that? Has that been considered? Is that part of this uh, flood plain study that was completed? Was that one of the recommendations? Because, um, you know, I, I'm just wondering how we could um, save some of that funding. Um, just kind of thinking out loud and so any I just want to know that information have you have you been able to consider um, actually putting in a conservation plan together because as we move into more climate change and more climate crisis we're going to be experiencing all these kind of things with all our buildings and all our roads and infrastructure so we need to start thinking about how we're putting in um, conservation plans and trying to address these and I, I guess be uh, proactive. Thank you. Reserve my time. Reserve time of 3.07. Honorable colleagues, I don't see anybody else in queue. I'll return back the floor to Honorable Simpson, and Mr. Arviso for those questions. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, members of the 25th Council. Uh, good afternoon, good afternoon. Honorable Delegate Vince James Nadeef Kitty. Uh, before I uh, defer this question to Mr. Arviso, also has to see that. Question on Nadeef Kitty, Honorable Delegate Vince James. I agree with you. This whole project has been funded between the house and the uh, oh, you are Dati Washington. Student house da nitsen no. Aro aro pesi kuchu kuch inho. Aro cho inta. Aro gets reverted back to the federal government. It is embarrassing. Oh, yasin. So, AD of culture, I agree. With, uh, I agree with you. Uh, Arnold delegate Ben James did. Shan Ash did. And we got to do something about it to make sure that these Nahas funds get expended. So, when that was settled, that was okay. In the past, was on it. That was in there. How one day, no. We are put in embarrassment as a council 
because we pay for this money. We go to DC, watch the Northland Eka, based on internet. Oh, it's a cost of Anshinant, our armor delegate, an exchange. Yeah, Aro, Dika, Madam Vice Chair, Nadi, Kiri, Ms. Yazi. Ms. Yazi did Crown Point, the whole majority of the area is in a flood zone. And the chapter official are working with federal entities, the BIA, other uh, federal entities within the uh, region, like out of Albuquerque. I, I'm, I apologize, I can't remember the federal government program they're working with. And I have not participated in that meeting because during that time we have a lot of rain and a lot of snow, so I, we have to re cancel those meetings. But right now, the chapter officials of Crown Point are addressing that whole area of Crown Point being a flood zone area. I believe about 12 years ago, they had a major flood in that area. And we are right now working with certain federal entities to address the flood zones. So I appreciate that and hope we would come up with something within a year or two to address the flood zone. Because if we do get a lot of rain this summer, we're going to be in the same situation again in what we faced about 12 or 14 years ago in Crown Point. So again, thank you, uh, uh, Madam Vice Chair Nate Nikki. So we are working, uh, me and myself as a delegate, working with a chapter official to address that data. I had um, um, Madam Speaker, I'll, she, I'll go and defer uh, to Mr. Arviso to answer the question from uh, uh, Honorable uh, Chair uh, Ben Shane's own and Honorable Delegate Vice uh, Chair, uh, yeah, Ms. Yazi. Thank you, um, Delegate Simpson. Madam Speaker and members of 25th Navajo Nation Council, uh, I apologize. I should um, have started by introducing myself. She Jason Arpiso and she Kiani and Shlomo do Tsayaski di Pashishin. Setna Jini da Shche do Setna Apitli da Shnele. I'm from um, Crown Point, New Mexico. I'm the Vice President of Operations at Navajo Technical University. And, and thank you, um, Delegate Toth, for your, your encouraging words and your support. You know, Navajo Technical University is growing. We are growing. We, we initially started off by offering as the Navajo Nation Skills Center back in 1979. And really the focus then was trades programs. And to this day, we still retain that, that, that ability to offer trades programs. And we are offering academic programs now. We offer baccalaureate degrees and now and master degrees. In fact, to, on the 24th of this month, I think every one of you has been invited to attend our celebration with regard to being the first tribal college to offer a PhD program. So we're accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. If you were to see our enrollment numbers prior to pan the pandemic, we were above 2,000 in enrollment. And that is starting to so started to decrease during the pandemic, but we're also seeing the the figures going back up right now. A lot of our programs and the campuses we do have across the reservation are required that they begin there and, and get their associate degree, and then they have to transfer to finish their 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 bachelor degree or master degree, and now PhD at the main campus in Crown Point. So housing is still you know, a, a major need. We do have housing provided to us at, um, in dormitories for, for women and men, and those are always at capacity. In fact, we're t regularly turning away students, and that really is their de deciding decision to attend higher education if they cannot find adequate housing in the, in the location. So, the need for the, the additional um, housing is, is, is there, and we will continue to, to grow and develop and meet, you know, essentially the needs of the Navajo Nation in our communities. With regard to um, Delegate James, um, thank you for that question. You know, I too do read papers, the papers, and I do continually see that NHA is reverting funds back to the federal government. Um, we've had, you know, a prolonged relationship with them. I mentioned the two dormitories that we do have. Those have been essentially 
occupied for more than 20 years now. They are now the assets of Navajo Technical University and we're able to do what we need to do with them. We also have the support for our student family housing. So we have those units available. And the support of NHA, you know, still is there and just more or less recently, like I mentioned the, with the meeting just this past week, we reaffirmed that commitment or that relationship to work with them. Um, the, <clears throat> we, we don't understand necessarily the, the way NHA reviews or provides funds for the various projects, but we are working with them right now and we, we've been told that there is that commitment and Again, there's going to be a meeting um, May 3rd with NHA, and again, we've invited the various council delegates to attend that meeting. So there's a possibility of those questions being asked at that point in time and seeing how further, you know, their commitment is and, you know, with regard to support of, of funds. But um, right now, I, I really can't answer why NHA doesn't, you know, essentially fund all of the, the project. I know there are qualifications with regard to Indian block grant housing. You have to qualify to, to reside in, in, in that property um, and certain things of, of that, you know, do play a role in how um, projects are, are selected. Um, so. Again, if, if you're uh, available, uh, we can invite you to that meeting as well on the third, and, and we can you know, ask those you know, pertinent questions to get some further understanding as to what projects they, they would support you know, in communities across the reservation. With regard to questions from Delegate Yazi, thank you for the question. And, and um, Delegate Simpson mentioned that, you know, the community of Crown Point is actively looking at, you know, resources to see how, you know, collectively we can address the needs of the community there. You know, at the table is, is NTU. We've been involved in conversations. In fact, we're the, we're, we're the entity that asked the Army Corps of Engineers to provide a, a study in that area. In fact, um, we have essentially that data, and if you're a geologist or you know whoever is able to make any sense of that information, you're more than welcome to have that data for you. Um, and it's not just necessarily data relevant to the community of Crown Point. It's it's data that pretty much serves the the, the entire Navajo Nation. So it's it's extensive, but. Um, Again, we are working, you know, with our community, Crown Point chapter, to figure out how we can mitigate a lot of that, that potential flood. You know, we, we do, there is a big reservoir up to the south of us, and if that were to break, when it would severely flood the, the community of Crown Point. So we're looking at how we could deviate some of that, that runoff. And we have active programs on campus too that look at sustainability, we have a, a focus group to, developed by our students to look at um, traditional ways of planning and traditionally how do we then, you know, grow the crops that we used to have and how can we even, you know, keep those crops sustained and be, be able to provide that back into the community. We have also have faculty and professors who are working with other universities within the southwest you know one particular example is our our work with new mexico tech um, out of socorro and right now we're developing the ability to purify water at several sites across navajo there's some pilot projects we're implementing and we all know that the major contamination with regard to the heavy mi minerals contained in the, in the water, and they've figured out a way to filtrate a lot of that, so at least make it available for our, our livestock to, to utilize, and eventually 
looking to see how we can actually make it available for human consumption once again. So there's that research actively going on. And if, they, if you have any time and, and if you have you know, an opportunity, you know, visit Navajo Technical University. We are the university that serves the Navajo Nation. We are a resource for the nation. And we can and will work with each of you to accommodate and address challenges or concerns in your community. Thank you. Honorable Simpson and Mr. Arviso for your responses. We do have uh, two colleagues in queue for questions and comments. Honorable Chair Brenda Jesus, you have five minutes. Madam Speaker, can you hear me? Yes, Chair. Uh, what it's up? And then also to um, Honorable Simpson uh, for putting this legislation here before the 25th Navajo Nation Council and also to the um, agents that are present here. I just, um, it's really not a question, but um, I know that um, we've been wanting to get answers in regards to these projects that are proposed by chapters. Um, I wanted to share with you that um, the chapters project proposed at Dakes Eagle, I, I really think that CPMD or whoever is the lead agent in taking leads in these um, certain projects really need to start um, analyzing um, if the land acquisition and infrastructure built out are already all there. The reason why I say it is, um, let me just use my chapter, St. Michael's chapter as an example. They thought that, okay, we're done, we're ready, to build this project and give us the six million dollars but it wasn't so there was still homework that needed to be done with um, rerunning the whole infrastructure line which is going to cost about three million dollars this for infrastructure alone and then on top of that there was issues regarding the um regarding the cost of the facility so all together, they wanted the $6 million, but now project is going over $11 million. So Abenago, um, I really think, um, like, I, like Honorable um, uh, James had mentioned, we really need a work session to strategize on which projects AI is the construction ready. So with that, um, we would have the full cost estimate with these projects that will avoid shortfalls like this going into the future. Because from a construction perspective, there's construction indexes that increase every year or decrease depending on economic conditions. I am in support of this legislation because the initiative of this legislation is um, for good intentions as for NTU, one of our tribal universities, to really better the overall, um, I guess, area of the university there in Crown Point. So I just wanted to put that out to Nazani. This is something that really needs to be t highly taken into consideration and we really need to understand the full dynamics of when it comes to constructing these facilities. I so Madam Speaker, and I waive the rest of my time. Kiha Honorable Chair Jesus, Ado Kune, not this kiddie shade, Honorable Tla. Yes, good afternoon, Madam Speaker, Ado Shana, Danny Simpson, Ado Mr. Arviso, Kiha Long for bringing this legislation before the council. And I am in agreement with my colleagues once again. And I just had a question regarding the construction of the student housing. So my question is that we, um, we should be moving forward in a green movement. And I do believe that Honorable Sherilyn Yazi did express that but not only in conservation of the land, but also the sustainability of the buildings. 
And I know coming forth, we will see a legislation proposed by Madam Chair Eugenia Charles Newton as well as, as far as an international building code. But I would like to see the Navajo Nation begin to incorporate green standards within the buildings that are gonna be constructed and such things as water conservation when the toilets are flush, they flush at a minimum. And then also uh, the drinking fountains, the lights and everything within. So I'm hoping that NTU, you will be one of the universities on Navajo that will lead that. And I know that right now on Northern Arizona University, uh, most of their buildings are green buildings. So I would like to see that within the Navajo Nation. And then this is just a food for thought for my colleagues as well. Uh, we did hear from uh, Honorable Shanala Vince James as far as the NHA. And just going back to that, I understand there is a board resolution in place with the NHA board where they are not considering new projects uh, considered model activities, which would benefit students and families. And under NHA guidelines, I believe they would be deemed eligible if they were temporarily relocated as students. So as we know, students have limited income. Most are not able to have employment while they're taking full-time classes. And then some of them also have families. So I believe they would be eligible if we were to look into using the NHA funds. And then also they would be considered temporarily displaced from their main home. So I think we can entertain looking at that again uh, in terms of sustaining the student housing once it is constructed. So I think that as our the 25th Navajo Nation Council. That is some of the recommendations that I have. So with that, Madam Speaker, I will go ahead and waive the rest of my time. She waves her time. And we'll go back to reserve time. We have Honorable Chair Vince James with one minute and 21 seconds. Vice Chair Yazi with three minutes and seven seconds. Honorable Chair James, one minute and 21 seconds. Uh, yeah, I had speaker. And then um, Mr. Arviso, thank you for the response. And then also Don, just not uh, Honorable um, Simpson. Thank you very much. And <clears throat> it is very true that, you know, there is funding sitting there currently uh, I, I believe that uh, NHA is actually even going through a process of trying to figure out how they're going to do their per capita, uh, if they're going to even receive the full uh, fiscal year funding this coming, this upcoming um, fiscal year. They're not, they're, they're, because they have all this money just sitting there, they're not utilizing it. And it's like, you know, Nahasda office in Washington, D.C. has just like said, you know, we're just going to put per capita on there. And um, I think this is a great time to bring this up to NHA. And um, May 3rd, I just need the time. Um, I, I, I do right now, currently, I did pencil it in in my calendar to join you guys, but I'll just need the, the time. So uh, anything for our Navajo children, anything for our um, college institution on the Navajo Nation, uh, I will find and advocate for them. So ADA and I support this uh, legislation waive the rest of my time speaker thank you yeah Shiyash, honorable james waves his time honorable vice chair yazi three minutes and seven seconds <clears throat> thank you again for this time um i do support education um and you are one of the first schools that has a phd program and and then there is that need for housing that is really important um, because in order to be able to get that education and really focus on your your goals you know you have to feel like 
you know, you have a home, you have a place to go to study. If you have kids, you know, your, your family feels safe. So, and those things are important to me. Um, but um, I think the other piece of the conversation that we've been having is, you know, really understanding the scope of the work. Um, and even looking at the other CSM projects. Uh, I think it is important we look at that. We need to do a, have a, big, a bigger to have a bigger discussion with our communities and even with my chapters. Um, I know there's another legislation that's larger, and asking them the feasibility, the capacity of our um, staff, the resources that we have, and just really thinking about it from a feasibility perspective. Do we? really have the means to do this project. Um, and I think I will be asking my chapters those questions with the other legislation. And so I'm still at, in the middle about this. You know, I do want to support it, but I also have to have a better understanding of what, what your where the funding and how it's gonna, how it's gonna, what the outcome is gonna look like, instead of having to continue to um, move move a lot of these uh, legislation and well the projects forward. So, so thank you, and I'll waive the rest of my time. Okay, Honorable Vice Chair Yazi waves her time. Honorable colleagues, I don't see anybody else in queue for additional questions. And we also don't have any reserve time. Second call. Third call. Colleagues, we're going to the main motion vote for legislation 0059-23. Honorable Lamardo Azaret. Honorable Lamardo Azaret. Honorable Lamardo Azaret votes green. Honorable Herman M. Daniels, Jr. Honorable Herman M. Daniels, Jr. Honorable Herman M. Daniels, Jr. did not vote. Once again, Honorable Herman M. Daniels, Jr. Honorable Herman M. Daniels, Jr. Honorable Herman M. Daniels Jr. did not vote. Honorable Amber Kanazba Crotty is excused. Honorable Seth Damon is excused. Honorable Casey Allen Johnson is excused. Honorable Rick Nez is excused. Honorable Jermaine Simonson is excused. Honorable Otto So is excused. Madam Speaker, with the vote of 15 in favor, 
One opposed. Madam Speaker, not voting. Yeah, staff, we do have a vote of 15 in favor, one opposed, and speaker not voting. The motion carries. Colleagues, we are on item AA, legislation 0061-23, prime sponsor, Honorable Riquinez. We have three co-sponsors, Honorable Shana Ann Plaw, Honorable Nathan Nota, Honorable Otto So. Honorable Arviso. Good afternoon, Madam Speaker. Thank you. <clears throat> if I'm in order, I'm, if I may ask to uh, suspend the floor rules and and uh, add an emergency legislation 8123 to the agenda. I need a motion. Do I need a motion that? Do I need a motion? Or, or rather, I motion that uh, we add legislation 8123 to the agenda as an emergency legislation. Thank you, Honorable Arviso. Uh, we'll have staff to put that on the board. There is a motion to suspend the floor rules. All right, thank you, Honorable Arviso. We do have a motion on the floor to suspend floor rules to add emergency legislation 0081-23. Do we have a second? Second by Honorable Norman Begay. Okay, we do have a motion and a second in place. Our colleagues, are there any comments or questions? We'll have staff read that um, motion of suspension of floor rules into the record. Oh, never mind. That was the legislation. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. Um, Honorable <laughs> Chair Vitz James. Um, here had done speaker, Ado members of the council, Ado Kodo, um, Behesodosh Naegi, um, Honorable Arviso and Honorable Begay, Ado um, Kodo, Ah Hajeje Halet An Haban, this case Kodo Halet Ah. We have six of our colleagues that are excused. And I, I believe it requires a two third vote, just, how, just like how it's written on the screen. 
And so I don't, I don't know if we'll have the votes. Uh, that's, that's one of the big questions. Um, so the, I, I don't know if you want to move forward with it. And I, I just recommend that we just move forward. And then once we get completed with this council, um, just drop a petition to ask for a special session. Um, because right now you have six of our colleagues that are excused. And so a quiet you don't need to call. So there's, there's, there's only how many of us here now? Or there's only two, there's only six of us, seven of us here on the floor. Um, so so that's what I would recommend to you guys just to drop a petition um, and, and then requesting for a special session. So that's that's all I'm asking, but it's up to you guys as motioning parties, not the nigi. Um, and then just, let's just move on with the agenda that was that has been posted for the past several days and that have been listed here um, before or now for people for the past several days as well. So it is what in hinge k dole. Thank you. Wave the rest of my time. Honorable Chair Vince James waves the rest of his time. Honorable Arvisa, there is a request that was made by Chair Vince James. Give the floor over to you, Honorable Arvisa. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Speaker, uh, thank you, Honorable, uh, Honorable James. Uh, could I get clarification from legal counsel? Because if they're excused, then we, we don't, do we not count them? Or do we, do we, do we go two thirds from what we have? They are excused, and we work with what we have, and two thirds of that is would be my. I would want clarification on that. If you have Honorable Arviso, we'll give that question to legal counsel, Ms. Barbara. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you. Uh, so the the legislation that you're referencing to add to the agenda. It's CSN legislation, and CSN legislations require a two-thirds vote of the full Navajo Nation Council. So it does not matter if they're excused or not. Uh, still two-thirds vote of the full council. Honorable Arviso. Thank you, Madam uh, Speaker. Then I will honor uh, Delegate James' request. Just for clarification, are you withdrawing your motion? Yes. Honorable Arviso withdraws his motion. Honorable Arviso, there were several recommendations for that legislation to be put on on at least a special council session. Legislation 0061-23. We do have the co-sponsor, Honorable Nathan Nota, here with us in the chambers. Staff, could you help us read the legislation to the record? Legislation 0061-23 an action relating to resource and development committees, Nabikiatka committees, and then Navajo Nation Council, confirming Wilder Mike Halona as Navajo Nation Division of Natural Resource Executive Director. Sponsor, Honorable Ricky Nez. Co-sponsor, Honorable Shauna Ann Claw. Co-sponsor, Honorable Nathan Nota. Co-sponsor, Honorable Otto So. This legislation did go before the Resource and Development Committee and the Nambikiyatkit Committees with a due pass and no amendments. It, came, it is now coming before the Navajo Nation Council. This legislation has been read into the record by electronic voice recording per Navajo Nation Council Rules of Order Number 9. Madam Speaker. Yeah, we do have a motion by Honorable Tolth. 
Second. Do you have a second on the floor, online? Second by Arnable Arviso. Ado Kodosh Satna Toskitole. Second call for any questions or comments. We do have delegates in queue. Kodo Arnable Nota will give you 20 minutes to present your legislation. Yat eight Lahas <laughs> Saint Law, Shik Edo Shadana, Shay Nathan Nota in Shia, the Kodoe District fourteen, Aya Banashness, Tohach Adona Shah, Togan Slow, Kia Anne, Bashes Chain, Todichini, Edas Chedo, Shini, Edas Nala. Today I'm very proud to uh, introduce uh, Wilder Mike Halona, the Division of Natural Resources, but the Ninigi, the Art Akea, Baha Yanigi. Uh, land use planning at that Aggie, but Lagana Nita, he has the strong capabilities, the leadership, the vision. What on Anita Tohach Adone Nit Ashto Yego Eske Nitle. He has the ability, I think, to in this capacity improve services, dado benefits for the Navajo people. On late 1981, Yada, he's spent almost his entire life with the Navajo Nation. He started with the Fish and Wildlife Department in 2005, the Land Department, Ajiya. The land status, oh, you land status. There's over 20 different types of status. Uh, trust allotted, tribal fee restricted, Adonan, which there's more. Eat Abbasbahazan. He's really concerned with land conditions, conservation, noxious weeds, endangered species. Ado, I know that he's really worked a lot with other agencies, USDA, Bureau of Indian Affairs, Soil and Water Conservation, Corps of Engineers, don't know what you, he's, he's knowledgeable about water issues, natural resources, and Ayego Nebekeya, he wants to do a good job in management and stewardship. I'll let him explain to him his, his experience. Madam Speaker, Curly, Honorable Delegates, Yat Angi Dashni, Kuresh Dachit, a coe, a Mike Halona, a Dashijin, a do Tohach, a Dao, a Jeshaki, a do Nenshlin, a bit uninslow, a shin, Bashish chin, Toh and the Shanaki, a only the Shichi, what are Nenshlin? Ako e e ya, shema e nle, ma e ke tlizidang go at naga. E e ya, atlatlatn da zidea ta ni tsaan na tsa asta, niz na ti ni hi ya. Ako e e ya, aron jaga, aron has tkin si na jinda jid nina bet ahni it e di e aron, aron ishte. Si jay at koha cha to has tkin, ko khanda ba jin ninde, a Ado I say Touch and Lindo, a Ado Tilsa, Ando Ebiado, a Ado Ea Kest, Ado Ishinanis Natio, Hunza Hodges A coed nep is Bacardash was in some Hunza Hodges Ado Hadawick in each other. A a Yabini Naniki is in less than that. Ado e hit a e ado lab and that deal nation song e up on this case. A co o the never care about a yard of Shanat is not Shanan is not ill now. One not a cot ocean shanat die could you eaten be to shasta by thought about a young j adage and snitch. A co e e lao e die slado on the dish the daily eight age. A co e e ya eyes about Hansen. A call the Asaha is either the Neverton Dash Nisho, Gabberton Daz Tail, Ado Hoto a base bassa, unable Bishon Dunch Nisho Hunza Hodges, a coado Asaha or Legendly Hodo Bigata. So I understand working collaboratively, communicating, working as, 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 as an employee with compassion for our people. To provide better and quality, uh, better services, quality services. 
So that's, that's kind of been my philosophy uh, during my, my uh, uh, working career with the Navajo Nation. Uh, one of the big points I guess I can point to with the Navajo Fish and Wildlife Department was working with, you, with the U.S. government. I attempted to, uh, to receive funding through the Pittman-Robertson Act, they call it. And the states get all that money. Anytime you buy outdoor equipment, uh, there are, uh, the taxes go towards that act and that funding. And then in return, it's distributed to the states. And I, I tried working with the government to obtain those monies directly as, as, a, as a tribal nation. And, and the best we could do is they said, work with, the, with your state agencies. So with working with the, the Arizona Department of Game and Fish, I designed the first Native American hunter education program, developed that in 1989. Since then, there's been over 6,300 students that have gone through that course on Navajo. It's the only course on the Nav uh, in, in Indian country run by the tribe. And so that, that has been one of the big milestones. Also, the next program we developed was called the Operation Game Thief Program. That is still running to this day. And uh, the only tribe that's operating that. Been able to develop uh, the fisheries program, which we are currently right now from the division going to expand our fishery program, growing our own fish and stocking our own fish uh, across all the lakes for recreational purposes. And uh, you know, worked many years of work with, in, with the Black Bear Project, Mule Deer Project. Uh, we, we did a lot of EAs uh, for, for different projects at the time. Uh, the hospital in Fort Defiance, the EA that, that I, was, I was able to write. And uh, as a result, to be able to get that hospital built. Um, and then when I went to the land department in 2005, one of my first uh, duties was to uh, address an audit that the department was facing. And it was 86 findings, but when we had our first corrective action meeting, uh, we narrowed it down to about 12. So all of that uh, corrective action we went in, was already fixing, preparing, reorganizing, restructuring, and, and introducing policies that would make those corrections. So that was, that was a big, big start to be able to refine the uh, uh, land department. Um, and then moving forward, looking at all of our policies and regulations, that has money. And so all that work it, it took was working collaboratively. I had to work with the oversight committee. I, I worked with council on many, many projects, many legislations. And uh, the big one that we were able to work with council and the resource committee was when we developed uh, the Navajo General Leasing Act of, two th uh, of, of 2013. That act, as a result, the council in, in, had an in enabling legislation that we were able to take to the Department of Interior in Washington, D.C. As a result, we were able to receive the authority from BIA. So that meant from that day forward we were, that the nation has had the ability to handle all its own surface leasing, its permitting for solar, for wind energy, for churches, for residents, for schools, for recreational, for agriculture. So that gave us that ability to be able to do that um, to Navajo, uh, through the Navajo Nation Council to be able to get that done. And the Secretary of Interior approved our regulations in 2014. And then the next regulation we developed was the, the land withdrawal regulations to help chapters take their land use plans and develop those zones and withdraw areas for them to be able to move uh, forward with their development in their communities. The next, the next we did was home site lease in 2016. Because of the, the authority we had now from, from the government, we developed our own leasing so we would be able to take, uh, uh, be approve our own leasing aspects. And then that went into telecom leases. Right now we're, we're, we're working on the church uh, site leases. And, uh, and in that process, we developed a automated system 
um, within the Division of Natural Resource, there's one only uh, two, there's three, there's two departments that's using what's called the Navajo Nation system. We automated the 164 process to streamline our development processing on Navajo. The same system is also being used by economic development in the real estate department. So that was a, 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 a big jump to be able to do that. In it, we created our own sovereignty cloud that the Navajo Nation owns and <clears throat> has access to. It's not, it can't be foia and it, it's, it's also not subject to the National Archives. It's a sovereignty cloud for us uh, and, and us only. And, uh, and so having to develop uh, those automations uh, right now, we are working on the, the, the home site lease uh, automation, automated process will be rolled out probably uh, by the end of the month. Um, we're running a beta test uh, Tuesday uh, through the whole process. So it's, it's, been an, it's been a work in progress to improve services. One-stop shop. So in 2018, we started working on what's called the Tribal Access Authorization. How do we take rights of ways away from BIA? So in 2016, the nation had, the, had an opportunity to make comments to the amend, amending the right-of-way regulations in the CFR. And so with those comments that we submitted, they, they, put, a, they put a section in there where a, a tribe can, doesn't need to do a right-of-way if they have a 100% uh, own entity doing the work. So for us, that meant NTUA, NECA, NHA, NTEC, uh, oil and gas, all of our enterprises now have that ability. And since uh, uh, last year, we also were able to add IHS to move those projects quicker uh, to, to the people. And so when, uh, when, when that happened, it changed how we produce, provide services for utilities, water, broadband, and and uh, all the development, it, it it speed up that whole process, and so now we're able to handle our own without having to go to the bureau uh, of Indian Affairs to have our uh, processes for development on Navajo um, <clears throat> approved. We do our own approval. We have our own review with in house, and so moving forward. Based on all of that, as, as the division uh, director, now we have the ability to include all the other departments to be able to be a part of that process as well as how do we focus on service delivery from all of our 11 departments within the Division of Natural Resource. How do we get Fish and Wildlife to speed up the review process for biological clearances? How do we get the historic preservation to speed up the process for, uh, for, I mean, for archaeological reports? All of that is imposed on what we need to do moving forward with all of our projects that you all have um, spent a lot of time working on. They're ready to start the development aspects and the construction portion is coming. Those clearances got to happen quick, have to make, have to happen fast. Asian Benina, Sitsila, President Dr. Nigerian, Chika Adi Lwat, Nispahaz and Di Ad and Haz, they'll be cutting ya, the Hazani, the Shatodo, and a Kahata Sink as the A. Besbahas, Anbishnan Nisho. I hot a in Lagi, Ek Ad Nasha, I hot a Ben Chika Adi Lwat, she didn't need them. With the Navajo Nation, I had put 42 years in. A lot of people said, why didn't you retire? I'm still willing to serve because I think there are areas that still need the improvement. Our people still need the services. And we have that ability and the, the capacity and capabilities to make that happen now. 
the division how are we going to do this department of ag we're going to change our focus we're looking at large animal management that's going to be our focus we need to get our veterinarians back in there for large animal we need to help them with range management how that should be our focus we have one tool that we that we have total control over is the agricultural leasing without BIA involvement. We can introduce that and be able to help the people start uh, production again in agriculture. Start all of that those things back up. And, and, and working uh, with, with all of the other departments because we all working to preserve, to conserve our, 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 our sacred lands. Department uh, <clears throat> honorable delegates, Danzini, Edo Kodon Hikai Jeo, at that age, it's not impossible. To predict the future, you have to invent it. And that's what we, that's what we want to do. And, 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 and I, I have the experience, I have worked with all 110 chapters. I have worked with all the grazing districts and the land board. I, I have worked directly with them. And I have been out there on the ground talking with the people. We need collaboration from the universities all the way down to the government entities. They got to be brought together. We have to build this collaboration. We just have to use the vision that we have to say this is what we need to do to be able to move forward and, and, and be able to address those. Um, needs. Naso and Saha Kesiki, so Kodan Hikeda or Tai Bach now at Eden. Bach Eda had Eden. A in the Tai Ado Eya, Bach a hot Eya at Etoli. Ako, one of our big challenges right now I have with the division is I have 249 vacancies. I have to put people in those positions so we can get that work done. So we can respond to the needs of the people. We need operators. We need people out there that can do the labor work. They're leaving to go, they're going to higher paying jobs. They're leaving home. We have to meet that demand. And I'm, I want to work with the, with the uh, Niger and Matoya administration. Those are some of the big things that we want to work on collaboratively. I don't council, he how they need. In Hanato, Nan Neshudno, Peso Hudno, a hot eye at all, Nick. Arts a hit at the eel on a in he in he had all what Peso, yeah. A co a what I upon this case. Honorable delegates, those are those are some of my quick thoughts as to what I see we can do together, how we can make a big change in this short period of time that we have to serve. And, 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 and I'm, I really uh, would like to keep the collaboration going. I, I want to be able to help any way uh, that I can with your communities. I have met personally and sat down with some of the delegates already. We've got some of these projects. We have, there's a lot of areas that have been neglected that need to be addressed to move forward. Honorable Nota, uh, Mr. Halona. Uh, we'll go first for questions. Honorable Chair Vince James, five minutes. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, um, Speaker. Adonana Kodo presenters, Do Don Shitna Ash Honorable Don Nota, thank you. Do Donana Shitna Ash, Mr. Halona, thank you very much. Ado, um, I, I'd like to um, get to the point and just ask you, how long does it really take to process a home site lease? And, and why does it take that long? And you, you mentioned the um, biological compliance. I've, it, it's just probably not me as a delegate, but I think the rest of my, de the, my colleagues have also received Norris complaints of the uh, Navajo Nation Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, waiting and waiting and waiting to get that clearance form. Another um, red tape is your cultural resource compliance, your Navajo Nation Historical Preservation Office. And, and that's another area that this is not working but I, I know laws were set in place. I know it was done by council and so forth. But, you know, what is it that we have to do to make those adjustments? That way we don't have our constituents waiting beyond a year, two years, three years, spending thousands of dollars just to get a home site lease. When you start adding the, the travel and all of that stuff, it adds up. It goes into the thousands. And some of them get so frustrated, they just give up. And, and that, that's just like how it is at this point. What is your plan on why surveys are not done by land department anymore? And why can't they do it? Is it because of the workforce that's not there anymore? Is it because that we don't pay enough? What, I mean, we, we established this whole home site lease process when we already knew that there was no, when we already knew that there was not enough workforce, when we already knew that we still had vacant positions that can't be filled, but yet we established this home site lease process. Yet we still established a one-stop shop when we're still at that point with many vacants in your division. And you just mentioned that you had 239 vacants position. If we have these many vacant positions, why do we keep establishing and creating all these new processes? It's not going to work. And so what is your plan from your point of view of how you're going to try and resolve this matter? And then the cost of getting art clearance done. And then the, the, the um, the workforce of those individuals that are certified to do art clearance. We have individuals that decide to get a home site lease and they try and scramble for scramble around for art clearance surveys and they're just way booked up and they just like, okay, well, what do I do now? A another fine example is N15, the route N15 from Burnside to Greasewood. The contractor's there, the contractor, the, the agreement has been done. But again, Navajo Historical Preservation is the hookup. And I understand where, where you're coming from with the low uh, workforce. But we have to do something about it because we have over $16 million sitting there for that N15 route. And it's been sitting there not three years, more than three years. And we continue just to have money sitting on the table and we keep going round and round, but that money that's sitting on the table is not actually moving, it's just sitting there. And that's very disturbing. Reserve my time, thank you. Reserve time of 40 seconds. Honorable Toll. Madam Chair, thank you. My colleagues in, in the house here, and also our visitors. Auto, uh, Mr. Nota, but I need a question. Could you now she they to conquer the world? So, called co hold So, I'm glad that you're part of it. I need shave it. Okay, 
So a lot of our people are Batani. So uh, one thing that bothers me on Kodo presenter no Senegi, Do Nanishin Hani Liegi, the Eastern Agency, we have a problem with the land board. A height out of Nishi. Atsaka, Northern and Southern, Southern. District 15 and 16, we need to have somebody in charge of that. Washington. position, lot of position. Government or peso eto ni ta atan halchen ba. You look at the uh, community development session fund. As at et on hetest. There's nothing for our employees to fill those position. Akoshre, it's part of the government's responsibility. Shuhut an ko. Ne and the Aj in Yao. Is she a Christian Aj the Satan? Is she got any coin Yako? Con does to Oshin say not in Schle. A daily don't send what on cases. So part of this this whole thing is the government, our this Navajo nation. Oh, pays on the Hadith at Ozona Adil Kido. A cotost Eliata. A court in the banit in Hessient. A court o hoti neco. Nishe ha peso as the bandi jihon hachen de nisto. An hite bake di tlaco age, peswaz anit lenigi. A cotil less than conas so sla. Oh, ha you peso nadesta other sassen. Whose t responsibility is it should be the council? Kadishat is nish konsh at swat alia, though alia et o peso e jo en wet on de o et o pe as padita at long esh ka deal with kwe. They haven't done their work so. So it's part of the Navajo Nation's problem and and he a co eco da basa honitlo. A do co minimum wage and then he then. And Hachin that then. Bogan, coebito, cato, corochinata. What are in his old jish? How one da hallo da queer again the yellow da bishka, she, yeah, you gonna fill those positions. That's the way I look at it. We're going to be saying just the same thing next year if the Navajo Nation doesn't wake up himself. Even uh, I advocate division, human uh, resource to work on these uh, salaries. When not all tens and in Giet or Pat, the Didi job, Igito, Zota, Salary, Gito, Zoba, Zenda, Lower Wage, even non lot, hot in Darnishkin, Trahota. We got to do something. It's our responsibility, Haleta at all, Gil. A co ede ya, hot abbe had a sito and heat inko. So we can't blame anybody. It's the government. We put a lot of people in there, and we just don't do research, and we develop a lot of programs, and we don't do a, a assessment. Slater. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Speaker. Good morning, Delegate Nota. Good morning, Mr. Holona. And uh, thank you for stepping up to serve your people. Uh, I want to say I appreciate the effort that you've made to move past some intractable issues that we've had within the region that persisted over the last four years where we did not receive adequate support to move forward. One of those is the Wheatfields Agricultural Project, um, some earthen dam requests that we had put in for repair. And just in the few months you've been there, you've been able to help move some things along. So I think the on the ground knowledge that you have from working within the division is going to be invaluable. And doing it from the land department perspective, I think, is particularly valuable as you hear the comments my colleagues are making with respect to compliance work. So I um, can for what you've done thus far. I, I think, you know, I have a different set of experiences with a few narrow exceptions related to home site leases. And I think colleagues, you know, in general, from what I've seen within my district, is that home site leases are caught up primarily when there isn't grazing permittee consent or when there's some other larger issue that is not related to the processing and review, but instead is related to consent, utility corridors, uh, rights away, and things of that nature. We were able to come to an agreement last week with, uh, I think it's Mr. Bitsui and um, your attorney whose name is escaping my name right now. Uh, what's your attorney's name? You know, okay, um, the, at the division. So there was a proposed home site lease and one portion within the general land development department was not going to grant the home site lease, even though the home owner who was proposing this particular area in a denser environment consented to NTUA maintaining their line within a particular area or rerouting it along the edge of their home site lease. And what I want to stress is that we really need from the top down, from your position down, to look at these sort of creative compromises. And if there isn't something that explicitly is written in 29 CFR 169, then we should not be enforcing additional, more cumbersome rules or requirements that aren't written there. Because we're just slowing down growth, we're slowing down the ability of our young people to come home. And that is quite frankly what was happening within the land development department until I pushed back and said, we need to get this, this grandma, her home site lease, because you can't identify where in the regulation it says they can't, she can't consent to have that within her home site lease boundaries. Um, so I hope that that serves as a template and that you follow up on that with um, NTUA and with Mr. Bitsui because we have, hundreds, we have thousands of people who need assistance under the ARPA assistance programs, the fiscal recovery fund programs. And we're gonna see this come over and over again, particularly in the denser living environments like in this area or some of the old farming communities where people have moved in and taken over those farm plots and live closer to each other. Um, but I would say, you know, I've seen people get a home site lease in three weeks or three months. And that seems to be generally the experience that a lot of my constituents are having. And I'm happy to see that upgrade from when I initially took office, which was more like six months to a year. So um, I think things are moving in the right direction. We can't not have, we or we must have both the biological and the archeological. And we can talk about permittee consent um, at another time. But in terms of filling your critical positions in this last minute that I have, I want to encourage you to work with AspireAbility and look at competency-based hiring. I want to encourage you to look at cost share with the counties. We had a meeting on earthen dams this morning and other issues with a member of Apache County. They're interested in potentially doing cost share for heavy equipment operators, and I know that that's the, the big hole that you have right now in the technical operations branch. So that's one item, looking at county partnerships where you could do some cost share. Maybe you transfer the funds to them, it's easier for them to hire, and maybe we can bump the salary up a little bit more. But they work under a dual Apache County Navajo Nation mandate. And then I'd say, lastly, um, you know, 
the hiring requirements, it, we need data back at the council saying what do people need. It's not just money. When you look at cost comparisons between what people at the counties make, Gallup and McKinney County, you can look it up online, it's very similar to the Navajo Nation. So it comes back to amenities, to housing, to all the things that people want to actually work and live on Navajo. Yeah, Vice Chair Slater, time. Next in queue, we have Honorable Yanito. Yatesh Che. What's Neho Che? Hey, wow. I hope it's the least. She Che, what about us? And the yaw, the better aggressive. I don't the yaw, eh? He's giving you directive and a good response. That's what report in Lado as a district grazing committee in Shlinda, Kuigoshi, And then I really saw a really potential areas that you can pursue and really step forward for the Navajo people. And my, I guess my question is, did you run against a uh, nota there? <laughs> well, I was hoping that you will win, but if nota won, it's acceptable. I have a question on um, towers, communication business, does Ani. They're all eyesores. They are young, the Hessian home site, Lisa. Yeah, naive. You know, those things just popping up like crazy without, you know, a consent of permit holders. I don't care. No. You know, those, those eyesores, you know, we, I heard you um, wanted to pursue to uh, charge those fees business fees, the all lay taxation that any the violation fees and so forth. Halanzan Nail Watlayat so a quagin and this kid I don't know if there's any kind of um help from us legislators we would appreciate to really you know pursue some kind of um with our authority ability to write out legislation that charge these business I don't know with these um, towers, you know, like I said, they're all eyesores. You know, in the future, it's going to it's going to be obsoleted. You know, because there's that star leak, lay satellite, they thought any not let everything, and so that kind of approach. You know, I think a lot of these towers should be deleted. It would in someone's case. And then another thing that you said is that you like the the planting get a little ningi shishyat Asia. I don't the acorn. You know, like these kind of plans, it needs a master plan. As far as master planning for you know developing a lot of these um, plantation for irrigation, it it, it will involve costs. A quite high other basis like being cut deal with the issue with his dealings. And then I want to ask you about the um, <clears throat> the 75 lease that's expiring here in 2024 on Halchita, Utah, 600 acre lease at Liyande. I'm waiting on a renewal lease on it for development. Kadaya investors are not based on the Tayotja. I know that you did a visitation over there with RDC when uh, Ricky Nez was uh, chair. And, you know, hopefully that, you know, we can extend that lease so we can start developing new homes where all that facility there and all the business development, their wish list that they want and with the uh, water development lease. Reserve my time. Reserve time of 50 seconds. 
Honorable colleagues, we have Honorable Simpson. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, though, members of the 25th Council. Good afternoon, Ms. Nota. Uh, thank you for responding to this legislation, though. Congratulations to your appointment, uh, Mr. Halona Dida. Well, it's Isil Kasish Adida. And, you know, we have a lot of uh, funds that came from the federal government. And I just want to iterate some of what was stated by my colleagues that we really need to excite these projects pertaining to power line, water line, housing, roads, and all that. Us showing that he caught the eagle too. Where are the blocking stones? to get these projects started because the right away is the issue. Home site leads the issue. So I said, you know, let's get started on it. Uh, let's not just talk about it. This needs to be done. This, this needs to be done. As you know, this, uh, these federal funds do have deadlines that we're trying to meet. So I said, oh, no, Kanto, he caught need to come up with solutions from your department. I know we have other divisions, other departments that will definitely uh, need assistance to what we need to do as delegates. So if anything needs to be done to amend laws or policies, please let us know uh, to get that, those things uh, to support those uh, legislation to expedite these projects through, uh, through what needs to be done to uh, address issue pertaining to rights away and home site lease ADA. Aro, he had not congratulated your, your appointment. Aro, Akunanate, some of the things that uh, your departments under Division of Natural Resources you know, we need their assistance when we sponsor legislation pertaining to your division. And sometimes we, a prime example this week, there's a, a legislation pertaining to try to get a modular building for the land department and with other uh, department entities. And the way we work, we have a lot of legislation that are addressed, that needs to be addressed during special session or regular sessions. See? I call, we have to have these personnel on standby we don't know when they go, that their legislation is going to come up. And we can't just say, you know, sometimes just bypass you. Uh, let's say when you don't have your agents. And it does hurt you when you sponsor legislation because a lot of questions are, are, are asked by the council and uh, it needs to be uh, conveyed. I mean, it needs to be answered by certain personnel. So, uh, I know there's a lot of legislation that pertain to the uh, Division of Natural Resources we be forthcoming. And when we have agents from your division, we need to be. They need to be here to make sure they uh, help the council present their, their legislation that needs to be considered by the council. Ada, so I, I can't tell you to do this, but I'm just requesting Ada. So I'm willing to work. You know, I'm excited to work with you to get these ARPA funds uh, started, expedited, and through these right away process. That's all we talk about. Right away, pro getting right away approvals or home site lease approved. Uh, I see Kati as well. Again, Mr. Lona, congratulations to your appointment and thank you. And I waive uh, my remaining time. Thank you. Yeah, Honorable Simpson waves his time. <laughs> Next in queue, we do have Honorable Chair Jesus. Good afternoon, Speaker. Can you hear me? Yes, Chair. We can hear you. You have the floor. Madam Speaker, and I also like to thank um, Honorable um, Notash and I for bringing this legislation before 25th Council for confirmation for Mr. Um, Mike Halona Ado Adam, Mr. Halona Shanat Ani Yehat Kodon Shni Do Kodo Nikehedini Iki by President Nigrin. So overseeing um, possibly one of the most uh, revenue generating um, division of the Navajo Nation. And I believe that this division is a very integral component of Navajo Nation revenue. So I know that there's a lot of discussion, Shanatani, in regards to renewable energy. And um, right now we all know that the Navajo Nation is at the inception stage of developing a uh, uh, energy policy um, in collaboration with um, some of the executive um, branch team. 
So uh, with that, um, I you know worked with you a lot. You know, with prior years, with prior employment from the chapter level to the economic um, development level to community development. And I really just want to um, commend Mr. Halona. Um, I know that he's really centric on analytics. And not only did he talk about it, but he was made, um, he made it come to surface through the database system that um, division of, um, or Navajo Land Department has with GLAD, where every document is archived and also they went digitized on the 164 review process. Now, I really like this database system that was implemented by Navajo Nation Land Department because it's a four-tier um, FOIA security system. So there's other locations um, throughout the United States that um, the data can be breached by anyone. And then that um, also through the same um, initiative, Mr. Halona was able to um, get a data center that is located specifically dedicated to Navajo Nation, which we don't use to the maximum capacity in Kansas City. And also the Navajo Nation has a dedicated cloud that the Navajo Nation can you know, uh, put information up to the cloud and save it into the data um, center. So um, with that concept, I know that we talk about streamlining process. I believe this is one small or a couple of steps towards that direction. But with that, um, I just want to, um, you know, just make it known to my um, honorable colleagues, this is one great positive outcome that I've seen Mr. Halona work with. But in a lot of the other areas, Shanat Ani, I know that there was home site leases that were brought up, also other aspects of um, mineral ziggy in regards to how do we generate revenue for the Navajo Nation. And I know that as oversight um, over Division of Natural Resources, um, I want us to continue to um, bridge that relationship with members of Resources and Development Committee and utilizing your expertise as to what would be the best interest of any projects going forward. Because as we know that there's helium projects that are being recommended, there's hydrogen projects that are being recommended, solar um, projects that are being recommended. And I'm really glad that Mr. President Nygren was able to establish a venting team to see if these projects on Navajo Nation would be viable and um, not viable. So with that, um, Shinat Ani Kodo, um, they have on the, the policies that are currently in place. Some of them probably need to be refined, but I really want you to focus on Department of Agriculture. There's a lot of issues with this department going from audit to the grazing permit to Eastern Navajo Land Board. So we really need to address this area. So it's a Madam Speaker, uh, back to you. I waive the rest of my time. Yeah, Honorable Chair Jesus waves her time. We have Honorable Arviso. Madam, Madam Speaker, thank you. Aro Kodo, Pespas, Anni, Tenigi, Aro, Mr. Halona. Congratulations on your appointment, Aro. Delegate Nota, thank you for bringing this legislation forward. I just uh, want you to know that we work hard together as a chapter official, Aro, and uh, I support this resolution. So, but I just. Uh, that's all I wanted to say is that, you know, I know you'll do a good job. And I'm going to divert my time, the rest of my time, to uh, Honorable Slater. Remaining time of 4.30. Yields his time to Honorable Vice Chair Carl Slater. He accepts. Honorable Carl Slater, you have four minutes and 30 seconds. Thank you very much. And uh, I apologize, colleagues, for stepping out of the room for a second. Um, and a hat to whomever provided the, the time. Mr. Arvizo, thank you. So I met with the, the Chinle Agency uh, district grazing uh, officials. And I think you're well aware of a lot of the issues that they confront. I think Mr. Unito um, alluded to some of them earlier. But I would like to see a study come out of the Division of Natural Resources in concert with the Department of Ag for both the regulation and a, um, I would say, a, a policy perspective 
Um, what is the most effective way to deliver the services that grazing officials are supposed to provide to our constituents? Uh, I'll give you an example. As at a chapter meeting on Sunday, had an official come in, sign their name on a couple of documents at the top of the document, but they were actually supposed to sign at the bottom. And then these people came up from Phoenix. They've come up twice. And we're talking about hundreds of dollars, like uh, Shitsui Delegate James is talking about. That's where these costs start to add up. You know, are there things that can be digitized? Is there something in that process where we can help meet our people where they are? And as we look toward digitizing the uh, Office of Vital Records and Statistics, thinking about how we can attach certain data within a central Navajo Nation um, repository and protect it. So people could automatically be eligible for LIHEAP or for emergency rental assistance, but also know that with this grazing permit, they may, or sorry, with this home site lease, they might be eligible for X, Y, or Z. So I think that it's my personal opinion right now, but I'd like to see a study that a lot of the authorities for the officials should turn into professional staff, and we need to start figuring out how to budget for it, either in this next budget or the year after. And then we would pull out some of the authorities that we think may need to be from locally elected officials, and that could stay in some sort of fashion. But I, I really ask that you work with the Resources Committee and then myself to evaluate this, because we're not providing the optimum level of services to our people under this current configuration. Um, so that's one item right there that I, I really strongly would ask. And then second, um, serving on the Budget and Finance Committee, we've been reviewing some of the expenditures out of the Agriculture Infrastructure Fund. And I think um, our committee and the nation would like to have uh, a strong plan when we have the deficiencies and the vacancies in, you know, that's, I think it's funding from there that's helping to fund water resources to do um, earthen dam repairs, to do windmill repairs, to do these things. Um, what could we do to grow our own with Danette College and NTU and then also working with, say, uh, you know, the initiative we have with Aspire Ability to do competency-based hiring and help connect job seekers or people who want to upskill their work. Um, I really think that that's something that needs to help be driven by the division um, to address those vacancies or engineering techs, things of that nature. Um, I, I just would sincerely ask that, that you make that a priority within um, your tenure as division director. And then, <clears throat> pardon me, um, I'd like to ask that when it comes to compliance work, and it comes to the bio and the arc that, we, that we've been alluding to, how it is slowing down project delivery. Um, you know, are there certain items that can be outsourced to other firms and then we provide them limited amounts of data to things that we, that we have? You know, we have plenty of Navajo um, people who are trained in archaeology or anthropology who help fulfill these roles. Um, we have uh, a lot of folks who have, you know, biology or forestry backgrounds or things that can work on compliance. You know, if, if we keep insisting on, on hiring internally, but it's going to slow down the expenditure of, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, can we receive a plan at the council level for moving past those impediments? So thank you very much for listening to those items. Um, as someone who's not on resources committee, I only get a few times to talk to you, but I do really appreciate you pushing path, uh, past a few issues that we've had within District 11 and um, moving them forward. Yeah. Yeah, Honorable Slater. Colleagues, I don't see anybody else in queue. We'll turn the floor back over to Honorable Nota and Mr. Halona. Yeah, <coughs> Nana, Speaker Curley. Delegate Vince James, uh, George Tolt, Carl Slater, Curtis uh, Yanito, uh, Danny Simpson, do, uh, Chair uh, Jesus. The Kwiwushin, the adult kid, the home site lease compliances, the land board, the ag projects, wheat field, fiscal recovery program, competency based hiring. Um, those towers that Aggie, those are really important issues. Uh, Department of Ag, the grazing permits. Yeah, I don't, I don't kid. I'm glad uh, we're uh, uh, um, getting all this information out. Uh, uh, Delegate Arviso, thank you for your support. Ado, um, Yanito, uh, I mean, we did both run for council. 
I'm assuring you our character, this allows us to work together. We respect each other for the work of this nation. Thank you for bringing that up. I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Mr. Halona. Delegate uh, James, I, I appreciate your, your questions. Um, you asked how long does it take to get a home site lease? It's, kind of, it's really a hard question to ask because the land department will hand an, applic an applicant application to an applicant. There's step-by-step -step instructions on the, on the front page. Also, think about this. Where's the nearest water, the, the electrical? Do you have cell service where you want to put your home? Is there an access road? There's questions to consider. Then we're out of the picture. How long does it going to take them to go and go home and find the grazing official and ask him, who is the grazing permitting? Then he goes out there with the grazing official and does a GPS reading of that site. Once they get that, and it says, within a half a mile radius, who are the grazing permittees? Valid grazing permittee. Those are valid permittees. Then they they put their name, and that's who the applicant goes see, and they either get the consents or their toe tota. So that's kind of where the challenge is right now. I think delegates later brought that up. We have people coming home. Their own relatives are the permittees and won't consent. I don't know how we're going to get past that part, but we need to work on finding a system that will work for them. And and so after they get the consent, I don't not In 1994, the Navajo Land Department consists of 155 employees. Back then. Today, I think they have a number about 24. That's all they have. And so we're getting by because of technology. We put technology to use for us. There's, they had survey crews at each agency. And those survey crews, the applicant comes in, they get their gear, and they go out there, and they're doing surveys every day. And then the archaeological aspects of it. There used to be the Navajo Nation had an archaeology department. They were doing all the surveys for people. So through the years of budget cuts from the land department, we, 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 we lost our registered land surveyor. He retired from BIA, come work for Navajo, and he was doing very well. And then when he left, we weren't able to replace him at the salary level. No registered land surveyor will come in for half of the money that we were paying them. Salary structure, you get that. You know, we interview people, they come in, and we're ready to, we offer them the job, and oh, I got a call from another enterprise, NTUA, NECA, whoever. I want to work over there because more money. So we haven't been able to do any survey because there's nobody to certify them, and there's nobody um, to, 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 to do the work. So we stopped doing the surveys. But in the meantime, what happened is all of these small businesses popped up by tribal members offering survey services across Navajo. So that happened. So they're the ones that are charging 
anywhere from 250 to 400, depends on how far they have to travel. And they're doing a really good job. If they had the money, oh, peso, bad tanigi, they're in a bad situation. I have asked community development many times, put some money aside at the chapter level so that they can use it. Manlito Chapter did that for 32 families. They used their own money and they got 32 families to got their surveys done. So once they get the survey done, then they're looking at your archaeologists. Of course, now there's not any service for it. Now they got to pay for it. Now all the people that left the department, they started their own archaeology firms. They do the surveys out of Jezla. So that started small business again. So it's whenever they can get enough money to be able to do that. Out of Fish and Wildlife, Nana, they have a map. You have a red zone, you have a blue zone, you have the purple zone, green zone, gray zone. Gray zone is inside communities. All been disturbed, there's no threat and endangered species to consider. Red zones, ago. We don't want to keep developing in those zones so we can preserve our, our uh, threatened and endangered species, our plants, our herbs. So they want to preserve those areas. So, so it's, I always, when I ask, get asked that question, I, say, I tell them, it's really up to you. How fast can you go get your survey done? How fast can you get an archeological to do it? How long, how fast can you get fish and wildlife to come to do your, do your um, biological? Then it comes back to the land department. Then we say, okay, here's all, here's your consents. Here's your survey, here's your biological, here's your cultural. Auto environmental reviewer named the environmental reviewer was put in place in 2016 because that was part of the authority we got under the General Leasing Act. Government says you must develop an environmental reviewer position within natural resource. Then you can use the, the, the authority. So they look at the environmental aspects. Are they in the floodplain area? Are they uh, in a, in a hot zone where there's a abandoned mines, concern for their health and safety. So they look at that and they say, okay, it's clear. And then it goes up to the land department, they sign off. It's all done electronically now. And so those can happen really quick. It can happen and if you have the money and the, they know who they're gonna hire right away, they can get it done in a month's time sometimes six months, it is really, uh, can you afford it? And I understand that. Um, the, the, the Niger Montoya uh, administration has asked me to start looking at that service again. How do we re-implement that service? So, let's, let's help them with those services, as well as all the other services that we need for water lines, utility, everything needs those art clearances. So we could reestablish that department so we can now have control. We didn't need to done it, get it done in one day. We can give that directive. They get it done in one day. So, so it's, that, it's that process that we're gonna automate where it's, it's gonna be quicker. So I have already met with the Fish and Wildlife Department, I have already met with Historic uh, Department, and I tell them everything that we're dealing with, the challenges is that the log jam that is at your de departments. I want to know how you can un undo that dam. How can we get everything flowing quicker? What do we need? Do you need more people? Do you, what do you need? Do we need to outsource it? Give me your plan because we're, we're, we got all of the projects that are coming, and so we got to be prepared or we're not going to be able to, to address that in, in, a, in a systematic way and meet the deadlines that we all uh, are all concerned with. So then those can be done quickly. 
Another aspect that we're looking at is that, and uh, delegates later mentioned, some of these areas where there has already been work done, uh, disturbance has happened. When they do a road, any project they do, they do a big, they do a buffer around it. Home sites, they get a 200 foot buffer around the whole park. So you can put a leach fill, a, a septic tank, within that buffer, it's cleared. <laughs> So some of these roads, all these areas that have been impacted, so we're convincing the regulated departments, Fish and Wildlife, Historic Preservation, let's have a, a, program, a programmatic agreement. Let's do an eighth of a mile buffer from all those disturbances already. If it's within there, it should automatically go through so that's what we're designing right now to be able to speed up the process and get more people to move into where the infrastructure is so it won't cost so much to go to be able to do that um and and, and then the cost of a survey and that is right now is is um the responsibility of the applicant but there's one thing that we have discovered. I say that but but I yana na shin aji keto na saza aji kepa na aska. This shin is not on its own as nil. They're they're not used. They're abandoned. And that is lucky. Eh, ya ado nede ho one day nil. They're they're developing right away. So that was interesting. But I think we still need to help those that, that, that move forward. So, and then on your N15, um, I met with Historic Preservation and talked about, let's get phase one done. Let's give them the authorization to move on phase one. Let's address phase two and the mitigation that needs to happen with the art concerns that we have. Agent Hall disease, we should be able to get that clear and be able to get that uh, moving forward. And so that is what we're already focusing on. And I, I, it's very important that we get that done right away, get it, get the system in place, improve the, the, the services delivery. That's the expectations, the expectations that I have already given to the departments. Um, Delegate Toth. Um, Land Board, Eastern Land Board. They had a joint land board meeting. Is that we need to get going on some very critical issues. Number one, the MOU between BIA, Navajo Nation, BLM is expired. It's, it's just sitting there. I've met with BLM uh, last year about it, trying to move it forward. The second part is the plan of operation, because they want to put a fund management plan in there. They pay. That money has been going to BIA, goes into a lockbox. So they need a fund management plan so they can pull that money out and use it for uh, management. Uh, projects. Auto AIF AIF funds, you guys are going to have to plan the projects. What are they? What, how are you going to be able to do this? So I says, now you all have a year and a half left to get those projects done. From the division, I'm, I want to give you, give you the technical support. What can we do to help you? 
ako ek at kasing tahan lin lahte hardly hat nina white horse lead the dashan at lahe lehen ako e hot abe sa hasito hot a dat o si bedini ako e hot a delegates later appreciate meeting with you bringing those concerns and issues and I see the light at the end of the tunnel I know they can be fixed I know they can um, get get to the end result of build getting those fields into operation you know that's that's what we need because we need more agricultural fields in operation they want to know the water the, the, how much we're going to use agriculture is going to be the one of the big aspects that we need to be able to put back into production for our own food for our relatives and our community to be able to do that to, to go forward and so we want to be able to to address those uh, and and uh, uh, help repair those there are funds available for uh earth dam rehab and with it's just that we they, 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 there's been no really effort in moving forward on there. That's one of the main uh, aspects needed to recharge, recharge our groundwater is to capture all of the runoff that's, that's happening. We need to recapture, recharge our groundwater. And then of course, it's, it's, it's for our livestock, for producers need it, our, our wildlife need it. So it's, it has so many benefits to it. Um, and so what we have looked at is, um, after meeting um, with, with the land department, is developing what we're calling uh, an encroachment agreement. So where there's a, a home site lease and there's a water line or utility line that needs to cross, then the, the, the utility company and the home site lease agree, I'm fine with it and we'll have that encroachment agreement. It's not that you can't, it's just that both parties have to know. And we can do those. It's, it's, not, there's, there's, it's not something that's prohibited. It happens all the time. Uh, and so we, we just need to start working on that. And it's gonna, as, it's gonna continue to happen because we're expanding. Homes are jumping everywhere. There's some infrastructure in place already. And uh, we wanna be able to do that in some of the tight communities. Um, we want to look at all of our um, shortage of operators and the operators that are leaving and getting the county to assist is a, is a great idea and even provide training. <laughs> Chapters can hire someone at low wage and have a good operator. So even those, how do we get creative to be able to, to get to the end result of being able to do that? And uh, we're looking at the grazing aspects of it. And NPL is one example. Um, how do we get grazing permits reissued? And the people want them, and we want them to have that. And, and I think it's something that we need to get back to the to the grassroots right at the community and find out exactly what they what what their wants and their needs are how how can we work together and come to an agreement do we still want BIA to continue to issue permits and the one thing they're going to ask us all is going to be that conservation plan it's, it's happening for land use permits it's happening for grazing permits now where's the conservation plan that's a it's a different word they're using for it. It's actually an EA. You need an EA done. And so we need to be able to look at, are we prepared? We have the authority to issue grazing lease, I mean, agricultural leases. There's, we have that authority. We need to exert that authority and you start issuing more agricultural leases so we can be able to, to move quick quicker on our terms, on our regulation, to be able to, to move forward. Um, involving the, the universities, uh, we definitely need to do that to help us with the range management. Um, 
um, enhancements of our range and our, our herd management, um, helping them to start doing some projects on Navajo um, as part of their curriculum to be able to um, provide more uh, students to come and work for us. And uh, if, if not, then we're going to end up outsourcing. We're going to have to outsource all of our, our services to get them done. That's kind of what we're, we're, we've, we've come across as our need to be immediate need is going to be to, uh, uh, to, to outsource a lot of the uh, work that needs to happen. But at the same time, we need to be able to uh, uh, deal with uh, the backlogs and stuff that are happening. Our uh, delegate Haginito, you welcome O Washahone Shahones Nati. I say, how you learn so on this case. A condition been in a hundred on the truck, I could have done not see. So it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, our tower aspects, and when the telecommunication technology came. When we first started on Navajo, it was kind of like Navajo Mountain, Yale Point, uh, Cheska, I uh, mean, uh, Days of Bluff by Tohatchee. Hey, they got the big carriers, Verizon, AT&T, Altel. Those were the big carriers that first came in. And they were paying a rental rate of 24000 a year. 2005, is the industry really started booming. No. Came and, and it started to uh, started to really grow. So industry came in and says, for us to build out, we're going to have to cut that rate in half. That's the only way we can do it. So uh, resource committee at the time cut the rate from 24 to 12,000 a year to co-locate on a tower from 5,000 to 2,000. And that's been the rate up to now. There's a, and there's a lot of, uh, of, of carriers now. One of our own enterprises became a, and got involved in the telecom side. So we started looking at how many is out there. On our books, we had two, uh, 200 towers that has papers, they're lease, they're paying. We know they're there. So we had an outside company that specializes in tower management and their technology. They did what they call cloud sourcing and they were able to find all the towers that are lit up and who they were. That's what we wanted. How many towers is there? Who are they? Who else is on their towers? And uh, you know, how long have they been lit up? And we were surprised we got over 1,100 towers on Navajo. And so that means more than, you know, 80% of them don't have no paperwork. So we start looking who are they? We started asking them to make back rent. There's companies that refuse to pay. They said it's too much. We can't. We can't go to an area. We can't put a tower because there's no. So we start looking at how do we get control? Legislation, in that we said, no, we need to develop regulations for our modern technology of telecommunic telecommunication use. So in 2016, the land department and NN2RC got together and we started drafting the regulations. In the 2008, and then we said, okay, this is it. Then we got comments from industry. And so to, as of today, we finished them and finalized them over two years ago. We still haven't gotten past yet because the keep industry still wants to comment on them. They still don't want to really be regulated. That's what it boils down to. The land portion and the NNTRC portion, we put the two together. So it's going to take RDC action and NABI action. Those regulations need to be um, passed so we can get a handle on. So if they're in one area, they should be able to all co-locate. 
But if you look, you'll see one tower and there's another one right by it. They don't want to get on each other's tower because each other's asking too much. But we've got to have regulations. So uh, that is uh, what we need to, and we're working on um, to address that and looking at other ways, the eyesore. How, what do we make them look like? Trees, you, other, other places you look, they look like trees, like a pine tree. It's actually a, a cell tower, uh, a, a lamp post. But with technology moving, you're gonna see more antennas on buildings and everywhere else. So, because we're gonna have smart highways pretty soon. Uh, with technology moving forward, we just have to be uh, able to do that. And we are working right now, the Nigerian Montoya administration, each division, we're developing our strategic plans. Uh, we, uh, with, uh, with the Division of Natural Resource, yesterday we sat down and we started that process. You know, what are our strengths? What are our opportunities? What are our aspirations? What's going to be our results? What are they? And so here, probably within, by before summer, May, in the May, we should have that so you'll be able to see exactly what our strategic plans are, what we're going to get done, what those timelines, the timeline is the next five or six months. What can we finish by the next FY? Auto A will have another session of what we'll do next year with the FY. We know what, then we know where we're headed. All of these issues are entangled in there. How do we fix them? What's the plan? What do we have? So that, that, that's what we're, we're working on. Uh, Delegate Simpson, I, I appreciate your uh, uh, support. And yes, Eastern is a challenge. But I think we, we can work collaboratively with uh, BIA. They've been able to be lenient in some cases. But out there, you have a lot of renewals that are happening now. Gas lines, utility lines, there's more um, um, transmissions being uh, proposed. And so that's, that's going to continue, but we need to work with them. We always provide them the land status map, so we'll try to make it easier for them. Uh, Auto Chairwoman uh, Jesus, uh, thank you for your questions and, and your comments and your support uh, as well. And uh, you know, we've, we've done a lot of uh, different uh, projects together and, and, and working with you and understanding the Navajo Nation system. Uh, one of the, the big things that, uh, of course, that we mentioned is the uh, executive order for energy. And for that energy is that venting process now. Right now, we have so much energy projects being proposed to Navajo. There are many solar companies. We have companies that want to develop wind energy. We have hydrogen um, opportunities, helium opportunities, geothermal opportunities. And the list goes on. They're, they want to. They're, they're coming. So we want to be able to be business friendly. And so when they come, they don't know who to engage with. Do we go to the chapter level? Uh, do we go to the land department? Do we go to division resource? Do we go to president? Or do we go to the delegate? Do we go to council? So we developed the executive order to develop a, a clearinghouse that vetting, the, the vetting process. They fill out the whole form, who they are, where they're from, what they plan, who's their backers, how long have they been doing this. All that information, there's a team of us that look at it and say, this is a legitimate company. They've, they've got the experience, they've got the backing. And, and, and so let's, let's talk with them. And of course, who's gonna bring us the most revenue? That's who we want to work with. Which is going to be the best environmentally for us? That's going to be important. And so uh, those are, those are the, uh, the, the portions that we're using, the energy policy of 2013. And in it, the local communities, uh, and then uh, you mentioned the Department of Ag. 
Uh, yes, they've got some direction that they've, they've got to be involved with. Um, we're, we're, look, we're already working on the tribal ranch, uh, uh, ranches out there that have leases expired. They're, they're told to get those up to date. And so we're doing a lot right now so we can move forward and, and work on the things that need to get done. We need to, to fix the things that we're, we've been um, uh, neglecting, I'll say. And, uh, and, and so those are some of the things. As even our, our funding sources, the 638 projects that have been out there since 2018, we need to get those done, closed out. So we're, we're in that closing process. Um, I do a delegate of Viso Cat. No, I appreciate your support. Oh, he's, he's gone. But I appreciate your support. So, I would say, I saw him get in his chin. None of those legs. Yeah. Yeah, honorable note. I do Kodo, Mr. Haluna, Kodo, Junako, Sad, Behana, so T. I do Kunepana, so Gi, honorable chair parish. and on uh, 25th Navajo Nation Council. It's good to um, hear all of the discussion this afternoon. Uh, Speaker Curley, I'm going to ask if I can waive the rest of my time to Vice Chair Carl Slater. Thank you. 451. Time of 451. Yields time to Honorable Vice Chair Slater. Do you accept? Yes. Four minutes and 51 seconds. Do you, have, do you have a point of privilege? Do you have a point of privilege? <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Shadeja, for providing the time. I'm going to speak really quickly, but these are things that I really would like to see because I think it's important to the prosperity of the Navajo Nation. We need a commercial deed of trust act to help uh, provide security and collateralization and encourage economic investment into the Navajo Nation for our small business owners and other business owners. We have that on the residential side, but we need it on the commercial side. I really ask that you consider investigating um, prior federal legislations, I think that were offered by Don Young, to create restricted fee status land and allow the Navajo Nation to convert trust land, fee simple land, um, other holdings into restricted fee. We'd have control over the land it would be subject to Navajo Nation law. It wouldn't necessarily be subject to federal law or to state laws, and that would help expedite our um, compliance permitting and a lot of different things that we do. We could look at utility corridors, um, you know, agricultural purposes, all sorts of different things. I, I really ask that you look at that and provide some analysis back to the Resources Committee and the Nabakiatik Committee. Um, third, the system that you have in place right now is internal for land status and we really need to develop a public facing system. I know that you can grant permission to some people to look at that like officials, but in order to have a vibrant real estate market, you know, our people have asked for a certain level um, and type of economic system, and they want certain things that necessitate having a real estate market if we're gonna be serious about that. So, you know, instead of insiders being privileged to, okay, this is an old BIA lease in, here in Chin Lee, this is a Navajo Nation lease, and so they'll go after the Navajo Nation one instead of the BIA one because the family's squatting on it. Whatever it is, you know, we need to make that more transparent for our people so that there's an opportunity to invest and to take advantage of areas that different communities have identified for economic growth. Um, now, you mentioned agricultural leases that the nation has the ability to do. I think we need to consider, and I'd ask the Resources Committee to look at providing a financial incentive under the Agricultural Infrastructure Fund to permittees who convert their BIA permits into Navajo Nation agricultural leases. I think it's getting BIA out of the picture is gonna make all of our lives a lot easier and it's gonna reinforce the sovereignty that we have over our lands and our people will have a more direct connection into how those lands are administrated administered instead of having to go back to the federal government and discuss you know, rulemaking and all these things that we have to do um, with respect to, to governing those lands. So I'd really like to see that. And then I'd also like to see some of the AIF funding go to area-wide conservation plans so that we can pre-clear certain agricultural areas, whether it's for farming or for um, you know, raising animals, herding sheep, et cetera. 
And that way it will take a little bit of the burden off of our people as they go to develop either a specific conservation plan or just go to apply for NRCS funding, apply for um, other types of USDA funding that is available to them right now, but they just don't take that first step in getting that conservation plan. Um, you know, it could be fencing, it could be drilling a well. There's so much funding that's out there, but the real starting point is from the individual permittee or group of permittees. Energy policy, you know, I think in the current 2013 energy policy, there's a 5% allocation, or it, it permits 5% of the annual lease payments for a project to go back to the host community. The Navajo Nation government, the executive branch, as far as I understand, has never established the protocol for those host communities to reap that benefit. Now, as you move forward in developing a new energy policy, you know, I think there needs to be a lot of community and grassroots um, involvement. Of course, there needs to be industry involvement, um, but I really want to see, I'd say, a higher number there in terms of what those local community benefits are. We need to have a low or higher threshold, and that will be the basis for any sort of negotiations with these companies who want to come into Navajo. Um, too much has gone to Windrock. There hasn't been enough local benefit, and we just need to get stop tripping over ourselves and help our people. Um, I think that's the last thing I wanted to mention, but. Uh, in terms of self-sufficiency in agriculture, we need to start looking at these dormant leases that aren't being used. COVID has taught us, the second that those shelves are bare in Chinle and you don't have canned food and that truck might not come because it got diverted to Flagstaff where there's more money to be made, we need to create more internal self-sufficiency and those are gonna be some hard choices with people who say that's my land. But if it's gonna benefit all of District 11, all of Chinle Agency, then I think that's the benefit we need to look at. Yeah, Honorable Slater, time. Next in queue, we have Honorable Dr. Andy Ness. Yeah, Madam Speaker, Autocodol Delegate, um, Nathan Nota for co sponsoring, Autocodol Delegate to uh, Mr. Halona for being here. I've heard that you're our land guru on the Navajo Nation, so my expectations of you in this position are pretty high, pretty paramount, which is where a lot of these questions that I want to pose is going to be coming from. Uh, first and foremost, I do want to reinforce the need um, to conduct enforcement across Navajo Nation. I understand that there are a lot of discrepancies when it comes to positions. You did state in your opening statements, 249 open positions. Fast forward to the discussions that we've been having to this point. I have not heard what your current recruitment efforts are, what they have been, and what they're going to be within the next couple of months um, or year. And I understand that that's part of the limitations when it comes to enforcing some of these areas across Navajo. And I, I attend our farm board meetings, I attend our Club C meetings, I attend our permittee meetings. And these are some of the areas that are very paramount for our communities up in District 18, Upper District 18, Fort Defiant, Sawmill, Crystal, and Red Lake. Things uh, such as fencing, feral horses, cutting healthy trees, uh, moratoriums, um, and wells, access, accessibility to water. I'm not sure if there's a repository system for wells and windmills. Um, you, I'm sure you understand that many of our citizens also rely on those sources um, and not, you know, it's unfortunate that they have to go off Navajo oftentimes to get water. Um, so that would be something to, uh, to see because we have a lot of families, like I said, that depend on it for livestock as well as for their own family use. Um, another question related to the repository system is the subdivisions. Um, I know there's a lot of concerns regarding home site leases, but is there an existing um, file or some sort of record that identifies the subdivisions, not only in the upper district 18 area, but across the Navajo Nation? We have many families, of course, that go off Navajo uh, after they're just given up on the process with the Navajo Nation and, and getting the home site leases. Also, earth and dam assessments. I know, again, just limited staff, but we do have many there in the upper district 18 from White Clay to Sawmill to Crystal, right here to Blue Canyon. So a lot of that ongoing assessment. 
and earlier your comments on recharging our own waters to capture what we need to. A lot of that runoff comes from Crystal, and I always see Crystal as our next Napi substation. Um, but, and the reason I say that is because we get a lot of moisture, rain, snow, et cetera, but all of that, of course, is delivered through white clay off into the Little Colorado River to the streams here ending up in Sanders. So um, that I wanted to bring that up. <clears throat> but also um, enforcement, again, just going down to something as simple as uh, stipends and the delays that many of our farm board members also are subjected to. And the last point I want to make before I reserve my time is that when you were at the land department, I've made several efforts to reach out to you to communicate and get some questions. So when you became a division director, that for me, that was like, okay, so I hope the communication improves. It hasn't. Uh, we have invited you several times to some of our meetings related to real estate um, regarding abandoned home ordinances and getting that uh, understanding. And when I look at a lot of the documents that we have, a lot of them are dated in 2018, 19 which at this point are four or five years ago. And so I hope that <clears throat> under this division director in your new position that you're able to improve that communication uh, and respond effectively as well as be present. And so uh, the last thing is just, again, just customer service um, internally and working with your staff, your programs that you oversee and being able to be effective like that and having a good measure because you ha oversee programs that have direct impact both historically as well as the future of the Navajo Nation and the Navajo Nation, um, the land itself. So, uh, Honorable speaker, uh, speaker, I reserve my time. Thank you. Reserve time of 24 seconds. Adokodo Shiyaj, Honorable Daniels, if you are still on line with us. Yes. Uh, Madam Speaker, Even their grazing permits, the 
Our club and they are back in the 40s. That, that's been great for us and us. But I said, 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 Another area is um Halchitra community. Ah, so yeah, go and now take Honorable Daniels, time. Honorable colleagues, before I go forward, I'm going to see if we still have a quorum here. So I'm going to do a roll call. So if you are online, feel free to mark in your presence. And if you're here in the chambers, uh, please press your uh, request to speak button. Honorable colleagues, I'm going to check to see if we still have corn before we go forward. Honorable Lamardo Azaret. Honorable Lamardo Azaret. Honorable Lamardo Azaret did not answer roll call. Honorable Eugenia Charles Newton. Honorable Eugenia Charles Newton. Honorable Eugenia Charles Newton is excused. Honorable Brenda Jesus. Honorable Brenda Jesus. Honorable Brenda Jesus did not answer roll call. Honorable Casey Allen Johnson. Honorable Casey Allen Johnson. Honorable Casey Allen Johnson did not answer roll call. 
Going back up. Honorable Lamardo Azaret. Honorable Lamardo Azaret. Honorable Lamardo Azaret did not answer roll call. Honorable Amber Kenes Bakrati is excused. Honorable Seth Damon is excused. Honorable Brenda Jesus. Honorable Brenda Jesus. Honorable Brenda Jesus did not answer roll call. Honorable Rick Nez is excused. Honorable Jermaine Simonson is excused. Madam Speaker, you have 17 members present, including yourself. Yeah, colleagues, this shows that we still have quorum, uh, both in person and on Zoom. Ado Kunet, we thank you for your presentation, Mr. Halona, and also Honorable Nota. Uh, colleagues, uh, we have Honorable Shauna and Tla with questions. Five minutes. Thank you, Shadeja. Honorable Speaker Curley. Arakure Shana Keshi She Hawansan and Shido Ado Tore Chini Bashin Tkachi Deshido Ki Ani Deshanala Ado Jin Lid E Ad Shagando E Ad Shananish A Koyat E Shina Ke Bit at ni e Shanal or Shana that eh a ko equit a ek ep deed ni dole Ado Shelto Nanda Desh Kitten so Good afternoon, honorable colleagues of the 25th Navajo Nation Council, and then also those that are listening online, and then to my older brothers who are sitting there. Um, I want to thank, first of all, Shana, Mr. Nathan Nota, for sitting in for us as a co-sponsor, and thank you for presenting the legislation. Um, I do have a few questions in regards to cleanup of contaminated sites. I do have a few out in my community of Chinle that require attention. So I know that um, being on RDC, we do have the leverage of meeting with Mr. Halona and his staff, but I just wanted to put it on the record so that my community knows that he does have a plan along with his staff and then in addition to that, um, I was able to attend the Western Agency Grazing meeting as well as the Central Agency Grazing meetings. And it doesn't seem too, um, too different, even though they're different parts of the region, but some of the, they have the same concerns. And one of them is uh, regarding their payment. So I would hope to sit down and talk about how we can work uh, in developing an efficient payment schedule for them. And then also, uh, I think that we do need to send representation during these meetings as they have some challenges um, that are vast and numerous, such as the feral horses, um, and then also the tally counts, uh, the incentives for the tally counts, and then also just wear and tear on their vehicles, vandalism that's happening at the windmills, and I've heard a lot of my colleagues speak to those issues. And then also, um, I do want to thank the AIF fund I do see individuals that receive the benefits and they send it in the emails and so I do see familiar names going forward and I appreciate that and I hope that the individuals that are receiving those funds are making good use of it for what its intention is and then also thinking about uh, some of these issues at the local level such as our um, community cemeteries. And so we do have that um, that is coming forth as well as far as policies. But um, I just wanted to let everyone know that there is proposals that have been submitted, but I just wanted um, Mr. Halona Shana to go ahead and expand on that a little bit more. And then also 
just from my experience, the short time being on RDC, I do see uh, Mr. Halona and his staff working diligently. Uh, there were questions that I had regarding uh, my own maps that I needed as far as withdrawals, and those were presented to me quite, quite quickly, so I was very surprised on that. And um, I think that that was really helpful since we do have our ARPA projects that are coming. So with that, I just wanted to let Shana know that I am in support of him being there. And I do, if I do have any um, recommendations or if I have any, if I'm reserved about any policies, I know that he does have an open door policy where I can approach him and his staff. So I do appreciate that. I appreciate the teamwork and then always for housing us and hosting us during our RDC meetings. And with that speaker, I will waive the rest of my time. Honorable Claw waves her time. Next in queue, we have Vice Chair Yazi. Um, good afternoon again, and I just want to say thank you to all the staff um, for being here all week and taking care of us and making sure that you know we're able to um, again pass legislation and really have a full understanding of what we're doing here. And so I do appreciate that you're here and helping us to understand. Um, one of my concerns that you said is you know, the 249 vacancies, that's a lot. Um, so I don't know, I have maybe an idea, you know, there's a, we have our grazing officials. Um, and I know they don't get paid a lot because they, you know, probably work like us on stipends and meetings, but I don't know if that's a possibility. I know the, some of the grazing officials in my community have been there for a long time and have been elected you know, over and over, and they have really good ideas. I'm wondering if there's ways to employ them, make them employees so that they work with you, because they already understand the communities and where what's needed, and they've already talked to the people in the community. So that's just something I want to toss out there. Um, <clears throat> the other one is I will be participating in the Native Farm Bill Coalition next month, and a lot of what you talked about and brought up relates to that. So I want to know if there's anything that I need to help advocate on. Um, I'm here for the, you know, our, our Navajo farmers and ranchers. I want them to grow food again. And I know that the Agricultural in Infrastructure Fund is that place where they possibly can learn how to grow food for themselves, and so I want to be in support of that. And if there's anything I can contribute when I take some information to Washington, just to be a part of it, to represent our farmers and ranchers, I'd like to know how and what kind of information that from your division could be helpful for me. I mean, I could take the, you know, my individual farmers and ranchers ideas as well. Um, the other thing is thank you for making that clarification about, you know, it would be called an environmental assessment. So I look forward to learning more about that and how I can approach that and, you know, work hard to complete that for my communities. And I just want to thank you for bringing this legislation forward. Um, agriculture um, is really important. It is who we are as Navajo people, and if there's any way that I could support it, um, you know, I just let me know. And the other thing is, um, I will be coming to your office, and I do want to, you know, bug you as much as I can. Um, and then the other thing I noticed is, you know, it might have looked like I wasn't paying attention, but I was on your website looking at the different reports. And I saw some, you know, you have some um, plans. There's also some reports on, you know, climate change and climate, um, your feasibility studies for your native plants. 
Um, so I'm just going to continue to look at that and also some of your connections were in your website are not, they need to be updated. So I just want to also bring that up. Thank you and I'll waive the rest of my time. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Vice Chair Yazi. Uh, we'll go back to reserve time. We do have Honorable Chair Vince James with 40 seconds. Honorable Yanito with 50 seconds. And Honorable Dr. Andy Nez with 24 seconds. Honorable Chair James, 40 seconds. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Mr. Halona, the, dist the District Grazing Committee are overwhelmed with home site lease disputes since the 2016 policy change. How are you going to manage and um, try and settle that? Uh, next one is in regards to chapter boundaries. What are your plans in regards to disputes that are happening among our chapters that have concerns about chapter boundaries? Reserve my time. Thank you. Reserve time of 18 seconds. Honorable Yanito, 50 seconds. Yeah. Um, the last one on this committee is with this information policies that any do corner right away that at all permit permit holders that a do con get it all the year along the salmon river I want to pump out that river I don't set up a, a water filtration on there and take it out to the the permittees grazing fields for um, business. I don't the chapter business that any without any for tourists. This acres that I'm dealing with will be by 30 miles by 30 miles. I'm in process uh, pr to uh, accomplish this task. Yeah, Honorable Yunito, that was time. Honorable Dr. Andy Nez, 24 seconds. My time, thank you. Honorable Dr. Nez reserves his time of 24 seconds. Quito, Honorable uh, Nota and Mr. Halona, I give back the floor to you. Uh, yeah, Speaker Curley. Kudo la in the has to give me the solution. Do question the uh, Delegate Slater, Delegate Nez, Delegate Daniels, Delegate Claw, Delegate Yazi, Delegate Yanito. I'm going to turn this uh, floor back over to Mr. Halona. Yeah, la question at the house. I agree. Delegate Slater, um, I do agree that a commercial deed of trust act needs to be established. I think that would bring more businesses, but um, I can share that with uh, Mr. Skrilanis at Economic Development. I know they're working on revising their business site leasing regulations to also streamline it and to be able to speed that up so that we'll be able to look at it. Um, there's been several um, discussions on changing land statuses and restricted fee uh, gives, uh, gives us more um, opportunities than distrust, um, such as the first time we've done restricted fee was turning uh, Fort Wingate. When Fort Wingate was uh, relinquished back to the Navajo Nation, um, we requested that it be done in restricted fee. And so um, that that is coming over as restricted fee, not as trust land. And we could look at some of the other aspects. And the, the challenge there is trying to work with the Bureau and their requirements has been pretty expensive to do even fee to trust. It's, it's like you're, you're trying to sell your land and you have to be able to uh, 
do all the environmental work and they want to make sure that an EA is fully completed and that they show that there are no in, in environmental uh, issues. So uh, to give you an example, in Farmington, right when you turn off of 371 to go on N36, going to uh, Northern Edge, uh, on the southwest corner, you'll see uh, North uh, Northern Edge Casino sign, great big one. That's a property we bought, 67 acres we bought for an, uh, economic development. For the last six years, we've been trying to turn that into trust. It's always one thing after another. At one time, they said we couldn't because the broker had left the for, for, uh, for sale sign on there. So we had to get the broker to run out there, hurry up and take it down, and tell them, okay, we've done it. The, the sign is gone now. So I think it's, it, we're going to need some, some help from council to be able to address some of these relationship building um, components with the Bureau to be able to get a lot of these, some of these things done and, and look at that, um, to be able to do that. I know there are some fee to trust projects going on I, um, that the Bureau is handling because they had some money uh, for housing at, in White Horse Lake Chapter. Um, also a half an acre in uh, Daru for economic development. Uh, I'm not sure where those are at uh, with the Bureau, um, but uh, I think it's, we can look at that or just areas that we could, that would be advantageous for us to be able to do that for maybe economic growth, to be able to get companies to come in and have an assurance that uh, it's not trust land and they're not going to be run off, uh, that there's some stability there for them to in invest uh, their dollars. Um, and um, some of the uh, aspects of the agricultural lease, I think, really has to be looked at again uh, in many farms. Uh, that's been some of the uh, guidance we're providing the rehabilitation of that farm is to um, to start with a clean slate and, this, and, and give the uh, lease to the farm board, then they can sublease the farm plots back out to those that are going to use um, the plot to farm. Um, there's a lot of farms that are just been idle for 40 years, 30 years, and no production. And then it doesn't get developed. So we're losing. Everybody's losing. And at the same time, you have another family that says, if you just give me five acres, I, I'm going to plant this spring. I'm going to plant now. But we need BIA to be able to, to move those land use permits out. And they're just permits. And we're going to give them leases. Uh, so that is something we need to look at. The AIF money, and we heard a lot of it today. Um, I, I am currently looking, re-looking at the AIF money. It's a three. It's been the third year now, and and looking at some of the um, earmark projects. What are they? Uh, which are ready to go? Uh, and 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 look down and how's it going to enhance um, our priorities, which is getting agricultural back up and running, um, supporting the livestock owners, getting the windmills back up. Let's, let's outsource that if we have to. Um, who, who can build some of the, of the um, parts that are needed? A lot of the time you can't find the parts. They can sign, get some in Mexico. Uh, but if we could just figure out what they are, I think we could get maybe into you to design that part so we can fix some of these windmills um, and start some of the enhancement work. So the AIF funds, I, I want to get the community involvement. Um, I have told the grazing, uh, let's take a look. What are your projects you're looking at? Uh, AAD is your own. 
between uh, uh, needs. So we are really looking at the AIF, and I want RDC to be a, a part of that uh, revisit um, so we could be able to, to move forward. Um, also mention grazing professionals. It's been several years now that that has come up, taking grazing officials and not let them, and taking them out of the elected position and moving them into an employee position. And I think that time has come, come now um, because right now they don't really have the, the, the support of resources to do everything that's expected of them. Uh, I see it. I understand what they're going through, you know. And, some, and, and I've told people at home site lease, uh, I says, go to their house, pick them up, take them over there. Uh, that's how you'll know it'll get done. Go to their house and pick them up. Um, and, and so, because they're short on, on uh, gas, gas prices were way up. Um, so sometimes they just signed the forms without going out there. And, and that later on, we just hope that it don't become an issue. So I think that needs to be re-looked re at and looking at maybe something like an, a county extension agent where we have people in there that are there eight, 80 hours working, looking at agriculture, looking at conservation projects, earth dams. I mean, that's what they do um, for their job. And, I, and there's some of the officials could actually move over to that position, but we would have to eliminate the, the elected position to do that. Also, there was a, a response about moving um, maybe increasing the 5% at the communities. Um, again, we, we, the, the energy policy was done in 2013, um, kind of looking at what might be available in the future. And it's because when we were making the public um, presentations about the energy policy, where you're, you're extracting all of this mineral, this coal from our area, royalties, wonder and nothing's coming back, but everything goes into general funds, and it's going back out uh, to the chapters, but not as much as it could be. So that's when we put that five percent in, so is that they would be able to keep five percent of the lease payment not the royalties of the lease, whatever the lease is, 5% of that. And of course, that, that can be um, um, amended when we uh, revisit the uh, energy policy to, to increase it. And, uh, and, and I think when we talked about the dormant lands in use, that's what it meant was getting them involved and be able to do that. Uh, enforcement has, has been a big issue. Uh, everything that we do, we don't have the enforcement. We don't have the enforcement for the grazing. The grazing officials don't have that ability to do the enforcement. As an elected official out there, they don't want to either. And I understand that. So it's hard to, to be an enforcement person uh, to do that, but there should be. Resource enforcement rangers, there's limited there too, how, of, of what they can do. And there's been an issue about their commission. So we're working on developing the regulations where there's a Navajo Nation police uh, officers training in postage né? that can also include rangers, fish and wildlife officers, forestry officers, uh, agriculture officer, parts and recreational officers, they all go to Federal Police Academy. So they should, they have the training um, to, to be able to be law enforcement, to give them the commission as a, uh, to, to enforce all laws on Navajo. So I'm, 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 I'm meeting with the 
uh, Public Safety Executive Director Michael Anderson, and um, he is meaningful to do that, to be able to work to, to address that. Uh, recruitment of vacancies. We're, there's, we're all talking about doing a vacancy drive to the agencies from the division standpoint. Fish and Wildlife's gonna do it for hunting and everything else. We wanna go right along to try to find people and, and, and really start looking at the, the, the hiring um, procedures and processes uh, need to have, support it. And so they're able to do that. Uh, feral horses um, from 2013, just in 2023 itself, um, we have taken 1,442 uh, horses off the range. From 2019 to now, we've taken 7,923. And we're using different methods. We're using roundups, and we're using uh, traps to capture them. Um, seizures being taken away from, from people that are, are transporting some animals without brands. And then we started the reward program where they can bring an unbranded horse in. And if it's a, a mare, if it's a stallion, if it's a stud, you know, we, we figure, uh, give them a price anywhere from uh, 150 to $250 uh, is, is given to them. So they'll bring it into Wonder Rock. We, we paid them. And so those that are being uh, captured out there and those that are being rewarded, it's almost the same, same amount. So it's, it's working. Uh, but I know we need to do more. We are focusing on, on that. Uh, I have a meeting here uh, within the next couple of weeks with all the programs that are working on feral horse uh, management um, issues, uh, which is uh, Fish and Wildlife and uh, Department of Agriculture and BIA are going to fund that. Um, Earth Dam assessment uh, for uh, Delegate uh, Nez. Uh, we are working uh, in, in your chapter area, Crystal, the Black Creek. Um, we made an agreement with NRCS. Um, uh, we're, started, we're working on the, what's called the Black Creek watershed. So we're focusing on hot water. The repairs need to happen. Uh, for, the, for, for, for moving forward to continue to have that uh, water. And um, please continue to reach out uh, to, to contact me either through email or by cell um, or come across the, to my office anytime you're here. I'd be more than happy to, to meet with you, talk with you, and see how we can assist you from, from the division. Cecilia, uh, uh, Delegate Daniels, the um, Nahot Monument Valley, the Tribal Park. There's a resolution in place when the uh, Tribal Park was established back in 1958 that said that the area would be withdrawn as a tribal park for its beauty and all of, all of that use where they were making all the movies. We're not going to make any improvements, or we're not going to be additional. People aren't going to move in. You can probably get utilities down there that's under, that's buried, and nobody would see it unless at night. If you ever been to the view, actually, you don't see any lights. That's an attraction for people. Uh, I remember the first time I stayed there, I kept waking up. So I didn't want to miss it. And, uh, and so it's, it's that, it's, that's what brings the millions of people to that park. Um, if we start develop it, uh, developing that aspect, if we start developing, but that's something that is going to take 
uh, uh, not only the, the provision of natural resource, but the community, our, our RDC, to f figure out how do we, how are we able to help the individuals there? Do we find another location that nearby that we can help them um, get the amenities that they want? Uh, that's just that's just one idea. But I think if we spend some time, I think we'll be able to find some ways to do that. However, we are, I just met with the, uh, the NDOT um, about improving the road that goes down and goes to those families' homes. Where, where that's, that's now on Parks and Recreation and NDOT's um, to-do list um, to improve that road. And Halkitra. Um, uh, we went out there and did a tour and, and met with the people there of uh, all the uh, uh, the burnouts that have happened which is I think a very uh, a safety hazard uh, for for the kids in the community there when you had next door you have a home that has been burnt down and it's not cleared out it's just there but um the Utah Trust Development uh, Fund group were given a lease. And I don't know how they got a business site lease for, how, for that building a community, but they have a business site lease called the Eila. Uh, which is expiring this coming year. So they're the ones that are responsible for um, maintaining um, within their lease area. They're responsible for the cleanup. They're responsible for improvements. So we have to bring them to the table and find out when they plan on fulfilling their responsibilities. A lease, I've seen that. Um, so I think we need to go back and, and revisit. Um, my little sister, Delegate Claw. Um, I know there's some some sites that have been relinquished and proposed for relinquished from the Bureau. There's supposed to be some abatement and some demolitions done. Um, there's also still a study from previous um, environmental impacts uh, where they used to have an old um, watershed and so forth, not a watershed, a diesel fuel uh, dispensing that has went into the groundwater and they were monitoring because it was expanding. So uh, we need to go back and revisit with BIA as to what are their plans to finish the cleanup they're responsible. That's our position. Um, and again, from grazing officials and farm board, um, you know, we can advocate that they receive better compensation, better siphons for all of the activities that they're responsible for, to providing direct services to the farmers and to the livestock producers. So I think um, that's something we can look at. Um, I know in the AIF fund, um, there was a proposed incentive um, to get them to, for the tally counts completed quicker, there was going to be an incentive to them if they got it done quicker. That is in the budget. That could be part of something that is provided. Uh, so those tally counts uh, will be done. But of course, they're using their own vehicles and so forth. Um, but I think that that needs to be revisited because I know there was an issue about them and their taxes. So, um, uh, you know, I think it's time that we look at them being 
full-time employees that would be provide better services to the people in all aspects uh, from my perspective and uh, we're willing to be able to do that auto uh, community cemeteries oh Back in uh, 2000, I mean, back in 1999, Resource Development passed a resolution uh, recommending to all chapters to establish community cemeteries. So to this day, there's still several chapters that don't have uh, a community cemetery and some that do are filling up um, some chapters were charging other ch if you were not a, uh, a registered voter from that chapter to be buried at their cemetery they were charging either five hundred dollars some as high as a thousand dollars so that's when we started looking at what do we need to do we have this resolution that made recommendations to them. But how do we get these done? As a result, people are, every day you hear family plots. Um, um, the grazing permittees are um, coming to us about disputes that it's causing. Um, and then all of the um, uh, from the same families, they're divided. Some say we want to use a cemetery, but they they uh, we don't want to to we don't want to just bury them out in the middle of nowhere. No. So as a result, in twenty. Um, uh, Mr. Halona, let's uh, take a little quick break. We do have, may we all rise, we do have our Vice President of the Navajo Nation, Ms. Rochelle Montoya, here with us in the chambers. Yes. Madam Vice President, we do have a seat for you up here. You're more than welcome to come up here. <clears throat> oh yeah we do also please rise we also have our chief justice here too madam chief justice uh, thank you for visiting us and being able to join our last day of council session here with us it's nice to see both of you Oh, Ado, uh, Mr. Halona, he can proceed. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Not only your cargoes caught us, not long. Um, <laughs> um, okay. So, so we started looking at the uh, developing regulations, and this was before COVID. And we started looking at how how do we fix it because the code was outdated. Uh, Title 13, these so burials, and and so there was very little to work with. Auto General Service Committee was the um, oversight for maintaining to oversee the cemeteries and make sure that they're upkept and that. A uh, coho. Then, we, so we developed the regulations and um, guiding, uh, working with a group with, from DOJ, Land Department, Historic Preservation, then Human uh, Human Rights Commission joined us, um, all the grazing um, officials and district uh, chairs of grazing. Aot, um, they were part of the group, and we had public hearings. And the last we had, we had was at Twin Arrows. And at that time, um, we, we, we had regulations for burials as we know it in the community cemetery, but more uniform, being recorded, 
um, because people come to us looking for their great great grandfather they want to know which plot that they're at and there was no records kept so we said from now on that you know the chapter will be responsible for the cemetery and they will keep records um, and how wide how deep um, uh, the, 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 the grave site would be uh, with those kind of regulations and then uh, that it's open to any tribal member um, not just those that are registered voters there uh, regardless of where they decease and then we went to the to the uh, family plot we thought we would be able to withdraw land and do family plots and uh, be able to um, give them a, a, a private cemetery lease but the code didn't have the provisions to do that um, so we made regulations on what that process would be um, and then the other was cremation there was nothing in our code book talking about cremation so when it came over on this, trying to develop regulations and guidance, you know, where, where would they be? Especially when you get to, to uh, Lake Powell, on the edges, there's urns that are sitting out there. Um, so we wanted regulations on that. Shrines at Nas Nilia. I don't let a Dajiago. So the public were really concerned with that. Even Yako, a creature con that the Kato, a chin, the Alcaon, the Acompassi, Natcha, a coeta every day that you're in. The hot aid at the no. That was the, the response and comments we got. So at the end of our public uh, uh, hearing on those um, cemetery regulations or burial regulations moving forth, um, the, all, the, all of the district grazing committees passed resolutions, all of them prohibiting any more family plots on open range out in the grazing area. no more that they need. shrines. So they, that was out. So I didn't need a co all day. Got the resource committee. They'll start that process again. It's a very touchy uh, subject. It's a real hard regulation to develop. And you know, it's our guidance. But traditionally, that's it. It's there already. We know it. So it doesn't prohibit any of that. Um, and then the, uh, and, and we were happy to get those maps to you. And I know you have interest in the 750 foot corridor, Delegate Claw. And the 750 foot corridor was was legislated by council in 1950. And it's now in tribal code as zoning along highways. It's there, it's codified. When it's supposed to go back to the advisory committee to formulate in that corridor, it's an economic development, housing, or any development needed. So, it's along all of our highways. So if we just fix the regulations right next to the right-of-way fence, I call right-of-way fence, don't lay it, because you're 750 feet, go with that. Because all right-of-way fence, don't hold your 750 foot. There's, there's a big chunk of, of property already open for us. We don't have the regulations. So we want to do corridors for our rights-of-ways for development. The first. 100 feet should be for for utility corridor. A Navajo Nation, a Pito. If a company needs to, to put a line from there to there, they come to Navajo Nation. If it's for our people, we say, go ahead. If it's good, they're going to make money off it, OK. There's a, there's a commercial fee to it. Then you can put it in. But we own it, um, and we control it. They, each company owns their own right of way, and, and, and that kind of gets problematic sometimes 
and looking forward to continue to work with uh, with you, Delegate Claw, at the, with the Resource Committee, and being able to have that dialogue and open. Um, Delegate Yazi, um, he talked about the 245 vacancies. Um, as I mentioned, we need to look at that. Could we use those funds to, uh, how fast could we convert elected officials over into employment status as, as employees? Um, it take PCQs, it'll take legislations, but it's something that we can look at. at. It's not impossible. It's just, oh, how do we do it? Um, you know, uh, RDC would be there and council would make the decision how we're going to handle that. And then uh, person, uh, uh, personnel department would be involved, how we turn them into uh, um, employees. And, you know, the, the agricultural aspects is something that I'm really passionate about really working on. The, we need to re-establish our farmland. It's the plow of my grandpa. And then in the summertime, we used to go down and, 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 and hold in the summertime. Man, was that hot. Um, but that was part of it. And those are fond memories that I will never forget. And I want everybody else to experience that. And what is about, and, and then from there, what the teaching is from there, all the way. Not in Tin Salah. The philosophy to succeed in life is all in that farm. If we, if we can get them to understand, it's going to help a lot. It's going to help our youth get back moving in, in the right direction um, to be able to uh, be productive. And again, you know, everybody used to exchange melon, corn. That was our trading we did with each other. Our neighbor, don't have yet. So that was going to bring us back. It's going to bring us back together. You know, squash the. Keep talking about food, I'm going to get hungry. Anyway, Ado, Delegate James, consents. A lot of people don't realize that council established home site leases in 1953. When they, when they established those home sites, they called them home site permits. And they developed them in the growth communities we call legislation. What's the Ganado, Tohachi, Chindli, Shiprock, where all the schools went. So when they put all the schools in and then the clinics came, they started building those communities, the people came to work from all over not just from the community. So permit spot Auto in nineteen fifty eight is when they came back and they amended it to include all outside everywhere. And when you look at those very first home site lease applications and, and leases, the purpose was for families to get a lease so they could go to the bank and put it up for collateral so they could borrow money to build their own homes. So when you look at the old application that says, what kind of house are you going to build? You have to submit your floor plan, all of that, and who's gonna, who you gonna work in with to finance? What other car? Auto consent it was, it was the district councilman had to give the consent. The district grazing chair gave the consent. The, the, the chair of the advisory committee had to give the con consent, and then it was the chapter had to. Oh, we didn't start allowing the grazing permittees to to give consents 
until after Denison versus Tucson Electric came out in the 70s. Auto just compensation, what do it need? Disposition of, of land where the permittee, they consent, what do it need? Auto, because of what's on in our code book, this she the consent every project, whether it's a water line, utility line, a road, a house, a new building, new chapter, you have to get the consent to get that done. So, that's another obstacle. How are we going to move forward? Kids want to come back and move by their parents, but their uncle has the permit. He's saying no. We have all of those issues going on today. So how do we address that together? They block off each other's roads. They start bullying each other. They used to, when I was at land, I used to, almost every day I had a family come in. They're saying this to us. Tell them not to say this to us. So maybe we should be some harassment, bullying, legislation that needs to be put in place. So those are the challenges that, that, that we deal with. So we're always looking for how do we improve it? How do we make it better? It's going to take planning instead of trying to do stuff when the money is here that we're doing. Chapter land use plans. There's some that were done that haven't been upgraded. Let's put those in place. Land withdrawal regulations, mainly for chapters in New Mexico, because they were getting state money. If they could get a land withdrawal that shows they have site control. This is before we were able to have that authority. Before they used to get money, auto they start that process, trying to go through BIA, money was being reverted back. So when we got the authority, we said, no, we're going to do land withdrawals for chapters. For government, you don't need a lease or a permit. You just have to tell us where, and we'll be able to get those done. Go with that. Um, chapter boundaries, that's a very interesting topic. <clears throat> Most of the, our chapter boundaries fit right into district grazing, used to fit right into district grazing. Auto, those sub-range units, Adichu does Edo, that's what the chapters came up with. So when you look at the old map and the old, and the BIA grazing map or BIA road map, they have their grazing units and their chapters are in there. In 1978, the administration at that time went to the Census Bureau. We want to redraw it because all that time they were using them as census, census boundaries too, numeration boundaries. So when they did the census count, they go to Tohachi chapter, there it is. They count those people in there and they say, this is how many. So that's what they use. And the So some people got together and they took the chapter map and they said, it's going to go all the way to here. Then they read them. So when you overlay it, you see where some chapters gain a little bit, some chapters lost a little bit. And so to this day, some of those old boundaries still come up. So when we started looking at the boundary, we said, how do we fix it? So those, since 1980 to now, every 10 years, we've been using the new numeration boundaries. They came to agreements. So 
you know that that was a that was a, a, a time back in the 80s that they went through all that. Auto cut since then it's been re, it's the revised one now. So they call them um, numeration boundaries. Um, community development calls them um, service areas. A so boundary in uh, 20 I'd say 20, I think it's 2015, we took a, uh, a, a, our map and we said, let's help the chapters for them to be able to be, have a real boundary. They got to have a legal description. So we said, okay, let's take this chapter and let's go section by section and try to stay within their, their numeration boundary now. Let's draw it out for them, section by section, go at Asia. We did the whole Navajo Nation, every chapter, we did that. Then they could withdraw and use the whole thing as a legal description, and they could put a boundary on it as a chapter. We still have it. It's really neat. So there, it's there if they want to use it to establish those boundaries. And so that, I think that's something that we can probably all revisit. Uh, we've done some of the groundwork. It's already there. We just decide which one we're going to use, you know, because we have to get through the, it was over here, that dug out what you're on down. We had to get past those parts, and we can do it. Uh, we actually tried a pilot project with, um, uh, Greasewood, um, Cornfields, Steamboat, probably all your chapters, Ganado, seven, the seven chapters, we use that, we start it. That would be where we start with. Try to get the chapters together, we put the map down, we start it. And they, they disagreed. No, we, we want it over here, duck out, good job. We, and then we never regrouped again. Although uh, it's not all day, and then the people were working on that, then or are gone too. So that's what we did for chapter boundaries, Delegate James. And, and we can still revisit. And I think, you know, we have a solution. We have a solution, God. It's just that we need the chapters to support it, uh, RDC to support it, council to say, no longer, this is no longer enumeration. These are chapter boundaries. And they have the legal description. You can see it on the map, God. Um, Auto uh, delegate Aguinito, auto policy agriculture. Um, that is, we've only issued one agricultural lease to this day, and it's Nappy. We've got Nappy into compliance. They have a lease. I have one more family I'm working with now. The first family that's going to do an agricultural lease under land use permit. Once we get that done, now we have a system. We can start doing them easily now. The land use permits flip over to a lease. That's going to be so helpful for them because a permit doesn't give you what's called parasitory rights. A lease does. And you have it spelled out the terms. And now you can use that for financing, uh, NRCS, USDA. Now they'll work with you like they do uh, uh, private landowners. So that's the mechanism. We have a solution for that too. Go at that. A kohunso e ya sangech in an adolet. A keha. A keha kudo honorable nota and also Mr. Halona for your responses. Uh, colleagues, I do have kudo uh, shama honorable Halina Nesbege via Zoom. <coughs> Speaker Curley, I don't the the twenty fifth council, I don't the Kwaegi a um Mr. Holona Kwaegi non Diskidole. A the first one is the Nav the Navajo Nation Park in Rick and Hurchi. We had a tourism meeting um about a month or a little over a month ago in Page. And a lot of um concern was Address there about the bathrooms being closed to the paying visitors. I call Ada the Hadid Adani, your program manager, the 
when you guys have your meetings with your staff, address that, please. I'll go on to the next one is the home site lease. We, we from the Western Agency, because in the Western Agency, we didn't have Somewhere they get misplaced, lost. I have like six or seven people that are are trying to get their home site lease done and they they kept that they were told that their 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 papers are being misplaced between Winter Rock and Tupa City. Hey did that all done Junago and um um I mean everything should be computerized now and, and do everything on there. Just scan and scan everything and, and make a folder and work with it that way or something, you know, make it easier for the people. These are grandmas or grandpas are they're they're the one get the no, they're over at the home site lease department wanting to update their lease because they're being told that they can't get assisted if their lease is not updated. I'm gonna always advocate on behalf of my elder. And in all areas, there's about three places that the horses were shot in the rural areas, uh, in certain, certain locations. And all these were addressed to the local grazing reps. And nothing has been done, nothing. And then, Navajo police aid that don't hit that me that called a ranger. And the only ranger that we can get out here is from Kianta or Windy Rock. So Hatashi go the hot eat on the Basta Al Kasa. Hey, the Toha late eh is it was that ever addressed a need in Sahuna Hot Eat and one happened almost a year ago and nothing came out of that. So A the Ashwad Sha address the D least um I thought the uh this is uh I'm gonna give my my time what's left to delegate um Carl Slater. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Madam Speaker. We have a time of 1.40. Honorable Vice Chair Slater, are you still online with us? I appreciate the offer at this time. I, I cannot promise. What do you say? All right, uh, thank you. There is no uh, time of 1.40 does go away. Although, we do still have two reserved times. Honorable Chair Vice Vince James with 18 seconds, and then Honorable Dr. Andy Nez with 24 seconds. Kuroshi Yaj, Honorable Chair Vince James, 18 seconds. Um, thank you, Speaker, and then, then Mr. Halona. I'm just requesting to have you please schedule an orientation regarding home site lease grazing permit farming issues with uh, my chapters and other chapters if needed to. Um, thank you for all the information that you have provided up to this far. Now we'll be in contact with you regarding other issues. Honorable Chair Vince James. We have reserved time for Honorable Dr. Andy Nez, 24 seconds. Thank you, Speaker. Mr. Halona for responding. I uh, clearly have really good knowledge and background in history of what you were discussing. However, I wish I heard more of this is the issue, this is what happened, and this is what I'm going to do moving forward, or this is what needs to be done moving forward. So um, if you can include that part of your agenda in working with your team. Honorable Dr. Andy Nance, time. 
colleagues, I don't see anybody else in queue and no, there's no reserve time. I'll give the floor back to Honorable Nota and Mr. Halona to Honorable Begay's questions. Uh, Nanda, thank you for your questions. I'll turn this over to Mr. Halona. The restroom issue uh, was not just at the parks in La Chi. It also happened at Four Corners. And the challenge is something that um, I know that <clears throat> President Nydrin and, and Vice President Antoya is looking at and have given directives and direction to address um, the procurement process, the contracting process, um, to be able to get these services out there quickly. Um, the, the parts of the, when I looked into the, the, the issues, uh, I learned that they had submitted um, contracts for the services to a company that could come out and, and clean those out. And so they hadn't been processed yet, so the companies hadn't come out, and that's how it happened. Uh, but as soon as that happened, we were able to get with the uh, uh, accounts payable uh, group and said, look, we have a situation that needs to happen quickly. And so those were procured, um, expedited quickly, and we got those taken care of. Um, so I know they're also working at changing some of those processes and our solutions um, that we've recommended is that the P card should be able to be used to be able to have a company come out and you give them pay with your P card, get the receipts and everything and submit those. Um, so we have, a, there's a lot of uh, those kind of issues within the division with the different departments um, that are working out there equipment that break down and, and these things and it takes a while to go through the whole process to even uh, change a tire on a tractor they want a service contract to be done to the to the company that's going to change to fix the tire so some of these i think is just kind of not thought through when they were um, developed as a policy um, so they, they are working on it and we have provided comments and and uh, uh, recommendations to improve those uh, going forward. Um, as far as home site leases, um, all, all documents come from Tuba City Land Office electronically. So I, I'm, I'm not sure where anything is, is lost. Um, they come over electronically. Uh, when they get here, they're electronically sent over to Fish and Wildlife for the Biological Resource Compliance Form or it's sent to general land development for the, for the environmental um, determination. And once that's done, it, it, once that's finished, uh, then it, it goes to the department manager for um, approval. And I know when, when that is come, comes to them, they go to the phone, they bring up the document, they sign electronically, and it's sent back. So um, I just well still work with the uh, land department and their home site lease section to address any of these that are um, somehow getting lost. Um, I hope they're not just uh, being misled that that's what has happened when they haven't got them here. So I'm gonna make sure that uh, those type of, of uh, uh, issues are addressed immediately. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we will have the whole process automated and individuals can track where their lease is and how close it is to being approved. Um, it's like when you order a pizza, it tells you that it's gone in the oven and who made it. And when, it, when it's done, it tells you. That's the, that's the type of, of, of uh, services that we want to provide and be able to track and really looking at transparency and accountability um, to the people because they deserve it. They need to know. They need to know what is happening. They need to know uh, where, where the services is, 
when it's coming, uh, and how can we help them to do improve that. So that is our, our emphasis will always be is to improve those services uh, to the people. The customer service has been uh, our administration, the Nigerian uh, Montoya administration, customer service is what's expected. And we've been talking to all of our staff, customer service, upgrade all your websites, be more informative, be able to, to reach out, be able to, to get that information. Uh, and we understand that, and, and that's what we're focusing on, to be able to do that. Auto Delegate James, I'd be more than happy to come out and meet with your chapters. Uh, all your chapters, they come together and provide them the information. So if they have the information, they'll, they'll know what they need to do and, and be able to and how to do it. And any new developments we can be able to provide to them. Go ahead. Yeah. Kia yeah, Honorable Nota, Mr. Halona, for your responses. Thank you for staying with us this long, colleagues. It is a little bit past 4.30, and I don't see anybody else in queue. Uh, back the floor to Honorable Nota. It's an honor for me to bring Mr. Halona for confirmation. The Division of Natural Resources in Hilpedahosen, it's a lot of departments. There's a lot of issues. There's many, many things need to be addressed. Although the Indahastigi, they didn't just happen out of Kwishi for uh, years and years and years, decades. And they've been up to the Kwada Nikhilhojish. The young people say that uh, the struggle is real. This is a monumental undertaking. It's a major task, and I really feel that Mr. Halona has every ability to take us uh, far uh, within our natural resources. So um, I think he is the person for the job, and I appreciate my fellow delegates for your vote in confirming uh, Mr. Halona. Thank you, Honorable Nota, for your presentation on this legislation. Honorable colleagues, I don't see anybody else in queue. Second call. Third call. Going for a vote on legislation 0061-23. Honorable colleagues, this is a short announcement. The snacks in the South Conference Room were provided by Central Consolidated School students who are, a, who are part of the Bon Wilson Technical Center program. So they did bring by some snacks that are in the South Conference Room throughout the day. Honorable Lamardo Azaret. Honorable Lamardo Azaret. Honorable Lamardo Azaret did not answer roll call. Honorable Curtis Yanito. Honorable Curtis Yanito votes green. Honorable Eugenia Charles Newton is excused. Honorable Amber Kanez Bakrati is excused. Honorable Seth Damon is excused. Honorable Rick Nez is excused. Honorable Jermaine Simonson is excused. Madam Speaker, you have 13 in favor, four opposed, and Madam Speaker not voting. 
Okay, has staff, we do have 13 in favor, four opposed, and speaker not voting. The motion does pass. Congratulations, Mr. Halona. Honorable Simpson. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, members of the 25th Council. Good evening or good afternoon. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, when we started this uh, session, I know there's a long report that was done by also the President and Vice President, and also we heard a report from the Chief Justice of the Navajo Nation, and we did accept their report because they done it or report to you the uh, we went, worked late into the night, and we reached this. And I believe that written reports were given from uh, Office of the Speaker. Uh, so, I mean, uh, we received report, a written report from the Speaker of Navajo Nation Council. Also, we received a financial report from the controller. I think I believe they were all emailed, and some hard copies were distributed. And we got a written report from Bureau of Indian Affairs. In Health Services, Attorney General, Navajo Nation Youth Advisory Council, Standing Committees, Board and Commissions, again, Bureau of Indian Affairs, In Health Service, uh, Air Director Ateta, he got three email, written reports, and again, some were given uh, uh, hard copies to the Council. Uh, with that, uh, Madam Speaker, I'd like to make a motion to accept all the written reports. That motion is today. We do have a second by Honorable Shanatla. <coughs> do you see that on the screen, colleagues? Honorable colleagues, uh, Honorable Simpson, uh, can you double check that language on the board here? Um, Madam Speaker, those members of the 25th Council, we can't say all because the state and uh, nation address from the president of the nation, we accepted that. Ada. Then we also accepted the report from the Chief Justice of the nation, we accepted that. Ada when they uh, did the oral reports, Ada. So what I'm asking is to, since we, uh, that we just took the written reports from the Speaker of Navajo Nation Council, our report from the controller of the Navajo Nation, our Bureau of Indian Affairs, Indian Health Services, Attorney General, Navajo Nation Youth Advisory Council, Standing Committees, Boards and Commission, Ada.
Honourable colleagues, just give our staff a few minutes to write that on the board. Board of Privilege, Honourable Chair Vince James. Um, speaker, uh, I'm going to raise a uh, point of privilege. Can can you tell me what rule we're going by to 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 make this motion, Speaker? Honorable James, I just uh, after the legislation we did, I recognized the uh, Honorable Simpson's request to speak before we went on to the next legislation, and he did provide that motion, and just trying to look through my rule book of recognizing a motion on the floor. So I did recognize it. And that just give us a few minutes for Honorable Simpson. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, members of the 25th Council. Uh, Madam Speaker, the reason why I make this motion when we recess on Monday and there was a motion to recess and go into uh, legislation the following day, straight to the legislation the following day that evening, and we concur with that. What we should have done was that we should have, before we consider legislations uh, on Tuesday morning, we should have gone to accepting the written reports then gone to the legislation. So I'm just trying to make that correction. So since the first day is for reports, and we know Officer Officer President, Vice President, uh, uh, Chief Justice Navination, so I want this case in a uh, motion to straight data to see the reports because we went straight to the legislation again to clarify that we should have accepted, we should have accepted the written reports prior to the concerning these, uh, the first legislation. Ain't no oh, correction aid, uh, idea to accept the reports. Uh, Madam Speaker, just to clarify why I make this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Simpson, for that further clarification. We're gonna get uh, some legal guidance here from our legal counsel, Ms. Bobroff. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, Chair James asked the question, uh, a point of order, I think, or maybe it was a point of privilege, as to why, why was this, this um, motion necessary? Uh, and actually, I would call it as a, uh, kind of like a house cleaning uh, motion. Uh, there was a lapse in between the transition 
from Monday's report day to, to Tuesday's legislation day, what should have happened and has always happened in the past is that uh, a motion is made from the floor to accept any of the oral reports uh, that weren't presented as written and to accept the written reports. It's that basis that, you know, after a report is given, uh, there's a motion and an accept uh, second, and then there's a yay or nay vote. So this is just trying to make get the red, the record in the journals clear. Uh, so that's all it is. Uh, thank you. Point of order, Honorable Chair Vince James. Um, I, I raise a point of order uh, in regards to Rule um, 25. Um, based off my question that I asked earlier, what what rule number are we referring to to do this in the middle of the agenda? That will be that's my point of order, Speaker. All right, thank you, Honorable Vince James. I will refer that over to Ms. Barbaroff, and she can clarify some of the confusion here. Ms. Uh, Barbaroff, legal counsel. Thank you. Uh, there's not a specific rule. Uh, it's just a motion for the floor to accept uh, accept the reports. Um, if you are uh, wanting a specific rule that says you can accept reports after they're done or in wholesale or such, there's not one. Um, but you do need to accept the reports. They weren't accepted, uh, although they were presented and such. So doing it now uh, seems like a logical time to do it. It could wait. I think you have, I'm not sure, but I think you have one more legislation on the agenda. Uh, if, if the timing of the motion is a challenge for the delegates, uh, you could ask Delegate Simpton to withdraw his motion and do it after the next legislation at the end. Uh, back to you, Speaker. Yeah, thank you, uh, Ms. Barbara, for that clarification. So, colleagues, with that, there is no uh, Pacific rule that will being accepting the written reports, but however, I'm gonna recognize that motion on the floor uh, by Honorable Simpson. Uh, there was also a recommendation, Honorable Simpson, that was given from Ms. Barbaroff, um, saying, stating that uh, this, there's not necessarily a, a perfect time that you could do this, but also it can be done towards the end of agenda too. I believe we do have one legislation left Honorable Simpson. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker and members of the 25th Council. I understand, Mr. Honorable Delegate, it's James uh, Point. I, I did this the reason why is because after the last legislation is considered, you know, somebody's going to see adjourn. And I know you're going to recognize that adjourn, uh, person that's motioning to adjourn. So if this is going to happen at the uh, after the last day is considered by the council, I'll make that motion again and withdraw this motion here and we can do that. But um, we'll get a try. I'll, I'll keep my motion, uh, Madam and Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Honorable Simpson, uh, for stating that you do stand with your motion just to accept. I don't see the Pacific language up there, but um, my screen came off on this side. But if that, that's the language is correct, and double check. Point of order, Honorable Chair Vince James. Um, I, again, I'm, I'm going back to to Rule 25, point of order. Um, I, I'm just raising this point of order because we have an agenda before us. And we, 
had a motion and a second and majority of the body of the 25th now foundation council voted on an agenda and when monday occurred when we recess there was no discussion at that point and so and then number two I, I guess I'll just motion to challenge. Nobody's listening to me. Thank you, Honorable Chair Vitz James. There is a challenge on the floor. Is there a second to that challenge? Honorable Vince James, can you specify what you are challenging? Uh, speaker, I am challenging your um, decision on the motion to accept written reports in the middle of our agenda. And number two, there is no ruling in our council rules to specify that we can do this in the middle of an agenda. Number three is that I don't have the written reports here in front of me. I don't know if my colleagues have all of those items in front of us. And so if it was put on the agenda, we would have made sure that these written reports were in front of us when we got to this item. So at this point, if we don't have all of this written reports, then there's no reason to have a motion being made in the middle of our agenda. We need to keep the meeting in order. There was a, a, an agenda that was approved. And so that's the reason why I'm doing my challenge. And number four is uh, you were interrupted when I was doing my point of order. Maybe we would have taken care of it when I did my point of order. But you weren't um, listening to me and you were being interrupted. So I just automatically straight went to a challenge. So that's where I stand, Speaker. Thank you with my point of order. Yeah, there is a motion to challenge us. We'll get that language here on the board. There is a motion to challenge, challenge the Speaker's ruling Parentheses, speaker, recognizing the motion to accept all written and oral and written reports. Is there a second? Going once. Going twice. Third call. There is no second on the floor. We are back to the motion to accept all oral and written reports. No. Your honorable colleagues, are there any questions on the floor? First call. Second call. We do already have a motion and a second. For the record, we do have Kodo, Honorable Simpson, Kodo, you had this not do, you can't get Sizenhiki, a Kodo, Honorable Twa. Second call. Third call, I don't see no comments or questions. Colleagues, uh, go for a vote. Port of order, 
of Arnable Chair Vince James. Okay, but my my name was up there, and you're you're you're. This is just getting so embarrassing. And so I, I don't know what to say. I. So just just leave it at that, I guess. Thank you, Honorable Vince Chair Kodoshi Yaj. Um, I did say first, second, and third call. I was just looking at the screen, Kodo. And I did see it come up when I called for a vote. Uh, colleagues, if there's not anything else, we'll resume with the vote. Honorable Herman M. Daniels, Jr. Honorable Herman M. Daniels, Jr. Honorable Herman M. Daniels, Jr. did not vote. Honorable George Toll. Honorable George Toll. Honorable George Toll did not vote. Honorable Otto So. Honorable Otto So. Honorable Otto So did not vote. Going back up. Honorable Herman M. Daniels, Jr. Honorable Herman M. Daniels, Jr. votes red. Honorable George Toll. Honorable George Toll. Honorable George Toll did not vote. Honorable Otto So. Honorable Otto So. Honorable Otto So did not vote. Honorable Eugenia Charles Newton is excused. Honorable Amber Canespa Crotty is excused. Honorable Seth Damon is excused. Honorable Rick Nez is excused. Honorable Jermaine Simonson is excused. Madam Speaker, you have 12 in favor, 4 opposed. Madam Speaker, not voting. Yeah, staff, we do have a vote of 12 in favor and 4 opposed, and speaker not voting. We do have the motion that carries forward. For the record, we do have Honorable Speaker So that voted green. Honorable Toth. We do have Honorable Tolt who voted green. That would change the vote to 13 in favor, 4 opposed, and speaker not voting. Thank you, colleagues, for being with us this long. We are a little bit after 5. It's 5.02 p.m. We have one more legislation on the agenda. We are on legislation BB. Legislation 0077-23, sponsored by Arnable Amber Kiznabakrati, co-sponsored by Arnable Danny Simpson. We do have the co-sponsor here with us today. Staff, could you help us read the legislation to the record? Legislation 0077-23, in action relating to an emergency and the Navajo Nation Council. Opposing the confirmation of Secretary Designee James R. Mountain to the New Mexico Indian Affairs Department. Sponsor, Honorable Amber Knuzba Crotty. Co-sponsor, Honorable Danny Simpson. This legislation comes before the Navajo Nation Council and the legislation has been read into their record by electronic voice recording 
per Navajo Nation Council Rules of Order number nine. Madam Speaker. Thank you, staff, for leading the, reading the legislation to the record. Do we have a motion on the floor? Motion by Honorable Shauna Ann Claw. Do we have a second? Second by Honorable Parrish. Colleagues, do we have any questions on the floor? Second call. Online. Third call, I don't see no comments. Colleagues, we're going straight to a vote for legislation 0077-23. To the drawing board. Honorable Norman Begay. Honorable Norman Begay. Honorable Norman Begay votes green. Honorable George Toll. Honorable George Toll. Honorable George Toll did not vote. Once more, Honorable George Toth. Honorable George Toth. Honorable George Toth did not vote. Honorable Eugenia Charles Newton is excused. Honorable Amber Kness Bacrati is excused. Honorable Seth Damon is excused. Honorable Rick Nez is excused. Honorable Jermaine Simonson is excused. Madam Speaker, with the vote of 17 in favor, zero opposed, and Madam Speaker not voting. Echehat staff for doing the roll call vote. We do have 17 in favor, zero opposed, and Speaker not voting on the legislation. So the motion carries forward. We are at the end of our agenda. We have the number 12, close of session announcements, adjournment. Are there any announcements, colleagues? Uh, we did, I did certify the SMAES resolution so be forward over to the office of the president and vice president as well and just a reminder we will have Nabik Iyatkit uh, this week as well uh, for announcement Honorable Simpson next week <laughs>
next Thursday, this coming Thursday. Honorable Simpson. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, members of the council. Uh, I'd like to request Officer Speaker and yourself as uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, there's legislation that's going through the five-day comment, and it's 0076-23, and the final authority is uh, And this is a reference to what's been proposed by the federal government and the Mexico Congressional Delegation, uh, the buffer zone around the Chalco Canyon National Park. And there's, through the Biden administration, they call it the uh, land withdrawal, over 351,000 acres. And there's a big concern from that area, from the chapters that are adjacent to the uh, Chalco Canyon National Park. And I just think we like to, since Navigiat uh, has the final authority on this legislation, we like to be there. And they know they can't really, just, they want to hear the Navigiat how they're going to consider this legislation. And I did uh, ask them, I mean, I didn't tell them that I'll make that request. So, uh, Madam Speaker, I'd like to make a request to have the next Navigiat meeting and at Nagiji chapter. And uh, we can accommodate the get here through all the technology that's needed, working with Sikorin communication. And we do have the facility to hold over four or 500 people. So I make that request to you, uh, Madam Speaker. And at the same time, since this uh, pandemic has happened, I'd like to ask the speaker that we hold other Nabigiyatik committees at different agencies too. Uh, sorry with that, because Nishikira Hasa. And I think we need to be going back out there to really see how to see how, to show the people how the you know get to get in council work. So you know, with Ed, uh, Madam Speaker, that we request that uh, we hit other uh, area, uh, other parts of the Navajo Nation. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Honorable Simpson, uh, we did note down your request, and it's noted, and we'll be keeping in contact throughout the weekend. And if, there, if we're going to have the Nabikiyatik committee meeting out in uh, Yeezy, we'll make sure to send out that uh, calendar invite as soon as we can with the location. Also, colleagues, uh, please travel safely this weekend. We'll be, uh, most of us will be traveling down to the water litigations down to Phoenix, Arizona, so please drive safely and we'll see you there on Monday. Uh, colleagues, are there any other announcements? Honorable Chair Vince James. Uh, and speaker, I just wanted to make it known that um, HESI will be having their meeting at Twin Arrows next Wednesday. Um, and then uh, just a question to you. How many delegates are going down to Phoenix for the water litigation? Is it open to all the delegates, or is it only the uh, task force council delegates that are going down? Uh, thank you, Kodoshi Yaj, Honorable Vince James. Uh, earlier this week, we did receive an email from Attorney General, Ms. Branch, inviting the whole membership of the council I believe if you would like to confirm your attendance, we can help uh, make that connection. Okay, I, um, Speaker, just to let you know, I won't, I won't be joining. Um, if the majority of the council will be down there, I, I won't be attending, just to let you know. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we'll get that uh, exact number for you of the ORTs that I received. I believe there is approximately about 10, 10 uh, council delegates that will be traveling down to Phoenix. Uh, colleagues, are there any other announcements? Honorable Vice Chair Slater. 
Thank you, Speaker. Um, my request is if there's going to be a majority or close to majority of the council that won't be available for the Nabucodia to committee meeting on Thursday, that we consider rescheduling it. Uh, I don't know, and I think only you and perhaps the Attorney General may know which delegates will be there on Thursday, but I'm just reflecting upon what took place last week when we had a lot of delegates calling in and we moved forward with a consent agenda and didn't have a lot of discussion. So if there will be a length, perhaps one or two legislations, that's just one consideration I'd ask that you make. Thank you, Honorable Vice Chair Slater, for that uh, recommendation. Colleagues, are there any other announcements? Kodoshi Yaj, Honorable Daniels. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, there was a, an invite um, that went out to the Navajo Nation's 25th Council, Kodoshi Yaj, and again, it's from the, the Speaker's office. I don't know how to the original economic development on the tour of Google Teams on May 1st, $88,000. So, my. Mark it on your calendar, May 1st, the great Gouldian's Day. Uh, that, that the legislation, a Madonna Gay, that we went through Navakia to purchase of Gouldian's property. So, a day yet, Madonna Gay, I should be spending hours on the phone. Thank you. Yeah, Kodoshi Yaj, Honorable Daniels, uh, for that announcement. Uh, we did uh, send that reminder email, I think, believe earlier this morning. That will be the Gouldings tour on May 1st. Colleagues, are there any other announcements? Honorable Simpson. Uh, Madam Speaker, the members of the 25th Council, I say, hey, hey, this is okay. You and the show, she, my colleagues, based on the only thing you Adlango and the sheet list of staff to a khaki dish did a though I didn't know it's going to a khaki dish. I know it's been long hours. Um, just want to commend everybody being here, participating in our meeting, in our session to uh, consider legislation. And as you know, we have like maybe four or five pages of uh, legislations that we considered. I can't you on the show, she know. You know, we had our agreements and disagreements during the council session. That's what's all about debating. So, okay, I get this. You know, she couldn't join the the door. You know, be safe out there. And again, I know all this thing we can talk about masks, but if you, if you can, you know, mask up because that pen, this COVID is still around. So, be careful. Enjoy the weekend with your family, your families, and all that. So, okay, I get this. With that, uh, Madam Speaker, motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn by Honorable Simpson and second by Honorable Nota. Are there any objections to the adjournment? And I'll see none, colleagues. So go to the drawing board for adjournment vote. Uh, colleagues, just for clarification, the email for the water litigation was from the Attorney General was to extend an invite to the whole council on the opening day on Monday. This is to show support for the Navajo Nation's claims to water rights to the LCR. Uh, the AG did state it that it's very important for our delegates and the, president, and the president and vice president to show a strong presence for our water claims. So the invitation was to our colleagues here for that opening day on Monday.
Honorable Casey Allen Johnson. Honorable Honorable Casey Allen Johnson. Honorable Casey Allen Johnson did not vote. Honorable Dr. Andy Nez. Honorable Dr. Andy Nez votes green. Honorable Casey Allen Johnson votes green. Honorable Carl Slater. Honorable Carl Slater votes green. Honorable Otto So. Honorable Otto So. Honorable Otto So did not vote. Honorable Otto So. Honorable Otto So. Honorable Otto So did not vote. Honorable Eugenia Charles Newton is excused. Honorable Amber Kanez Bakrati is excused. Honorable Seth Damon is excused. Honorable Rick Nez is excused. Honorable Jermaine Simonson is excused. Madam Speaker, 17 in favor, zero opposed. Madam Speaker, not voting. Thank you, staff. With that, we have a vote of 17 in favor and zero opposed and speaker not voting. Again, just want to say thank you to my colleagues, Koto Sa'a on Hasit caught inside the chambers. So I want to extend appreciation to Koto Shade, Honorable Twa, Honorable Vince James, Honorable Danny Simpson, Honorable Nathan Nota, and Honorable Sherilyn Yazi for staying here within the chambers throughout this long day. And thank you for accomplishing a successful agenda. And thank you to our viewers. And with that, colleagues, we adjourned at 5.20 p.m.